It started long ago. It's called passion, and it's not letting up anytime soon. You're listening to Angel Then 8 Radio. That was a much needed break. I got something to eat. I drank a little bit. You know, what really sucks is that when you do internet radio, you lose connection. It would be so much different. Like in the old days, we used to do our shows by phone. So in other words, if I was on the phone for six hours, we would never lose connection. But When you do internet radio, you lose connection. Stickum is having so much activity tonight through my show that we just lost like 100 viewers. Because all of a sudden, it reconnected and everybody was booted out. So we lost all our viewers. And it sucks. It's something we have to deal with. It's not a problem on our end. It's a problem on Stickum's end. So if you get kicked out or whatever it is... You just come right back in. Another thing I want to say is it's a shame that some people have taken my sense of humor tonight and left the show because they could not handle it. This is a free country, man. Exercise your freedom of speech. You know, as I smoke this cigar, because I'm going to smoke a cigar with you guys, I think I'm going to get back on track and I'm going to do some stand-up comedy tonight. But, you know, if you get booted out of the room, just come on back. Because Stick'em's a pain in the ass. I like Stick'em. I think they're a great service. But when they boot me out of my own show and I have to reconnect, there's a problem. There's an inside problem, you know, and there's nothing we can do about it. If you want to come back and listen to the show, you are more than welcome to. I'm only about halfway through the show. We do have some really debatable topics coming up tonight as far as our phone number for the show it's not working you're gonna have to skype us at angel of thy night and i'll spell it out for you i don't have a problem with it it's angel of thy t-h-y night n-i-g-h-t 
and you can Skype the show. I don't even care if you want to create a fake Skype account, and you want to call in and you want to say your peace of mind. Our tip jar is not full, so I will not light myself on fire until it's full. And it's not because I'm trying to be a greedy bastard, but I'm trying to get my investigators some equipment that they can use and utilize during the investigations. So for me, it's important. I don't have to light myself on fire. I want to light myself on fire. So you don't have to fear for me. You don't have to watch me burn dead on my show. It's not going to happen. Um, I'm very perf- I've been playing with fire for many years. It's just another skill you guys don't know about that I do for a living. So, you know, it's all good, man. I hate when cigars go out. But anyways, let's try this again. Son of a bitch. Now I'm going to turn into a really grouchy fucking claws. <laughs> you know, my son for Halloween, he he's a little bit on the extreme side, you know? And it was Halloween... No, I don't I don't have nine views. People can view my show from my site. That's where most of my viewers show. Um, you know, if you want to be rude, Molly, you can just go. Because I'm not going to put up with the shit. Okay, it's not about how many viewers I get. This isn't about viewers. It's about my friends coming together to listen to the show. I had a lot of viewers, but Stick'em keeps viewing me. Yeah, ouch, ouch. Yeah, I can be a rude fucking Santa Claus. That's, that's, it's Christmas time. I can be as rude as ever, or I can be as sweet as ever. It's, it's totally up to you. You have freedom of speech, and I have freedom of speech and tell you if you don't want to listen, you can just fucking go. If you want to listen to the show, then don't complain about how many viewers are listening to the show. It, it, it doesn't matter how many listen to the show. The fact is, is you're here, we appreciate you, if you want to listen, listen. I'm just telling it like it is. I cannot help that we have 100 mile an hour winds here tonight and that we lose our connection. Nor can I help that Stickum doesn't have a reliable connection. We used to host our shows on Now Live. But you know what Now Live is now, guys? Now Live is a network that study, that puts trailers of new films up. They do not deal with radio anymore. When we used to do, we used to go on Now Live, we used to have people from VH1. What? I'm not, you know what, Molly? I'm not trying to be mean to you. And I'm not butthurt. But I'm just figuratively speaking. It isn't for me, it would be like going on television and saying, I care about ratings and viewers. I don't. I don't care how many listen to this show. All I care about is the people that I look up to, our fans, our friends, and our followers. You know, I don't, I don't care if it's 5,000 or 500 or 5 that are listening. The show always must go on. And when I get booted, I lose all my viewers. But anyways, my son, for Halloween... Him and his friend cut up a teddy bear. You know, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. They have these big stuffed teddy bears. He cut off the head of a teddy bear. And he come, one day he knocks at my door with the teddy bear head on his face. You know, I'm scared of a lot of things. I am. I'm scared, you know. There's things that I fear, too. I'm not a fearless man. I'm fearless in my work. That doesn't mean that certain things don't bother me, you know. Comes to my door knocking. Dressed is a teddy bear. With the pieces that he cut on up. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, what the fuck? You know, it's like, what made you want to cut up a teddy bear to be a teddy bear? But that's, you know, my kid is a, is, is a part of me. So he thinks in a way like I think. You know, we sit there and we, 
I mean, I do crazy things like dress as Santa climbing a mountain, and he cuts up teddy bears and wears the fucking parts, you know? This year, we did a lot of investigations. And when I say a lot of investigations, I mean that we really topped the charts. And we did famous places. We did the Winchester House. I went to Alcatraz Prison. I will tell you this about Alcatraz Prison. It is a very haunted place. The problem is with Alcatraz is there's a lot of people out there who, who take Alcatraz and they treat it as a tourist site. It is a tourist site. And the only way you can get Alcatraz to yourself is you have to pay like a thousand or twelve hundred dollars and you can spend the night there so when i went there was a lot of people around yeah i got some evps but i actually wandered away from the tourist group to get those evps it wasn't like i just went to alcatraz and said hey you know um i had to i had to work hard when i was up there and alcatraz was something we did in the beginning early of 2012 and for me, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when I started this organization, I said, I said to people, I was like, I'm going to do Alcatraz. I didn't know if I would actually do it. You know, I made it a goal, and I'm like, someday we'll do it. I went out to San Francisco. I did the Columbarium. I did Alcatraz. I did Point Reyes. I went to the Point Reyes. It's got some of the worst ocean storms in the world they get they're up at a high elevation a lot of sea cliffs along the pacific but there's a cemetery which is haunted out by the coast guard station and then you know you got alcatraz island which i took the boat over to alcatraz i boarded alcatraz i went out there and i did an investigation and something spoke to me in my ear there's nothing more freakier than when you're investigating and something whispers something in your ear it happened to me. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't debunk it. I can only say what it is. Alcatraz, a lot of horrible things happened. People were stabbed. People died. It was a place of a lot of negative energy. The ghosts still haunt it. When I was up there, I got access to the mental hospital or the hospital itself. They only gave me 10 minutes to go in. I asked permission. And they basically kicked me out because I was spending too much time in there. But, you know, I did Alcatraz. And I have no regrets. It's a cool island. I would like to return maybe next year or the year after to continue my investigation of it. And, you know, it's this year for me alone was many milestones. I went to Bodie. I went to Alcatraz. I went to Point Reyes. I did, I did American Flats. I did a lot of big name sites. And I didn't I only did them for you guys. I didn't it wasn't like I went out there and said, you know, I'm gonna do this for myself. I sat down and I said, What would my team what would my fans and friends and viewers like to see? So I did Alcatraz. Because it was something that you guys would really like to see. And I did it. And there's a lot of abandoned buildings on the island. I didn't get to explore everything. It's huge. I'm going to have to return to Alcatraz. I'll be honest with you. I went to Alcatraz. I was partying. I was shit-faced, man. There's no way better to go to Alcatraz than to go shit-faced. But you know what really stung bad with going to Alcatraz? When I got off the island and I started to walk to the diner to get dessert. No, man. Didn't fall off my chair. I went to get dessert, though, after I was on the island. I ordered these, this fudge brownie type of thing at a diner. And I ended up I ended up walking to the diner because you got to park far away. There's no parking near Alcatraz. you got to park and walk in. Somebody on my way to the diner was hit by a car and got killed on the fucking street. Their body was lying on the street bloody. And, and it made me appreciate the things in life that are important. It's not, you know what's important? It's friendship. 
It's the journeys that you take together. It's not money. It's not fame. Like I said earlier, I don't care how many viewers. I'm not here to get famous. I'm just here to host a show. If people want to come, they can come. But someone was dead on the streets in front of my children that night. And even though I'm not a family member, I can still feel the same pain as anybody else. And it hurt me all the same. And I sat there very upset over the fact that someone just got killed Why I'm in some diner enjoying a beer and a fudge, fudge brownie Sunday. They were killed either by a trolley or um, another a drunk driver. From pro- and you know what? They probably rode the boat that I was on at Alcatraz. That's what sucks. Is that I went with a group of people and that was one less person that didn't make it from the group. They didn't die at Alcatraz from the ghost. They died because they crossed the street leaving Alcatraz. And it was a great time for me. I mean, there was a guy that jumped out at my son and tried to scare him, a homeless guy on the sidewalks before we took the tour. Um, I ate at Joe's Crab Shack, had a seafood dish, and everybody started dancing. And I was just getting a hoot and a holler out of the hot waitresses, you know. But somebody did not make it. And that is why we host a show, because, you know, next year, Some of you guys, maybe even me, may not make it to host another show. And this is all you guys will have. But if you guys want to see me on fire, power numbers. If everybody donates $5 a piece, Molly, if you're broke, don't donate. I'm not going to take it. But as far as other people, if you got the money, if our tip jar reaches 80 more bucks... I will light myself on fire. And I can guarantee you our, our, our viewers will go through the roof. Because it, you don't see this kind of stuff on internet radio, you know? I've been doing radio since 2005. I did it back in 2003. And um, I can tell you right now, I, I, I understand what it's like to be a radio show host. You know, there's been times where I host a show... 50,000 listen. There's been other times three people listen. But you know what? I don't care if I got one person listening. I will always host, to the best of my ability, a good show. It takes a lot of courage to go up in front of thousands of people. And, And the only thing you try to do is you try to get your message out there. You know? But 2012 for me was a very odd year. You know, I did the Wash Shoe Club. You guys know the Wash Shoe Club's been everywhere. It's, it's a very haunted place. It is haunted. But when you go to the museum at the Wash Shoe Club, you see people. You can, you can get a card. and you can. It used to be called the Millionaire's Club. And you can get this card, and you can go to the Haunted Museum. The Haunted Museum is all good, except the fact of I enjoy the history of it, but what I don't enjoy is the big blow-up picture of a piece of dust. Because I have, I have a million pieces of dust I got at the Washu Club. It's from the 1800s. It's old. It's dusty. But I, don't, I just don't feel that that picture needs to be in the museum. It's not a ghost pic. It's just a piece of dust. But again, young Ghostbusters who want to be in the paranormal go to that museum. They think it's real. So then they start posting dust particles. Something that we can't have. We have to be able to teach people the proper way. If I have to speak at conferences in 2013, I will, to define the appropriate means and measures and protocols of paranormal investigating because I want people to do it right or don't do it at all, for that matter, you know? And some of you guys listening, some of you guys, you're ghost hunters. Some of you are just urban explorers. Some of you just like to party. I don't care who comes out for the show. Because everybody is welcome. You know, the door is always open to everybody. I haven't personally, I haven't had to ban anybody from the show. And, and Molly, you and your boyfriend are always welcome on the show. But you have to understand that 
I'm such a busy guy during my show. I get I get like hundreds of private messages. I just I I don't have time to talk in the chat room. If I could, I would. But eventually, I'm going to hire on a couple people to go in the chat room and be chat room host. I'm not at that point yet. But when I'm at that point, the room will be very entertaining, I can guarantee you. This year was a strange year in the fact that it was the year of the Bigfoot. I was, attract, I was attacked at Big Trees. Big Trees is a patch of forest in the Sierras. It has at least 60 to about 300 redwood trees. Some of them are so large you could drive your car in. My son and I, because I didn't have any investigators, my son, he takes a very big interest in cryptozoology, which is the study of unknown animals. We were hiking along the bank in a secluded area along the Stanislaus River, looking for tracks, when we were attacked by something throwing rocks at us. And they were throwing, I mean, I could look 100 feet ahead of me and there was nothing there. That's what made it scary. We could not see what was throwing the rocks. It started with a rock that missed my head by an inch. Then two rocks. Then three rocks and four rocks and five rocks. And they were coming faster and faster. And every one of them missed my head by inches. I'm lucky to be alive. But, on the other hand, I had to get my son out of there. Because if my son got hit in the head, that could be very bad, a very bad scenario. And whatever was down along that river did not want me finding it. The primate behavior up in Texas, that same year this year, the only other attack I heard by Sasquatch was a guy, he was looking for tracks, and something in Texas near the river started throwing rocks at him. Same thing happened to me, so I sympathize with the guy, you know. I thought to myself, you know, this is primate behavior. It's very dangerous. When it wants you out, you have to get out. You can't stick around. It's a living, bleeding creature. It feels threatened. It's doing what it can. It did what it could to get me out, and I got out. It's the only time I've ever left an investigation because I had my son with me, and I was just like, you know, this is not worthwhile. We have fans, we have friends who browse our site. But it's not worth getting hit in the head with a rock and going to the emergency room or dying for that matter. Not all Bigfoot or Sasquatch creatures are friendly. Some of them will attack, some of them will observe, and some of them will fucking charge you. And that's what happened. We were attacked with rocks. I had a rock go over to my shoulder hit the pool of water. There was a pool between the creek shore and a sandbar. The rock landed in the pool and splashed water for six feet in the air. Something was really wanting us gone. Washu Club. A hooker was murdered. Not only that, but they used to store bodies in the cold storage. Because in the winter, the ground was frozen. You could not dig a grave. So, anyways, they would take the bodies and they would put them, pile them in this room, which you can investigate. Any paranormal group can investigate the room itself. But you know, I don't see the room as being very haunted, I see it as a place of the deceased. But I've been there because I'm a WashU Club member. It's something we can focus on in 2013. And if I do, I will have access to the upstairs. WashU Club's been on TV, though. It's, it's one of those places that, like, I choose my own investigations, and if we end up investigating the WashU Club, it's just because it's a historical site. It's not because everybody else has done it, which makes sense. I have come up with a new invention. For how, I mean, I, I didn't get to this during my Halloween episode, so I'll cover it real briefly. You know how they have jack-o'-lanterns? Well, I invented the asshole lantern. You know, 
But the problem is with the asshole anner is people might try to fuck them. Just like my new invention of the mouth table. So, bad idea, you know. We don't need no cum disposals. I was kicked out of a Halloween store. Did I tell you guys that? I wasn't even dressed as Santa Claus. I came in the Halloween store with the soda in my hand. Walked on in. Lady, there was a gothic girl working. There was a blonde working. The blonde was just your normal, everyday type of girl. Real, just She was real prudish, real prudish, real bitchy. Kicked me out of the Halloween store. My son and I were looking at Halloween stuff. She says, you got to leave. You got a soda. So I got kicked out. You know what I did with that soda? You want to know what I fucking did? I threw the soda at her feet. I said, you clean it up. I'm bad fucking Santa. I can do that. She kicked me and my son out. The gothic girl, on the other hand, was cool with us. She's like, you guys can stay, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to teach you guys some crafts tonight. You guys like crafts? Who likes crafts here? Anybody like crafts? Oh, Jill's calling in. Hello, Jill. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I couldn't be better. I'm just sick of Stick'em kicking us out. We lose all our viewers, you know? And then someone got pissed because of the Romney joke I made and left. And and I just want them to know we're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. We're just joking around. But people well, I, I totally understand that you're joking around. You're having fun, you know? And oh, yeah. You know, um, you know, I definitely would not miss this show tonight for anything, you know, because it's pretty epic. You know, I, you know, I believe it's going to be the best out of them all, you know, that, you know, you, you know, you I always can, do awesome shows. You know, I can and, tell you right now, this show is just starting to take off tonight. I'm very much on my A game. I'm not going to fucking black out tonight. I got. I know what's going to happen in this show. I'm the only one that knows. And right now, I'm about halfway done, and I got another awesome half coming up. But I'm taking my time with it to get out my words proper, to make sure I cover my grounds. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not in any hurry tonight. I got all fucking night long. People can sit back if they want to have a few drinks and listen. They're going to be pretty surprised. They're going to see a good show. They're going to get what they came for. But we had a few grouchy people who came in, and they're complaining about viewers and this and that. And I can't control that, man. You know, all I can do is perform. That is all I can do. And if it's, yeah. not, if it's not good enough for somebody, I'm sorry. If they're going to take a Romney joke personally, I'm sorry. I'm not going to mention names, but he needs to just chill the fuck out, man. I mean, I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. I'm hosting the show. If I want to say suck my dick, you suck my dick. If I want to say peace out, peace out, I'll end the show. But I'm just here. I have a lot of coverage tonight on Doomsday. I haven't even begun to touch the tip of the iceberg. But I'm here to party. I'm here to, you know, I'm here to talk with my friends. Um, the number's not working, but Skype works. And if people want to Skype, they can Skype. If they donate, I will light myself on fire. I, I swear on my life, I will do it. And and people don't want to donate tonight because everybody's scared that I'm going to die. You know, and it's just like, come on, man. It's like, it's like, would I be doing this if I didn't know what the hell I was fucking doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying there. Um... And then, you know, when you have a chance, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had a, you know, question, um, you know, in regards to, um, you know, when you're going through, you know, a hard time and you have someone close that you lose as a friend and they pass away. Um, you know what, Jill? I lose friends all the time. And you know why I lose friends? Because very few people can accept me for me. They just know, it just seems like every time I gain a friend, I lose a friend. 
because people don't want to accept me for me. Everything, mm -hmm. everything bothers them about me. My black nails, um, my paranormal beliefs. If I say that I have to walk on eggshells because if I'm honest and blunt, then they fucking ditch my friendship. I'm just so tired of going through it, you know? I'm almost to a point where I'm just like, you know what? Why host a paranormal organization? Why host a group? Why host, why host a show? If all people are going to ever do is complain about me. Mm -hmm. But if you got a question, speak your mind. At, you can always ask me a question, and I will always give you an answer. Always. Well, what, one of my questions was is, um, you know, like when you get this feeling like on your arms where your, um, where your hairs on your arms stand up and you got this feeling like major chills. Like I was wondering if that's usually... A sign that somebody is there visiting with you or near you because recently I went through a tough time with a friend that recently passed away and um were you were you close with this person? Yes, very close. I had a very close bond with them. I'm listening um. Explain to me, do you, do you feel like that person is still around in your life? Like, do you get chills, like you're being watched, or you feel someone in the room? I, I do get the chills um, quite often. I've actually had the chills ever since I found this out. I was uh, wondering, because this was like a very close friend and like a sister to me um, uh -huh, right. in... It's it's pretty tragic though. She she passed on from uh complications in a in a pregnancy, but um but sometimes I think I feel her around me, but you know, cuz especially with the chills after I found out, it it just Well, first of all, you have my sympathies and condolences. I mean, a lot of people think that I'm some bad guy, but the truth is, is I care too much, and that's why I hurt the way I do. But as a paranormal investigator or as a parapsychologist, I can tell you right now that ghosts stick with what was good in their life. If you were a good person in her life, she's going to stick around you, and she may only stick around for a time being just to make sure that you are doing okay. And when you stop mourning or whatever the case is and you let go, she'll move on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because for two, two days straight I was, you know, so in shock and... How did she I, die, if you don't mind me asking? Um, She was going through childbirth and apparently her uterus burst and she had major internal bleeding and and her body shut down and it's it's pretty tragic um she was like a best friend to me uh she was a friend out of Oregon and um uh -huh. yeah um well, Unfortunately, the baby didn't make it either. She, uh... Pretty sad. Yeah, it's sad. Um, you know, I gave my condolences to those as well that knew her that were related or good friends or whatnot. The truth but, is, the truth is, Jill, everybody's got to die at some point in their life. I don't, yeah. I don't think people understand... They don't understand the work that I do. You know, they don't realize that I do a lot of dangerous fucking work in the paranormal field. They mm -hmm. think that I'm just one of these guys that sits on the couch, and I don't. They don't understand. I climb cliffs. I climb mountains. I do all kinds of stuff. And there will be a day where I will not host Angel on the Night Radio. That'll be the day I'm dead. And that's the problem. You know, it's, 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 it's a problem because... People want to bitch and moan about this and about that to me rather than just appreciate the fact that we're all alive, that we're all here to be able to, to convene together and come together 
and share our, our stories, our beliefs, and everything else, you know? And I'm not, I don't host a show to offend people. I host a show because we have a good show, and I put a good show together, and people can choose to stay with it the whole five hours. If they will, I can almost promise, I can almost promise that they will have enjoyed this show. They will come back for another show. But, but as far as your experience goes, it is a sad situation. I've lost people that I cared about. My friend was killed by a drunk driver back in 2003. You know, we were, we were walking to a cemetery and a drunk driver hit him. There was nothing we could do. You know, she just, she just went down the, the, the lane, hit him, and did six months in prison and didn't even care. Had no condolences, no sympathies, nothing. Missed me by a couple inches. I shouldn't even be here right now. I should be dead. Wow. You know, but I'm sitting here and I'm hosting the show and I'm thankful for it. And I'm okay with lightening up and relaxing and making some jokes and having a good time. You know, and I know some of these people, they take offense to everything I say. And it's like, man, you should just be grateful that I'm alive and here. You know, yeah. don't be pissed off about shit. Fucking have a good time. Have a few beers, smoke some weed, and fucking chill the fuck out. But your friend may stay around until you let, until you stop feeling bad. She may stick around to make sure you're okay. You know, that, you got to understand, entities, even though people die, they do stick around with you. And I have seen ghosts. I can tell you right now, I would not lie about this. Ghosts are very, very real. And they can do things that you would not believe they could do. They can move objects. They can go inside your computer. They can fit into a glass of water. They can talk to you. They can, I mean, there is no limit to what they can do. The problem is with ghosts, they have to be able to pull enough energy to manifest. We don't always get that manifestation, but we do occasionally on investigations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just takes time. It looks like a uh, roadie's asking when is this roast supposed to happen. He, I'm watching the chat, so he was the roast, asking the roast that is question. Going to happen in about 15 minutes. Okay. I, I didn't want to. I wanted to with, retain my viewers before I did the roast, and then what happened is Stickum booted me out of my own chat room, and we lost all our viewers. And so I'm just waiting for people to show back up, and I'm afraid that a lot of people aren't because it is the holidays. And people are like, oh, the show ended, and it hasn't ended. When the show ends, I will say goodbye to everybody. And people know that. If, if for some reason I get cut off, you just come back on it. It happens. It's internet radio, you know? Internet radio is not foolproof. It hasn't ever been foolproof. Since the day I've been doing it, there's always been lost connections through networks and servers. But when I come out, when I come out, I do what I can. You know, I will not stop. Ho if I say 12.05, the show will end. It'll either end at 12.05 or I will carry it on until, until an extra hour. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. But I have, I sit down and I produce my own shows, just like I produce my own videos. And, and the thing is that this show is only about halfway done. And I'm not drunk. I'm not blacking out. I'm going to have a good show tonight. And if people stick it through... If they want to stick it through, I still may light myself on fire. The problem is a lot of people are broke from Christmas. But if, if 50 people, you know, if, or actually I should say if 20 people donate 5 bucks, I'll light myself on fire. And I promise it will not be a disappointment. I've done many stunts in my time. I'm a stunt guy. So, you know, I know what the fuck I'm doing. But on the other hand, I don't care if I light myself or I don't light myself on fire. I'm just trying to help out the members of my group. My team needs equipment, and I want to do what's right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm here to entertain. I'm your, um, all the viewers. I'm here for all you guys tonight. If you, if you want to stick through the show, I promise we got a lot more stand-up comedy coming up. Right now, though, we have Jill calling in the line, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to be as serious as I can about this about ghosts and uh, all the things that are unseen. And ghosts, although you may not see them, you can feel them. Your, your subconscious knows they're there. You know when you're watched. You know when something's there watching. 
I have a feeling your friend's still with you. I can't say for sure, but I could tell you right now, you have emotions towards this friend. And until you let that go, she's probably going to hang around for a pretty long time. Yeah, um, this was a good friend from uh, Facebook. And uh, plus she was on my Skype as well. And uh-huh. I was just in total shock when I found this out. Apparently uh, the guy that she was with was the one that... Uh, She left behind, and uh, he's taken it hard, too. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Jill, I, I, a lot of people don't know me for me, but I am the type of guy that I love. I have, I'm a very humane person, and I think people got the wrong impression of me. You know, they think I'm some asshole and some egotistical bastard. I'm not. I hug trees. I care about life as you know it. Even when people die that I don't know, I feel very sad. You know, I was once on a mailing list, and the girl used to send me all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. One day, I got an email from her friend saying she passed away. You have I didn't even know her personally, but I felt bad, and I thought to myself, she had a heart attack and died young like 30-something years old. People don't realize... Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Anyhow, people <laughs> are around, you know, and it's just crazy over here, too. <laughs> uh, it's okay. You know, we're here to party. If people don't want to come out to the Christmas party, fuck them. They're party poopers. But if people want to come out tonight and party, that's fine. I fucked up on my Halloween episode. I'm not afraid to admit it. I got too drunk. I was, I was very ill that day. I do suffer from a lot of medical problems. I may not be here in 2013. I may not. But I suffer from a lot of medical problems. I was having a very shitty day. I was not feeling good. I didn't eat all day long. And I drank to try to ease the pain, and I blacked out. Tonight's a lot different. I'm feeling really good tonight. And I can host a full show, and everybody will get their... They're not even paying money, but they will get their money's worth. You know what I'm saying? So... I do appreciate your questions. Um, I'm going to try to carry on with the show. If you want to hang in the background and comment, that's fine. But I'm going to continue on with the show. But I do want to say that, you know, you missing your friend or, or missing her just shows me that you're a humane person that you care. And sometimes that's all it takes is to care about somebody, you know. Um, I, I, I always see the paranormal as a thankless job. Nobody gives a shit if I'm hanging off a cliff and going to die. Nobody would even look for me. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it, it's, what I, I don't do this for money. I do it for my friends and my viewers. So you had at least a friendship that you can remember her by, and she will always be with you in one way or another. Even if it's in your heart, she will be with you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally understand, you know, I mean, um, I try to remember all the good times we've had and, um, and certain songs that she really loved and that sort of thing. I'll tell you what, um, can you turn the music down in the background? It's I, not I on my have... computer, it's, uh... Thank you. I'll tell you what, I know you live in Sacramento, and I've always wanted to investigate out in Sacramento, and now that I got a full team... We have sat down and considered doing some places up in Sacramento. I have a place that I want to do in Sacramento that's big. I cannot post it here. I cannot talk about it. But it's big. I'll leave it at that. And we will, Jill, we will come out. Um, we will come out to visit you, okay? 
Our entire team will come out and see you and let you participate on one of our investigations. And I and I will tell you right now, you will not be disappointed investigating for the PGS organization. There's a lot of years of experience that are you know that I have, and so I train my investigators to be the best paranormal investigators in the country. It doesn't matter if people say Lord Rick smokes weed or Lord Rick drinks. So what? So do they. So do they. But that doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. So we will try to go to Old Sacramento, and we will see you eventually. Hopefully in 2013, we will come up and see you. That would be totally cool because I uh, would love to, you know, come visit and... You know, do some investigations with y'all. and Well, we have someone from Australia who's going to be joining an investigation in a month or two. Oh, wow. Rody Wolf, Wolfie, you're funny, but you know what? I, can't, I cannot light myself on fire if people aren't willing to at least hit me. Because I could, I could get seriously injured and have to go to the emergency room tonight. And if I'm going to go to the emergency room, people are just going to have to tip me. You know, it's not, I'm not being greedy. If people do their part, I'll do my part during the show. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm the type of person that, I, 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 I mean, I don't make a living off the paranormal. So asking for tips during my show from people, if they're broke and they can't do it, I understand it's Christmas. But if people can splurge 10 bucks, 20 bucks, that's fine. It only takes five people donating 20 bucks for me to light myself on fire. It'll be worth it. I mean, I've never backed down on a deer. I've never backed down on doing something dangerous. I have people on my team that tell, think I'm crazy. We had a guy join our team. Me and him cliff climbed. He turned around and backed out. I didn't back out. Because I know that in order to be a good paranormal investigator, you must go all the fucking way. You can't go, you can't half-ass an investigation. You have to go all the way. You know, and you're going to find that out. If I let you on an investigation, you're going to find out there's nothing we're going to back down on. We go into a cemetery, we will cover every square inch of that cemetery. If we go into some catacombs... We will go in those catacombs. But I found something that's near your house that will shock the fucking world. I cannot talk about it here. We do some real X-Files type of shit. We do also historical sites, but sometimes we work with cases that are beyond anything you've ever seen. Um, I'm going to have to cut you off, though, because I can't have the music playing while I'm hosting the show. Well, that that that's okay. I can um, just listen for a while and um, and call back later when it's more down or something. Okay. That's fine. Call me back. Call me back in about an hour, okay? Okay, we'll do. All right. Thanks for calling in, Joe. Not a problem. Okay. Anyways, folks, that was Jill that called in. I'd also like to take the time to thank Ted and Kit because they, you know, they did help me fix my. I had my fuel pump going on the truck, and it was an ongoing problem. I already knew it was a problem because. Because the gas gauge was jumping around and we were stalling out, and and they fixed they fixed Ted fixed the truck and and Kit paid for it because I didn't have the money, and I you know I'm not afraid to talk about this publicly, because people that help me out down the road I will help you out. It works both ways, you know. But the truck I bought the truck for one reason only. I bought it for my paranormal investigators so that they could. Get in a ghost town safely and get out of a ghost town. That is why I bought a four-wheel drive truck. We've had, we went to Sugarloaf Mountain last week ago and the Chinese slums. If I didn't have four-wheel drive, we would have got stuck back behind Sugarloaf investigating some mines. So you have, to, you have to sit there and you have to think, you know, 
the truck is for our investigators. We want to make sure our investigators get home safe to their kids. We don't want to be stuck down some dirt road in the middle of the night. So it's always important that the truck always stays in good shape. Like last week ago, for the investigation we did, I put in brakes. Brand new brakes. We got brand new brakes on both the front and the back. I did it for the safety of my investigators. I could care less. I don't care if I, if I can't stop. I'll find a way to stop. But when it comes down to the safety of the investigators, our job is to make sure everybody's safe. Just like, just like when I'm investigating and we do these campouts and whatever, I always want to make sure if somebody cannot climb an 11,000-foot peak, I will do it for them. And I will assign them other positions where they can go and they can explore in the area. But I always make sure that everybody is safe. And so we wish Kit very well with a refractured foot. And, you know, I just want to publicly say in front of everybody, because I, I, I do recognize who, who are my friends and who are loyal, I want to thank Ted for all his research he's done, for, you know, going under the truck and dealing with that bullshit. It means a lot to me because now I know who I can trust and can't trust. And there's a lot of people, they just, you know, they threaten me. I get death threats all the fucking time. Um, and we're going to talk about that tonight, you know, because 2012 has been that way. Oh, well, that's that's okay, man. You know, if she can listen, that would be fine. There is a mobile application also for Stick'em. I don't know if most people are aware of it, but you can actually download it for Stick'em. And someone asked me when I'm going to do the roast, and I'm trying to keep our viewers, you know. I don't want to do the roast right away because, it kind of, you know, it kind of takes the fun out of it, you know. We want to make sure people stick through the show. Moo Emily, Moo Emily, Moo Emily, Moo Emily, Moo Emily. Okay, Ann, you can stop that right now. You really can stop that. Ann is just full of fucking surprises tonight. No, that's fine. I mean, you guys you guys are loyal investigators, you know. The thing is that the investigators and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the people that are on are part of the Paranormal Ghost Society. They're not just, they're not just nobody. Every staff member, every investigator... Of the Paranormal Ghost Society is part of the show. It's part of the team. They're part of the investigations. You know, it's not just Lord Rick. Everybody works hard towards the same goal. What is our goal? To seek out the truth of the paranormal. You know, we all want to uncover aliens and Bigfoot and UFOs and cryptozoology and parapsychology and ufology we want to uncover it earlier i was talking about crafts you guys think i forgot right i have a new craft you guys if next for next halloween if you guys want to know how to make a ghost i'll tell you how you make a ghost okay what you do here's the simple directions you go to the bathroom you take a hot shit you take a piece of toilet paper you wipe your ass and you stick it on the person's windshield that you hate the fucking most. It's called a toilet paper ghost. I guarantee you that when they wake up and they find the toilet paper fluttering in the wind, they will think that it's a decoration, a Halloween decoration, a Halloween ghost. When in fact, you just wiped their ass and fucking stick, stick it to them. You know what I'm saying? Why? Why can't trick-or-treating? Here I am talking about trick-or-treating and it's fucking Christmas. Go figure, right? But why can there not be a day set aside for adults? When I was a kid, I was sitting back one day, and my mom used to have a police scanner, right? And on the police scanner... <laughs> sorry, Tammy. On the police scanner, there was a Santa Claus walking around with semi-automatics. This guy was going door to door with a bag full of guns. This is like your um, Silent Night type of movie, you know? Which I'm going to watch Silent Night on Christmas Eve, the new one, about a killer Santa Claus. Because that shit's just bomb. But why can't, if there's, I had an adult trick-or-treat at my door, okay? This is, on Halloween night, because I didn't really talk about it because we hosted a show before Halloween. But on Halloween night, this lady comes dressed fucking up. 
I gave her candy. But why can't trick-or-treating be about adults? Why can't adults go trick-or-treating and pass out pussy soap and dildos and blow up dolls and sex toys? Think about it. I mean, I would love to go trick-or-treating and get myself a fucking blow-up doll. Not that I need it, but I would still blow it up and sit it fucking over here so you guys could fucking see it on the show. It could be a decorative piece, right? Right? What the hell's wrong with that? There is no adult trick-or-treating. Not only that, but, you know, a couple weeks ago, my son he comes home from school. He's like, Daddy, 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 Daddy. I'm like, what, son? He says, I found some of your graveyard out in a field. I'm like, really? Because you guys know that back in October, I built a cemetery on my front lawn. We had a windstorm. My entire graveyard blew away. I lost like fucking 100 hours worth of decorations. I was fucking pissed. So, my son says, don't worry, I collected all the cemetery and I put it in a safe place. But I couldn't walk home with it because I was on my way to school. I'm like, okay. The next day, he went to go get the cemetery. Somebody stole all the tombstones. All of it. Gone. Just like that. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, what the fuck? What happened to my cemetery? But, you know, you know how it is. I mean, we live in a world now of vandals. You know, I think I should start talking about the holidays. Because that just depresses me too much. I was hanging some decorations outside. And, when, and you guys know that when I go outside, I wear my Santa beard around December. <laughs> Tammy. <laughs> poo sessions. Yeah, it's like a therapist. It's like, sit down for your poo session. But anyways, I've been having a problem. Like, I lose weight and gain weight very quickly. Sometimes when I lose weight, my pants fall to my ankles. I was outside getting ready to hang some decorations. I swear to God, my pants fell to my ankles. When I was at the grocery store, I forgot I didn't wear any underwear. I didn't have any clean underwear. Pants fell to the ankles. My, my cock and balls, dude, my cock and balls were hanging out at Smith's grocery store. My whole package was fucking out in the frozen food aisle. My pants fell right to my ankles. I was bearing it all. I don't know if they got that. On camera, I might see it in the Sun tabloids. Man bears fruits, fruits and labor at the grocery store. I don't know. I know one thing. Old man winter's here, and when it snowed, the first thing I did is I made ass angels. I basically stripped down my clothes. And I took everything fucking off. Everything. And I started making nude snowed angels. And you could see the crack of my ass on the angel. You could tell it was done with nudity, you know. Who cares? It's in my backyard. Spiked cocoa. I'm not drinking no hot cocoa unless it's spiked, okay? You're supposed to fucking spike your shit. I could, look, I could sit there and watch a parade, and you wouldn't even know that my shit was spiked. You wouldn't even know. It's just like paranormal investigating. I don't have to. I could pour my beer in a goddamn fucking container and drink it. You'll never know. But Ted, he caught me at Sugarloaf drinking out of my canter. And still, it's one of the most classic Lord Rick pictures you're ever going to get. I even used it as my photo for the top of my page. I couldn't help it. It's just, I never even knew he was taking the photo. And here I am drinking a shot of whiskey. I'm, I'm like, nah, nobody's watching me. You know, and I'm fucking in my, in my Santa beard and shit. And I'm drinking. I'm drinking, you know? But you know what? The beard keeps me warm. But, you know, I go to a fast food joint. I go to Burger King. They say, what is your name? I say, Lord Rick. So every time they call me for a hamburger, they're like, Lord Rick, your food's up. Lord Rick, your food's up. I always embarrass Tammy. Always. Because that is my name. My name is Lord Rick. You know, personal friends will call me Angel or, or Rick, but, but most people call me Lord Rick. It's just, it's a surname. It's like Sir or anything else, but it's Lord Rick. 
And so whenever I go into a restaurant and they want to call me for my number, I always say, Lord Rick. I don't care what people think. You know, it's like, that is my name. You know, so I always get the people at the fast food service to call me Lord. Hell, I even signed some of my credit card receipts, Lord Rick. It is what it is. You don't want to call me Lord Rick? Don't call me Lord Rick. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I have just realized something. You know, I'm an old man. Let's face it. We all get old. You guys, some of you guys have been listening to the show for seven years. Back seven years ago, we were young bucks. You know, back seven years ago, I was fucking like a goddamn rabbit. I was like, you know, always sex fucking crazy and shit. Not anymore. I'm not like that anymore. Well, maybe I am. But anyways, when my girlfriend sees me whistle at a girl, because she does, she does see me, <laughs> she does see me whistle at chicks. I still slap girls on the ass. I still flirt with cashiers. I'm a big flirt. I love the flirt. It's something I've done my whole life. It's never going to change. But, but, every time my girlfriend gets pissed, I just tell her, hey, honey, I'm going through puberty. That's why I whistle and I hoot and I holler. It's my fucking hormones. I didn't grow chest hair until my 30s, man. I didn't even grow a goatee till like 35 years old. I couldn't grow a goatee. I'm still going through puberty. I'm like a teenage boy. I want to hit it. You know, I see some hot girl like, mm, 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 baby. How about some ghost investigating a little bit of that? You know, I have to say that I got one of the strangest father-in-laws. No, I don't. I don't flirt with guys. Although I will tell you this, I will tell you this. I like to freak people out sometimes. But you know, I have a strange father-in-law. You guys know that I met him in 2012. Because I got to recap 2012. You guys don't even know what happened to me. So I'll tell you what happened. I met him. I don't even know what he looks like. I picked him up from the train station. He found me. How can you miss a guy with black nails? My nails are either black, deep purple, or slime green. He comes up to me and says, I'm your father-in-law. The first thing he asked me, he said, where is the whorehouse? I want to get laid. He asked me to go to the cherry patch. Well, we didn't go to the cherry patch. Instead, we went to the mall. I get to the mall, and guess what? I forgot what he looks like, and I lost him. I lost my father-in-law at the mall. He's like 60-something years old. I couldn't find him anywhere. Forgot what he looks like. Was fucking, I, I was like stoned. I, I know I, I smoked the bowl. You know, I'll admit I smoked the bowl. Couldn't find the guy. I was like in and out of the stores looking. I'm like asking fucking cashiers, have you seen a man about this height and this and that? Couldn't find the guy. What's even worse is me and him went to a brothel museum, and there's some fucking pervert ready to whack off. It's a haunted brothel museum. But the problem was there was a guy, he was staring at condoms and sex toys, and he was getting all fucking sexual. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? I don't go that way, you know? The guy was creepy. It's the type of guy that you would not leave your kids two minutes alone with. Then I took my father-in-law to Big Trees. He didn't do no hiking, but can you imagine when I came back to him and I said, hey, Bigfoot just attacked us. He's looking at me like I'm a goddamn lunatic. I can't explain why something was throwing rocks at me and my son. We were the only vehicle up there near the woods. We were the only people in those woods. I can tell you right now, there ain't going to be a human being that's going to throw a rock at me because technically I'm a pretty big guy. And if I see you throw a rock at me, I'm going to shove that rock right up your ass, literally. So it wasn't a human being. Father-in-law, he's scared of heights. Does not like heights. But guess what happened? I took him along off-road and near a cliff. Got, poor guy, he's like 60-something years old, almost had a heart attack, was holding on for his dear life. Then I took him to a historic ranch to do an investigation. Dangberg Ranch, founders of Minden. And you know what? He was flirting with my son's teacher. The same month we had the transit of Venus, which only happens only every so many thousands of years. 
The same place that we went at Yosemite to camp at, two or three people died. Two or three people died. And you know what they died from? Rat feces. Mice feces. So when we go investigating, when we go into a place with a lot of rat droppings and things, we wear a mask. Because there is, because the thing is, if you get the virus, there is no cure for it. It will kill you. And, of course, you know, sadly, the same place we camped out at, because they have these canvas tents, there was rats getting in one of the tents, you know, because people leave food on the ground. They were defecating. People were sleeping and breathing and in all night. It only took one night. Guess where those people are? They're deceased. They're deceased. You know how many places I go that have rat droppings? Abandoned places, dust in the air, it gets stirred up. I am so lucky to be alive. And, you know, some of you people, you may, you know, you may come to the show and you may, you know, you may think what we do is not serious, but we risk our lives every time. The show is the only light side of the humor of what we do. Because if you don't see me come out, for a radio show, it means I am deceased. And I'm not afraid to say that because I know, I know the work we do. Just like cli I climbed multiple peaks this year. I'm traumatized. In my sleep, I still climb mountains because of all the injuries I sustained. You know, can you imagine that? You're fucking going to bed at night and you're like climbing fucking mountains, man. You're just, you know what I mean? That's, that's what it is, man. You know, I went shopping at Walmart. You guys know if you go into Walmart around Christmas time, you're going to be in lines. You may even go try to get a toy and may wait an hour to receive it from their warehouse. I waited an hour to receive an item that I was going to buy. They left me hanging. Me and this old lady, now she was like a bah humbug lady. She was like, fuck this, fuck that. Me and her started talking. I'm standing there in my Santa beard. She's talking to me. It's like, it's like, it's like happy holidays, man, you know? She was saying to me that Walmart's gotten so terrible in their management, and she's bitching on and on, and I can't agree with her more because I sat there, I sat there, Dealing with an hour of waiting. I spoke to five different, five different employees of Walmart. And you know what? Nothing got done. I waited an hour. When the girl came back, she tried to find every excuse of why she didn't serve me. Oh, you haven't been waiting an hour. Don't tell me I haven't been waiting an hour. I got a fucking watch on me, man. I've been sitting here for an hour waiting. And they've called you on the speaker, and you're off in the bathroom fucking fingering yourself instead of helping a customer out. I watched 12 to 15 customers in that hour who wanted to buy something walk away because they did not have customer service. Just like Hostess, Walmart's getting too big. It is. And up here, I don't know about you, but where I live, they don't have enough employees. You know, and earlier, I mean, Molly said that I was wrong. It was the unions. But, you know, I only get the information that's sent to me. I don't work for fucking hostess. So, it, you know, corporate greed is still corporate greed. And this country is very greedy. People want to make money, money, money. Not everything's about money, but Walmart, it's a money-making business. And they try to cut their corners with money. By not hiring enough employees. So when I went to the store to do Christmas shopping, they hardly had any employees. Yet there were thousands of people, ass to ass, tit to tit, dick to dick. And if you don't believe me about being ass to ass, I squeezed down an aisle to go buy something, and I felt some coochie. Okay? My dick rubbed up, rubbed up against some woman's coochie because I had to fucking squeeze in between her and the fucking clothing. And next you know, it's like, bada bing, bada fucking boom. That's what happened. 
Election blotter, TGIO. Thank goodness it's over. You know, a lot of people hated me because of my political views. They didn't like me posting political stuff on Facebook. I'm sorry. But, you know, for me, I, I supported Obama. And I'm going to tell you why. I had to go with the person who tries their best, even if they failed. Because they are man enough to admit their failures, just as I'm not afraid to admit that I have failures and flaws. But what makes a true leader is not the productive work they do. It's the fact of is that they are trying their best. And every time I go paranormal investigating, I don't promise my investigators we're going to see something. But I do promise to give it my all. If I can get us back to a ghost town, I'll get us back to a ghost town. If I can't do it, I can't do it. But you would not believe how many people deleted me as a friend. It's like, so in other words, the friendship doesn't matter because of my political views. And I had a buddy of mine leave tonight all because I made a Romney joke. I'm sorry, man. You want me to apologize for making a joke? A joke's a joke. People need to fucking loosen their shit up. Or maybe they just need to get laid. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know what people's problems are anymore. I know that we live in a society full of people who are greedy. You know, I've been losing my mind lately. Speaking of fucking mental illness and things, I lost my mind lately. For example, I was eating a hot dog. I went to take a shit. I came back. My hot dog was gone. I told my son, I said, have you seen my wiener? You should have looked, seen the look on his face. He's like, oh, what are you talking about? But my wiener was gone. I lost my wiener. I lost my weenie. My weenie w disappeared. And I asked him, I said, did you take it and eat it? Did you? He's all giggling, but then, you know, you talk about embarrassment. He says, Dad, you ate it. But he's sitting there laughing, and, you know, he's trying to hide the smile. So either my dogs, because I have American, American Bulldog and Pitbull mix, either he just magically climbed up on the table and helped himself to the meat and not the rest of the goodies on the plate, or I'm just losing my fucking mind. Which can happen. When you're a member of the Paranormal and Ghost Society, you will lose your mind. You know, I, I, I don't even want Christmas presents. Do you know what the best Christmas present, present I can have? I want everybody else to be happy. I want them to be happy with this show. I want them to be happy with the Paranormal Group. I want them to be happy spending time partying with me. I don't want nothing. Materials I cannot take to the grave. Would I like to have some stuff? Sure. You know, usually every show we get a lot of tips. I haven't gotten no tips tonight. I'm not going to light myself on fire. You know, if people want a tip, I'll give you a fucking show you'll never forget. But the thing is, that people got to understand, is that I don't want nothing for myself. Everything I do is for everybody else. I don't care what I get. I care about my investigators, I care about my viewers, I care about my friends. And you know, somebody asked me tonight about the roast. I'm going to be doing a roast, okay? And it's, it's probably going to be too bad for some of you to hear. You guys are going to be fucking, uh, you guys are going to be fucking either one way or another offended, or you're going to fucking stand up with me. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's the way it's got to go. I mean, when you sit there and you steal from this organization and you bash us and you take us for granted, I'm going to roast John Angel then at radio. And, you know, I, I did say I was going to do a roasting. Of course, someone left because I wouldn't do the roasting when they wanted me to do the roasting. But, you know, as goes, this show... We have specific guidelines we got to go through. And I don't want to throw everything out all at once. I want people to be able to enjoy different aspects. The paranormal, the comedy, this, that, you know. But anyways, if you want to donate, Tammy will post the PayPal and you can do it. Um, I still would like to 
be able to light myself on fire tonight. Some people don't want to partake in that. Um, you know, too bad. But anyways, I also told you guys I would sing some uh, Christmas carols, demonic style. So let's go ahead and let me sing another Christmas carol. It is, we're in the holiday spirit. Why the hell not? Dancing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go, fucking all the way. Balls on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sling a sling song tonight. Jingle balls, jingle balls, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle balls, jingle balls, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride, and soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The whore was leaning late. Misfortune seemed her a lot. She got into a drifted bank, and we began to smoke some pot. A day or two ago, the story I must tell, I went out on the snow, and on my back I fell. A lady was riding by in a one-horse open sleigh. She laughed as there I sprawl, jerking but quickly drove away. Now the ground is white. Go at it while you're young. Take the girls out tonight and sing this perverted song. Just get a bobtail bay, do 40 as her speed, hit your two and open slant crack, you'll take the lead. Jingle balls, jingle balls, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle balls, jingle balls, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. You know, it takes balls to come up and, and, and be able to sing something like that. Good thing Tammy left the room for a little bit. Because I don't think Tammy needed to be hearing that. <laughs> but anyways, you know. Eh, what the hell. I'll sing you guys another one. This one's 50 seconds, this carol. It'll take about a minute, maybe. Lord Rick Claus is coming to town. You better watch out. You better not spy. You better not tell. I'm telling you why. Lord Rick Claus is coming to town. He's fucking a bitch. Doing it twice. Gonna find out who's extra naughty and nice. Lord Rick is coming to town. He sees when you are fucking. He knows when you are sucking. He knows if you've been munching. So be a slut for goodness sakes. Oh, you better watch out. You better not whine, better not pout, I'm fucking telling you why. Lord Rick Claus is coming to town. Not bad, huh? Bad Santas are supposed to not be themselves, Tammy. Bad Santas swear, drink, and do everything under the sun. I was out investigating... One time, you know, and I, I got this hooker. She was, she had Pearson, she was blonde and petite and all this stuff. And I picked her up on the side of the road, you know. And she was thought I was a cop. She was all scared, you know. She said, um, she said, well, what is it you want? I said, I want a handy dandy. And, you know, she was like, well, I normally charge like 10 bucks for hand jobs. But uh, I said, well, it's the holidays. Can, would you take five bucks? This girl friggin', this girl gave me the works for five bucks, man. I got the works. On my way home, it was around Christmas time, I came across a bad Santa Claus. Like me, I'm a bad Santa Claus. I'm the perfect example. You guys can use me. I don't know what this dude's problem was, but this guy was chasing my vehicle. Like, full speed, man, in his Santa boots. He's just... You know, he's just fucking chasing it and stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what the fuck? So, you know, I'm, I'm hanging my middle finger out the window. Because, you know, it's in the middle. It's in the middle of, like, when the sun first comes up. You guys know that most Santa Clauses, when the sun comes up, they're still out there half drunk. They don't know what they're doing. I feel sorry for them. Well, I've had my share of bad Santas. Do you know what really pisses another Santa off? Is if you're Santa. There can only be one. It's like it's like fucking uh, that one that one that used to be on Highlander. There can only be one. You know. Don't let yourself be Santa on the streets and come across another Santa. He's gonna kick your ass unless you can kick his ass first. You know. 
But I'm telling you, it was like Highlander. He seen me wearing my beard driving and fucking was pissed. Like, like he turned into one of those fucking enraged zombies and started, like, running after me, you know, when his fucking beard's all blowing in the wind and shit. I just hung my middle finger out the window. Like, I let him get close to the car, and then I took off on purpose, you know? Mm-mm-mm. This is pretty good. So I hear you guys want a roast. You know, maybe it's a good time to come out with a roast. The problem is I just got to find my roast. I tend to lose a little bit of everything. Do you guys want to know one of my most successful Bigfoot adventures of 2012? I'll tell you what it is. Job's Peak. I went there three to four times. And what I couldn't figure out for the likes of me is why, is why I had to deal with tracks that were 20-something inches long. Now, I understand, you know, maybe people fraud things. It happens, you know. You go out and somebody, somebody might fraud tracks to get attention. But what I can't explain is when you're Bigfoot investigating. Here we go. When you're Bigfoot investigating and all of a sudden you come across a 23-inch track or 22-inch track with toe impressions. People say, oh, Bigfoot doesn't exist. You know that in 2012, after five years of DNA study, they found that there is a hominid or a Sasquatch creature that they cannot identify. The DNA of an unknown creature. And they said it's very human-like, but it's also ape-like too. Or, or actually primate-like. They cannot classify it. So technically, that is enough proof for me to say Bigfoot's out there. Because this is why we do the work we do. We know it exists. We've seen it. We've traced it. We've tracked it. But... To hear the news, in the news, and, and scientific organizations vouching that they have finally discovered Bigfoot was a big step in our humanity. Because it just shows that people like me who chase Bigfoot were not insane. That it is actually a real creature up in North America. Not just North America. Oh, the dog? No, it doesn't phase him. Hey, hey, dog! Hey, Rascal, you want to kiss Santa Claus? You want to kiss Santa? Oh, yes, kiss Santa Claus. There you go. Ooh, kisses. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That was the most thrilling fucking time I've had all week long. But anyways, you know, we are going to do a roast. We're going to do a live here at Angel of the Night Radio. You think my fucking, you think my combustion chamber's done? I'm just getting fucking started tonight, guys. You guys are either going to fall off your chairs laughing or something. But I really got to get this out there because, you know what, I got to protect myself. I have to. <laughs> yeah, right. But I have to protect myself, you know. And, you know, okay, you can shut up, Anna. is a lazy fat ass who cares more about booze than the paranormal... Emily smells like ass. Okay, you can shut up. Emily runs to the police on a brutally honest man. What she forgets it the good Lord studied law and is right for defending his integrity and friends. You are a tattletale. I get, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess you guys never seen Santa kiss a fucking dog. But anyways, you guys know that we had a member of our team who joined. Her name's Emily. Emily. You know, like, here, let me pronounce it slow for you. M. Mooey. But anyways, let's do this fucking roast. Fuck it. It doesn't matter who, how many people are listening. Let's fucking do this thing. We're on Angel Then A Radio, and you know what? Because this is live, there is nothing she can fucking do about it. She can't stop it. There's, she can go to the cops. She can go to whoever. But you know what? I tell it like it is, and I do it in a very funny manner. So, who is Emma Rui? Well, every event, she showed, she showed the two meetups in 14 months. And you ever seen the Hunchback of Notre Dame? That's her. Off in the corner like the Hunchback of fucking Notre Dame. She hasn't even gotten to the main event yet. She's already fucking hammered. Don't you guys know people who say they're witches? 
They all have the power, you know. Me and my sisters will banish you, we'll curse you, we'll hex you. You know what? This is what I believe. Some of you guys listening, you guys are psychics. Some of you have special talents and powers. I don't believe just because you're pagan that that gives you the right to go around saying you're psychic, clairvoyant, clairaudient, or you're good at the paranormal. Just because you're pagan doesn't mean you are fantastic at the paranormal. If I, she claims to be psychic, and we, fine, you're psychic. But you know what? Until Seeing is believing. If you don't come out on an investigation and prove to me that you are psychic, then there is nothing I can do. Give me the ball, man. Let's play some ball. I'm high. I'm drunk. Let's do this, man. You ready? There we go, as always. But anyways, you know John Edwards and these big-name guys? They're psychic. They can see the ghost sitting next to you. If you are as psychic as you say, why aren't you rich? Why were you living in a trailer up in Fresno, California? If you're this psychic, man, if I could see fucking ghosts, I would be on CNN. I'd be like, you know what? There's a ghost sitting next to you. We can't do this right now, dog. As much as you want to lick my face and, and fucking go crazy, we cannot do this. We are in the middle of a rope. You understand? Capiche? All right, capiche. I could talk to animals. I'm like the pet whisperer. But anyways, I'm going to tell you guys something, okay? I, I fired. We are a legit business. And I had fired MOE multiple times. And the reason why is I let her go down. I let her go because, A, she was not showing to the meetups. B, she was not showing the investigation. C, she was not participating on the forums. And D, every time she showed to a meetup, we never talked. I would be drinking beers and she'd be off in her corner like the hunchback of Notre Dame doing her own goddamn thing. And in my investigators, I would bring on new investigators. And you know what she'd do? She'd fucking talk about every fucking one of them. Oh, you know, she would write my, my Tammy and complain and be like, Tammy, oh, is the golden child coming out tonight? And then she was talking about Ted and talking about Kit, people who fixed my car and helped me out, and saying they're not trustworthy people. So when the meetup converged, our last meetup, Emily ended up not saying anything to anybody, you know, and it all started because a girl hit on me on Facebook, and she wrote me a nasty letter and said, if you were my husband, I'd fucking kill you. So then after that, she refused to talk to me. But she thought she was going to stay a member of the team, and I removed her as staff. I removed her as staff because she was bitching that other people had, had held higher positions in the group. I'm not going to just put you as CEO of my organization when you don't do shit but pick your fat, lazy ass on goddamn fucking Facebook. The point is, everybody works for what they have in life. And if you don't work at the paranormal and you don't come out for investigations, do not tell me you are a psychic. Do not tell me how to run my organization. She tried to redesign my site. She tried to tell me how not to get smoked pot anymore. She tried to talk about every investigator behind their back. I just couldn't take the whining anymore, you know? I removed her position, and guess what? Because I told her I am tired of her lack of participation. She printed the email, and she went to the cops, the sheriff's department, and tried to have me arrested this fucking Christmas. And the cop that called me, because he called me after she went down to the PD, because I know the cops... I know a lot of cops, actually, that browse my site and I talk to, told me how ridiculous she was. That, how, that she came down there with prints of emails and me telling her off and everything else. But you know what? When you sit there and you go and you libel my organization and you slander me and you turn around and you defame my character which I'm a hard-working guy at what I do. I don't make money at it, so why you got to defame me? But you defame me, and I write you and say I'm going to sue you, and you go to the police department, you got some serious issues. You're fucking one apple short of the goddamn apple tree. 
But, but you know, the thing is, is that I make this group fun for everybody. And there was no reason, just because I fired you from our organization, there's no reason you should have went to the cops. Not only have she went to the cops, but she's been making threats against me. Okay, these people own multiple guns and firearms. You know what, Emily? If you want to, I'll tell you what. Your husband can come to the door and stick a gun to my head. Pull that fucking trigger. But you might kill me, but you know what? Your husband will do life in prison. And you'll fucking go to prison too because I've already had a long talk with the cops. And I already told them that if I continue to receive threats with your uh, gun power, you won't have no guns. You'll have no guns. You'll have no license. So eat shit and kiss my fucking ass. Because you're a bitch, and what really pissed me off, I guess what really set me off is that she called all you guys who listen to my show, who listen to, who follow our site, who follow my Facebook, you're all groupies, that's what she called you. But do groupies sit down and smoke a bowl with me? When do, gr when do groupies fuck me good and plenty? When do groupies camp and chase Bigfoot with me? Those aren't groupies, those are friends. And friends... Spend time with other friends. And what pissed me off more than anything, it's not, it's not the fact that she wants to talk about me or tell me off or whatever. It's the fact of she called you guys groupies. What, would groupies send me Twinkies in the mail? She could sell those on eBay for like 20 bucks a piece. Would groupies donate? Would groupies tip our show? No. No, they would not. People who are truly friends will do nice things for other people. But I'm not going to have somebody tell me I'm not a success. We, in 2012, honestly, we've hit millions of fucking hits. We've had millions of viewers. I've had multiple TV producers contact me. I've made money off Google for our hits. I've had some of the most intriguing investigations in the history of my paranormal career. And to sit there and say you're not a success. That your people are groupies is very jealous. And every time we had an investigation. She'd make a jealous remark about one of our investigators. Behind their back. You don't talk about other team members. That's betrayal. You don't deserve to be on the team. I'll kick you off. She talked about our investigators. She was fucking pissed that she didn't get a higher position. It's like lady. Get your fat ass out off your fucking chair, get off of Facebook, and start investigating. If you don't want to investigate, shut your goddamn fat mouth. You know? But these pagans, nothing against pagans, but this is a pagan who thinks that because she can read tarot cards over a telephone, she's almighty and powerful. You know what I say? Curse me, bitch. Bring it fucking on. I'll put it tenfold on you. I know how to displace energy. I've been doing this work a long fucking time. Go ahead. I welcome it. Go ahead. Have your husband shoot me in public. Shoot me. Put a gun to my fucking head. I'll curse your goddamn entire family. I'll possess every one of your family members. Go ahead. Do it. I'm not fucking afraid of guns. Just make sure you kill me when you fucking shoot me. The point is, is this woman tried to put me in prison for Christmas. And the cops, this is what the cops had told me. They said, Rick, you didn't threaten her. You didn't say anything wrong. She's wasting our tax dollars. That's exactly what they told me. And, and it is. It's a waste of tax dollars. But you know what? Her brother's a dweeb, too. He was taking our radio show clips, posting them on her page, and breaking it into little segments and pieces. We do videos for comedy. They're comedy skits. That doesn't mean that I come home and I act it or act upon it, you know? But, you know, I don't care anyways because I was drunk and high when I did our last advertisement. You know, his goatee is crooked. He's a scrawny kid. He came to the meetup and was scared to take one of my business cards. And on top of it, he works at a Halloween store in Carson City. And he takes pictures of... Buckets on his head. It's like, wow, you are a real exciting fella. You came to our meetup girlfriend, girlfriendless. You didn't even have a woman with you. Every event in my life, whenever I went to a concert, a bar or something, I always had a date. Always had a date. And this guy comes in with this crooked goatee, 
and, and you know what? Instead of hanging with everybody else, he hangs with his sister. Oh, yeah, that's where I want to be. I want to go to a pub and hang with my sister. I want to clash beers with my fucking sister. Pussy. You know, I don't have anything bad to say about her husband, Tim. Tim's a good guy. He's a decent guy. He probably doesn't know half of the lies he's being told. He probably thinks that I fucked over his wife and I talk bad about her. But I don't. The truth is, is he's told what he's told. But you know what? I've had friends, I've had members of Facebook who think that he is just totally controlled by her. You know? And, you know, he even told me. When he bought a milkshake, he's like, I couldn't even tell her. He's like, I don't even want to tell my wife I bought this milkshake. What's that tell you? But you know what? There is no place in the world, 2012, 2013, 2014, there is no place for anybody jealous in our organization. If you're jealous, go, go investigate for someone else. If you are supportive, you will have a position in our group for many years to come. But if you get jealous because I bring a bro along with me to climb some 11,000-foot fucking peak, you got issues when you're 300 pounds sitting at your fucking computer. But you know what her name is? Her name's Mama M. And she says, ask her, and she's got all the answers. Well, it's like, okay, uh, let's see you run my paranormal organization. Let's see you deal with the fucking yahoos and the cuckoos out there and the death threats. Let's see how you fucking handle that. Because I know one thing. I get death threats, but I do not threaten to kill or hurt people. But you know what? I get threatened or I get threatened with guns. I get threatened with my life all the fucking time. And when I get close to aliens or UFOs, then people, people from the government threaten me. And I don't sit there and say, hey, I own a gun. I'm going to fucking shoot you. You know, I don't go to the cops. But you know what? Ask Mama M. She wants to run my paranormal site, wants the top position in the group, doesn't even introduce herself to any of the other investigators, doesn't research, doesn't write places, doesn't do shit, but wants the CEO position. How do you guys like that? You guys think that's fair? You think it's fair that I climb mountains, bust my ass, and she wants to be a higher position than I am? You know, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. You know, she says to me in an email, you think you're awesome. She said, you think you're awesome, and called me a douchebag. So tonight, some of you listening, maybe you wrote me these things. I don't know. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to read every one of those replies to her email that I sent. Because I want you people to see that we do have true friends out there who believe and support us. They're not groupies. They're people that care. Bernice, you're a good guy and so full of life. Why you have people that want to bring you down is beyond me. Some people can't understand that someone can have admiration and respect for one another and not be labeled as a groupie. I'm in Virginia... And I'm also 49 years old. But I am flattered at the thought. Kelly, wow, what the hell is wrong with people with guns? They want the power to let them, you know, let them use their mouths, not a weapon. Hello, what happened the other day? Hello, have they forgotten or just don't care? She's referring to the disaster up in um, Connecticut. Sean, I'd also like to vouch that I'm not a groupie. You're a good-looking guy and all. But I like vagina. Bernice, again, that is because you have a heart. I seen the post you wrote about the problems you were having with a certain person. I came to the same conclusion as you. Very jealous. I think maybe someone is secretly attached to you. Why would she call your girl and tell her crap? Tammy's, Tammy bothers no one. Everything I have ever heard about her is good, and she cares for you and your sons deeply. Some people want others to be unhappy as they are. Tammy has too much class to fall for that crap. Merry Christmas to you and yours, Lord Rick. Kim, I'm not a groupie either, but you're all right, buddy. Heidi, you're better than this crap, Rick. She isn't worth another breath or a second of your time. Be happy. You don't have to deal with that horse shit anymore. Yay. Jill, I've known her for a decade. She even came out for a, a, a party once when I was back east. You've touched more than you'll ever know. It's what's on the inside that counts, and you're a good man, Rick. Donna, 
Hey, just do what you do and the hell with what other people think. I like you and respect you as a person and as a paranormal investigator. No matter what anybody says, if I am a groupie, so be it. They get to sleep with the hot guy. All kidding aside, I respect what you do and who you are, and you always have a B and an A asshole in your life. We love you. Hugs and kisses. Kathleen, gosh, guys, I never thought of myself as a groupie. At any time in my life, but what the hell, if it makes me feel young again, laughing my ass off. Debbie, good friend of mine. I agree, Rick. We are fans, followers, well-wishers, and friends. Too bad Emily, Emily, sorry, Emily is a friggin' hater. Marty, love you, Rick, and I'm not a groupie, but I am a retired sheriff's deputy. Want me to cuff her to a real douchebag? Let's see Charlie Sheen would work. Let's see if Charlie Sheen would work. He's a douchebag. Or maybe a politician. Okay, I'm working on it. Give me some time. I'll find the right person to handcuff her to. She's a cop. And she's still and she's still friends with many cops. I have friends with a lot of law enforcement. Believe it or not, they know I smoke pot. They're okay with it. They accept me for me. I talk to cops all the time through my, through my Facebook and stuff. Vicky, you're a great guy and I think of you as my friend. Don't let people shit about you and you who you are. And some people just get jealous because they have no friends and some self, you know, basically self-esteem issues. And she sees you have a lot of friends that like to joke and laugh with you, and she must not have that in her life. I believe in the work you do. So if someone thinks I'm a groupie, oh, well. I never met you, but I think of you as a great friend. I don't know her, and I'm thankful for that. Anyways, have a great day. Hugs. Valerie, sounds like she needs to hire a babysitter and get out more. That, and she has been bitten by the green eye of envy. Angela, I've known Angela for many years. I've been your friend for long as I remember meeting you, following you ever since I share some things as into the paranormal. But my mother was alive, and she'd tell people how wonderful you are. Now, when her mom was alive, she thought I was a very wonderful guy. Okay, she's deceased now. You're an honest, loyal, true friend, but hey, there are skeptics out there and a few negative people who are just bullies. We are all human, so there shall be peace on earth. People love and peace and understanding and respect others. But Rick is a good man. You, don't, you need to get to know him well enough. You know what a decent person he is. Respect his job. Don't go degrading him or judging him. He's a human. But he is the best paranormal investigator you could ever meet and learn from. He's the real deal, and I learned a lot through him. But everyone has their own opinions. But, geez, why try to mess with Rick when he's a decent man? Face of this earth, trust me, there isn't many men like him out there. He's one of a kind. He's unique. One, but Tammy is the most wonderful girl, and I think she made Rick happiest man alive. But please respect these people, Rick. Have a happy holidays. To you and your family. Keep up the good work. Another lady said, there was another lady who wrote me. And this lady wrote me, as soon as Emily said I wasn't awesome, the girl goes, you are awesome, Rick. And it was funny, you know. It was really funny because everything that this person said, people had counteracted, you know. But, you know, the thing is, the whole thing is about what I do for a living is that I believe in the basic laws of life. You know, when I sit there and I do paranormal investigating, I respect the places I go, no matter what their condition is. When I see a redwood tree, because I'm near the redwoods, I respect the redwoods. You know, I don't vandalize anything. I don't hurt anything. But when somebody starts getting jealous over the founder of PGS, it's like this is a position... That you have to earn. When you do a thousand investigations, then come talk to me. But don't sit there and fucking threaten me with guns and call the cops and do all the shit to me because you don't like who I am. And that's basically what it came down to. This person, this individual became so obsessed and so jealous with our organization that she started hating on me. This is a person who doesn't go on investigations. Her husband's not allowed to go on investigations without her. It's so childish. 
And I want people to know in 2013, if I get shot, if somebody kills me, whatever, you guys know that Emily and Tim and her brother Patrick were all part of it because they don't like me for who I am. But I'm not Fresno trailer trash. I didn't live in Fresno. I didn't live in a goddamn fucking trailer. I come from the East Coast. And I took my work, my talents from the East Coast, and I decided to open up an organization or carry the organization to the West Coast. And since I've been here for two years, I've done a great job. I've done more places than any of these other paranormal groups here. And I don't want recognition. I just want people to enjoy our work and see it for what it is. Just like our show, you know. You guys come out. I'm a little disappointed in the amount of viewers. I mean, you know, nobody's calling, nobody's tipping, nothing. But, but I host a show because I enjoy to do it. I don't even know if I'll come back with a radio show in 2013. I may not. I may punish people permanently because I'm just tired of having to carry the show myself. You know, we haven't, we've only gotten one call tonight. Normally, per show, we get 50 calls. It's the holidays. What is it to call in and wish me a happy New Year's? What is it to fucking call in and ask a paranormal question? What is it to Skype in the show? It's nothing. It takes five minutes of your time. But anyways, we're going to get on some other topics of interest. My dog is an American Bulldog and Pit Bull mix. And I had rescued him from a shelter because the problem was is that these type of dogs, nobody's adopting out, you know. And I wanted to give him a home. 2012 for me, and I'm going to talk about my highlights of 2012. But I will at least key you in on this. He, Rascal, when I got Rascal, he was a puppy. He was about nine months old. And I, um, I had to train him to go out in the wilderness. He didn't come trained. You know, he, came, he was untrained. He was abused. Um, I guess there was a rancher that would hit him probably with their gun. Because he's very scared of guns. And um, he, it took him a while to get trained. And I had brought him on an investigation into the iceberg wilderness. Now, I, I've been taking him on investigations. We went to Mount Raymond. He hiked 20 miles with me. Guarded me the entire time. Great dog. But when we ran into cattle up in the woods of Highland Lakes... He took off after the cattle and vanished. I couldn't find him anywhere. I had to hike back in the dark myself for about eight miles in the dark. No dog. My light's running out. Something chasing me on the trail. And he, sure enough, he was sitting at my truck waiting for me. But he's got a thing for chasing cattle. He's a cattle-chasing dog. And um, when he sees him, he goes crazy. And the problem is... When you go hiking up in the Sierra Nevadas, there are wild cattle in the woods. You can be in the woods and you'll see a wild cattle and you'll be scratching your head like, this is not right. But the thing is that he's been loyal to me and he's a great dog. And I rescued him and I'm very proud to have him as an investigator of our team. You know, people don't, people don't think about it very much, but these dogs need rescuing. You know, I mean, these dogs don't have homes. A lot of them get gassed. They get killed. They don't have a home to go to. And I wanted to be able to do the right thing. So a couple of years ago, I had adopted him. He's, he's, a very, he's an 80-pound dog. He's all muscle. He's all muscle. He's very capable. I mean, he, I seen him one day bringing a bird. He can catch birds in midair. Um, so he's a big and powerful dog, but he is, he's very loyal. I have all kinds of kids coming in and out of my house all summer long. 
even in the evenings after school, and he just loves all kids. He doesn't like certain men. Like, if you're a man and you come into my house, he'll tell me if you're a good person or not. He can sense that on you. But he's a good dog, and all this bullshit of pit bulls and gladiator dogs are bad dogs. They attack people. They kill people. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's all how you raise him. I don't raise my dog to be an attack dog. Although I can command him to bite, and he will, if it's necessary. If I'm in the wilderness and something's attacking me, I can say bite, and he will attack. But only on my command. It's not like he's going to attack anybody who comes to my house. Great dog. He protects me. He's loyal. The kids sleep on him. They hug him. Curls up and keeps you warm in the winter. Dog's man's best friend, you know. And he's also a member of the Paranormal and Ghost Society, which this show would not exist if it were not for the Paranormal and Ghost Society. And you guys can check us out at www.paranormalghostsociety.org. And if you want to donate to PonderCorp57 at yahoo.com, I can guarantee you I will still light myself on fire tonight. But like I said, I'm not, I want to take the proceeds and put them towards something good. And so that's why I'm lighting myself on fire. And, of course, some people have been impatient. Rick, light yourself on fire. It doesn't work like that, man. If you want me to do a stunt for the show, you got to donate to the Paranormal and Ghost Society. I mean, it's a, it's a give-and-take situation. And I'm not saying my investigators have to donate because them volunteering is their donation. They don't need to donate anything else but their time. You know? Doomsday, though. You're listening to Angel That Night Radio, Doomsday. What's Doomsday about? I mean, what is it really about? Is it about the end of the world? You know, I read an article today that although it's not, it's not the end of the world, there is something going on in space right now. And scientists are very fearful because it could be still the end of mankind coming up in weeks. Um, as you know, solar flares in the near in 2013 may be at their height, may wipe out the entire power grid. The thing is, if the power grid gets wiped out, the White House will go down. The law and order will cease to exist. Chaos will erupt in the streets. Your neighbor will be robbing from you. You will have to kill people to defend what's yours. That's the end of the world. It might, and not the end of the entire earth, but the, the end of your world as you know it. Because your way of life is going to change. Just like that, share, that series called Revolution where they lose all the electricity and you see some guy... He's a cannibal. He has no food, so he's killing people and eating their bodies. Because there's no electricity. And once there's no electricity, everything runs on electricity. The show, the paranormal investigations we do, the internet, no electricity means we're on your own. I've told people, I'm trying to gather people to move out here. Because I'm trying to create a strong group of people. Not strong, but people who want to follow my lead. So that in case a disaster like Yellowstone blows and, and creates a nuclear winter, you guys can survive. And I can teach you how to survive, and I can also protect you. And you can protect me and watch my back. But the problem is that I fear that something big is going to go down. Not tonight, not on the 21st, because I did this show to show you that the 21st is just the end of the Mayan calendar, nothing more. But I wanted to, I wanted to try to show you I wanted to try to show you that there's going to be many doomsdays in our future. One of them is going to be real. Even the scientists said they cannot predict comets, that a comet could hit us within three months at any time. But humans will survive. The problem is, is that sometimes it takes more than one human. And there will be tribes... There will be crime syndicates. There will be groups that will band together to survive. I want to form my own group, survivor group. I think it's almost essential. That way, if a super volcano goes off, we go into another ice age, or flooding, whatever, I know that I can work together with other people to create a way of life so that our future still survives for all of us. I'm not a crazy doomsday fucking prepper. I'm not... I am nothing more than a common sense fucking guy. And I look at things with common sense. I knew the world went and it's fucking the 22nd on half the other side of the world, you know. But but people panic. 
people are committing suicide because they think an alien ship is going to come pick them up. Yes, aliens have been to this planet. Yes, some of the things we cannot explain, the ancient mysteries. However, however, we control our own destinies. The only thing we do not control is natural disasters. And if you know anything, there was 300 tornadoes in one month that hit the Midwest last year ago. And, and a lot of people think it's because our government has been experiencing, experimenting with a program called HARP up in Alaska. HARP shoots a beam up into a sky. It's a weather control experiment, but it spreads, it spreads, it changes the weather, it changes the United States weather. It caught, I mean, it's, you're not going to see the same weather you've seen in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. But HARP reinvents it. And messing, playing God, playing God, can cause some of the worst, worst natural disasters. Some people felt that the Indonesia tsunami that killed 230,000 or 250,000 people was caused by HARP. Because of our experimentation, the U.S. military's experimentation into controlling weather. Because you're shooting this shit up in the sky. And it's changing the jet stream. It's changing the clouds. It's changing everything. And people really got to be real about this. We have no place in playing God. We, have, we are going to destroy ourselves. If we don't destroy ourselves, like Jupiter getting hit by that comet, we may get hit by a comet, which will be a cataclysmic event, which will take 10 billion people and basically put it down to a million people left on Earth. We have to start doing something. We have to invest in our space program. We have a guy that's up in um, Las Vegas. Got two space stations going on. They're designed to fit him and seven people up in space. Big company in Vegas, high security. He believes that there's an I mean, he believes, although it's not out there, that we are going to be invaded by an alien species. You ever watch Fallen Skies? That's what Fallen Skies is about. It's about the invasion of a foreign species outside our star system, our solar system. They come in there, and they basically invade the human species. They eradicate the humans. They're here, to, they're here for the Earth's resources. And it's a scary scenario because you got to think, and I'm glad you like the elf ears, Ted. Don't think I didn't see it, because I did. But our species is very powerless against an alien species that has millions of years of evolution. We cannot stop them. I am afraid in 2012 with all these major UFO sightings on the news and stuff, I am afraid that something big is going to happen. And within 10 years, we may be invaded by an alien species. That's doomsday. You will be hiding in your houses. You will be hiding and surviving, trying to survive, and some of you will be killed. Because there are hostile alien species. I have seen an alien. I know they exist. I wasn't high or on drugs or drinking or anything. I seen what I seen. It was not of this world. I know they exist. I've seen UFOs. I know they exist. They could invade and they could take all the Earth's research re resources. You've got to look at it this way. There are millions of solar systems, billions of galaxies, billions of stars. Every star has a solar system with about 8 to 15 planets. However, every solar system has an Earth-like planet, sometimes two Earth-like planets, planets with carbon dioxide and a sustainable atmosphere. Mars was once a sustainable planet. Something happened on Mars, a mass extinction. It is a red, dusty desert planet. The deserts consumed everything. What happened on Mars is going to happen here one day. The water is going to be gone. The desert's going to consume everything, and we will not be here. But every solar system has an Earth-like planet. And on those Earth-like planets, there are species other than humans that are far more advanced than we are. 
maybe millions of years advance, where they can go to other solar systems, maybe use black holes as gateways, whatever the case is. And if their solar system is in trouble and they need resources, even if we become on their food chain, they are going to come here and they are going to destroy us. And the Mayans believed that, the Mayans didn't believe it, the Mayans were visited and they were taught about the universe and the stars. And they made these calendars, and the calendar each day was complicated. A bunch of, bunch of artwork for each day. So they went ahead a couple thousand years, and that's why it stops. Some people feel the doomsday is a new culture and transition of mankind. I don't know. I don't feel any different. I know one thing, tomorrow when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to Starbucks and get myself a fucking cup of coffee, and I'm going paranormal investigating. You know, that's what I do know. But just because the calendar ends does not mean it's doomsday. It's like the best April Fool's joke on the list. You got people panicking, you know, oh, it's doomsday, it's doomsday, but, you know, in reality, in time, and I know you guys agree, But, you know, the work that we do is we try to uncover these mysteries. And my team knows, the only ones who know what I got planned are my team. We don't let anybody from the outside, let, let anybody from the outside, we don't reveal what we're going to do. They know my plans, they know where we're taking this organization in the future. We got big things going on. And... You know, I am friends with everybody. I don't care if you're a cop, if you work for the government, if you're in the military, if you're gothic, if you're punk. I mean, I don't care because I want to work with other people and I want to help other people. And it makes me sick to have somebody that I give a position to in my organization Turn around and call the cops on me because I was honest with them that they're not helping out. People out there, I think mental, mental problems. I'm talking about the people who shoot, that shot up the place in Connecticut, the, the kid and the guy in Aurora, Colorado who shot all those people. Those people have issues because they don't have respect for human life, let alone alien life let alone ghost, to be a paranormal founder, you have to far surpass most people in humanity to do what I do, to deal with the ghost, to go to people's houses and investigate and have to ha and decide if this person's crazy or not. It's a good service what we do. I don't get paid for it. It's sad. It's sad that people like Taps Ghost Hunters make thousands of dollars and they, even though they're on TV and get paid, people are fucking floating them tons of money, too. Sad. It's sad. Because they, not like me, I have to pay for my trips and pay for my equipment and pay for the site. And then you got someone on TV making three, four grand a fucking show. You know? And they're still getting donations. Not right. Not and it's something to think about. But you know, in 2012, it was a time to reflect for me. I spent a lot of time looking for Bigfoot. Did I find him? Yeah, I did. I did. I know where he's at. Am I going to reveal the location? Fuck no. But you know what? I climbed Genoa Peak, a 4,000-foot elevation gain straight up the mountain. Beer, Reser Beer Lake Reservoir in Coal Creek. We climbed to the massive canyon, which the Muckalumni River has carved for thousands of years. How about Mount Raymond? Climbed a volcano this year. On the backside, there's a lake, a beautiful lake, crystal blue, super deep, just an awesome lake. A lot of Bigfoot activity up at Mount Raymond. Job's Peak, been up there four times. I got so bad. When I was climbing down the mountain... I was dehydrated, ran out, spent the night there, ran out of fluids. I pissed in a Gatorade bottle. I drank my own urine to survive. I'm not ashamed of it. 
I did what I had to do to live. Otherwise, I'd have passed out. And you know what? It's still, to this date, one of the best investigations in 2012. All because of all the activity we experienced. I can't even get the, the stool DNA tested because it's hard to get DNA out of stool. But we found some stool up in those mountains. We also found tracks, three types of tracks, all measuring the same in, in parts that humans haven't walked in a century. Does Bigfoot exist? Does Bigfoot roam? Yes, it is a living creature. And the work we do is scientific. It isn't all about getting drunk and stoned on Angel of the Night Radio. When we're out there in the field, our work is very serious because we have to do honest work to be able to reflect on those viewing our site. But anyways, you know, I, I just, you know, you're right. Tammy said um, the Mayan calendar ends every 5,000 years. And she, you know, just because it ends doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You know. Emily cakes on so much makeup that she looks like she is wearing a mask. Oh, come on, Anne. Come on. Fucking, fucking Anne and her goddamn sayings, you know? Emily and Patrick love Lord Rick. I know, I know. What else you got for me, Ann? Come on, tell me something else. Maybe Ann doesn't have anything to say. Maybe she does. Patrick works at the Halloween store to steal jobs from underage students. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear another Christmas carol? The waffle? What about the blue waffle? Anybody hear about the fucking blue waffle? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but chains and whips excite me, so tie me up and slap my butt and show me that you like me. Wanna hear a song? Twinkle, twinkle, little whore. Close your legs, you're not a door. Twinkle, twinkle, little whore. You're cheaper than a dollar store. <laughs> Ted knows about the blue waffle. Woo! <laughs> oh my God, you guys, you guys are cracking me up. But um, you know, like I say, you know what, you know what, paranormal investigating is what I like about it most. Let me just let you guys in on something. It's about the people that I meet, about the friends that I create. There are people that hate me. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I got people that want to kill me. All right, that is why I host this show. I want you people to know that I get death threats and people want to kill me. So if I die in a couple months or whatever, you guys know, you guys know who, who's fucking after me. That's why we roast people. Because once it goes public, there is nothing anybody can do. Because it, it'll go back on them, you know. But anyways, Anne, she, Anne is a member of the crew. She is like a co-host. And, of course, you know, she's got a million fucking jokes she could tell you, you know, like this one. Come on, Ann. Wife walks into the bedroom naked. Hubby says, what are you wearing? Wife says, my birthday suit. Hubby says, well, fucking iron it. Nice job, Ann. Tell them about the boobs, man. Tell them about the boobs. Boobs are two men. What Fisher-Price stacking rings are to babies. They feel good, are fun to play with, and always wind up in the mouth. I know about that. You guys ever wonder what happens about Happy Meals in China? Come on, Ann, tell them about Happy Meals. I wonder if kids in China ever look at their Happy Meals toys and say, I made this. <laughs> oh, my God. Boy. I heard that Emily was trailer trash when she lived in Fred. No, Lord Rick. <laughs> what about Patrick, Em? What about Patrick, Ann? Patrick, your goat tea is slightly off by about 10 degrees. Get a handle on it. <laughs> Get a handle on it. 
Moo Emily, Moo Emily, Moo Emily, Moo Emily, Moo Emily. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, wonder if she. You guys think that she's gonna go to cops because I roasted her on my show? How can you know what? I'm gonna tell you something because I know you're out there listening, Miss Emma Wee. Um, I studied law for years. You will never get me arrested. You can try, but you will never get me arrested because I know. I know what I can say and what I can't say. I can, this is, according to the First Amendment, I can sit here and call you a fat piece of fucking shit. And you cannot go to the cops. I can call a cop a fat piece of shit. And I cannot be arrested in this country. You know, you can scare me with your weapons, but I don't need no goddamn weapon. Because I'll tell you what, when I go investigating in a place, if someone pulls a gun or a knife, that's it. They're done. They're done. I don't need no weapons. That's why we weapons in this country are too overrated. People are abusing weapons. Nobody needs to abuse weapons. You want to scare me with your gun? Your guns don't scare me. Like I said, put the gun up to my head and pull it. I dare you to. I dare you to. Come to my door and put. I'll, I'll put the gun up next to my head. Let's see if you pull that trigger. Let's see if you pull it. You want to see how crazy I fucking am? Do it. I dare you to. Otherwise, shut your goddamn fucking pie hole and get goddamn lost. Okay, because you smell like fucking ass anyways. How's that for you? Go tell the cops I told you that you smell like goddamn fucking shit. Yeah, but you know what? I have told cops off. And you know what? I've had cops relinquish my ticket. I told a cop once off, and you know what? That cop... Instead of writing me a ticket, he just gave me a warning. You know, I, I, I believe in the First Amendment. That is what I protect. I don't care if somebody wants to make fun of me. There is nothing I can do. If you want to tell people lies about me, I can sue you. But if you say, hey, Lord Rick is a piece of shit, I can't go to the cops with it. If I say you smell like shit and you go to the cops... You're not only wasting tax dollars, you look like a complete fucking moron. You know? And besides, Anne knows what she's talking about. Emily smells like ass. Emily is a lazy fat ass who cares more about booze than the paranormal. <laughs> oh, you gotta love that shit. You know, I better get down to some articles before this show ends. And... You know, I, I, I really need to get to some odd news. But Christmas decorations and snowball fights were banned in the U.K. And I'm going to try to wrap up the show within the hour, guys. But now it's article time as we wind down the show. The United Kingdom wins first place in the Grinch-like behavior. In a bold move, health and safety authorities have banned a number of Christmas decorations and offices, snowball fights, and coin and puddings because they are too dangerous. The crackdown has even extended the Christmas pantomime performances with customary sweet throwing in the crowds pegged as a risk. To counteract the Grinch-like behavior, local authorities, the British central government has released a slew of it's-not-your-fault statements over the past years, vowing not to kill the spirit of Christmas. Some of the seasonal activities in the government says they have been unjustly banned by the local health and safety authorities are stopping children from having snowball fights on school grounds. This is retarded. There's also been reports tarnishing carol singers as health and safety risk, although reasoning is unclear. Here's one. Christmas trees are bad for your health, according to a Grinch study. Researchers with too much time in their hands and inflated budgets will find any reason to create a syndrome. Christmas tree syndrome is the latest affliction being used as an excuse not to like Christmas or mope around and act like a Grinch. In the United States... According to a new study, a number of ailments are being attributed to Christmas trees and homes, including wheezing, coughing, lethargy, and insomnia, the Telegraph reports. This is because mold growing on trees causes problems when breathed in, according to researchers at an upstate medical university, part of the state of University of New York. There you go, another reason to hate Christmas. Slow clap for New York. Here's one. Christmas tree thief, he leaves a trail of pine needles. It was easy for the police to catch up with the Christmas tree thief in England this week. He left the trail of pine needles. Five trees were stolen from the nursery in Spensburn, West Yorkshire, 
where police were called sure, shortly after a theft by the owner, John DeCray. Arriving at the university, officers soon noticed a line of pine needles leading away from the crime scene. Mr. DeCray and the officers followed the needles for half a mile, leading them to not only the possession of trees, but the stash of narcotics. The officers arrested a 17-year-old on burglary and cultivating cannabis. Basically, they were all at his apartment. Who needs five trees? Seriously, who needs five trees? You know? I mean, people never cease to amaze me in the stupid shit they do. Anyways, you know, you've heard about England. There was another article that says... A solar flare can unleash nuclear holocaust across planet Earth, forcing hundreds of nuclear power plants to turn into meltdowns. This is fact. If, now I'm not saying it would happen, but if, let's say a solar flare is so powerful that it either fries us or fries the power grid, it is possible without power Nuclear reactors would overheat, and everyone in this country would be dead. You know what? It's not even the nuclear facility blowing up. It's not the explosion or anything. When a nu The nuclear radiation, the radiation at these nuclear power plants would get up into the atmosphere. It would create a s nuclear storm or cloud, and it would go across the entire Earth, creating radiation sickness. We all would die. Except people maybe in the Ozarks who have that underground facility, which is an entire city underground. They would be safe. They'd go underground and they'd shut their fucking 10-foot thick doors. And they have enough supplies to live 20 years underground. What about you and I? What's going to happen to you and I? What if the power grid does go down? What if nuclear disaster is imminent? What if it does happen? You have to think about this kind of stuff. You can't live in fear. But you also have to think common sense. And when you're dealing with doomsday scenarios, that is a very likely doomsday scenario. It's not going to be the end of the world. It's going to be the end of mankind, all due to our nuclear power plants. As it stands, we have like 50 to 60 nuclear power plants. If the power goes down at them all at once, you might as well kiss your keister goodbye. You cannot survive radiation sickness. You'll start, you'll fall, you'll start off by losing hair. You will grow up intensely, and you will die. Depending on how bad the sickness is, you could be dead in a day or two. But even if it's slow over time, it's, it's going to just kill you over 30 days of time, right? I mean, am I right? So we have to kind of consider that. You know, I was, I was looking at the article and thinking, wow, I never thought like that. You know, but... but Nuclear power plants are a problem, and we need to find other sources of energy. A girl char was charged and arrested, Christine, 47, for offering sexual favors for two McDonald's dollar menu cheeseburgers. There was an undercover officer. He invited Baker into his car on Friday and started talking about sex. And then she said, that her fee was two McDoubles, the dollar menu version of a double cheeseburger, costing a grand total of two seventy-five. Of course, Baker, who was also allegedly looking for a tip of another forty dollars for her services, um, the Brandon and Het Herald reported. The detective bought the cheeseburgers, drove to a vacant lot where the agents arrested her on charges of prostitution. It's yet unclear whether she was allowed to eat the delicious doubles before she was taken in the jail. I, in all my years of doing what I do, in all my years, I have never heard of prostituting for cheeseburgers. I can't even stand McDonald's. Do you guys know when you go to McDonald's and you buy a cheeseburger, you can take the cheeseburger and you can sit the cheeseburger on a table and leave it for three months and it'll still look like a cheeseburger three months later. It will not, it will not deteriorate very much, if at all. They pump so much chemicals into their beef that God knows, I mean, you're going to throw, you're going to, you gentlemen are going to grow a third fucking penis. You ladies are going to grow three tits. 
Keep eating McDonald's, man. I used to tell my ex-wife, keep eating McDonald's. I hope you grow a third fucking tit. I'm sure by now she's growing a third tit. The problem is that it covers her fucking vagina. <laughs> but anyways, you know, I, I have been, I also get articles for the show. And I've been studying a lot of different things. And there was another article about Noah's flood happening. I'm not a religious guy, but I can tell you this right now. If all the poles were to melt, including the Greenland ice sheet, much of the earth would be underwater. There is proof. When you go to Utah, Mount Zion, and you dig, you will find seashells in the dirt. You know why? Because part of Utah was underwater millions of years ago. And all that water has turned to a mile-thick ice shield in the Antarctic Ocean, the Arctic Oceans, and on the poles. The flood could happen again. Now, they, they say that, you know, the seas in 100 years will rise a few feet. You know what? You guys even know what this means if the seas rise? It's not the end of mankind, but you can kiss New York City goodbye. New York City is going to be underwater. As it is, Sandy was bad. This is two years in a row a hurricane has hit New York City. This time it was much worse. And, and people don't understand that, that this is a serious issue. It's not normal to have a hurricane start in Florida and hit New York City. It's not a normal everyday incident. And people died. People lost their houses. It's a very sad fucking scenario. I got friends who had damages from Hurricane Sandy. The weather is changing. Maybe the poles are shifting. We don't even know it. But something's going on here. You got to look and you got to pay attention. You got to wonder what the hell is going on. Noah's Ark did happen. There was a great flood, 5000 BC. It happened. There are. There were in Nevada. An ancient whale that was found, the skeleton of an ancient whale, all the way to central Nevada. And you guys know Nevada is the most mountainous state. I'm proud to live in Nevada. It's a great state. The deserts are very dismal and haunting looking. There's a lot of wilderness. I'm also on the edge of California, so I enjoy California as much as I enjoy Nevada. You know, but it's a very, it, it's a state that has been underwater. And, and people, you know, they, they think that the Noah's Flood is a joke, but it's not. Um, you know, here's a story. There was a gold Christmas tree that showed, sold for $4.2 million in Tokyo. And for those seeking a glow to their Christmas this year, a jewelry store in downtown Tokyo has just the answer. It's a pure gold revolving tree covered in Disney char characters such as Tinker Bell, Cinderella, Mickey Mouse. The tree-like ornament is made of 40 kilograms, which just comes out to about about 88 pounds of pure gold, standing 2.4 meters, 7.9 feet high, 1.2 meters in, di in diameter. And um, it's got a decorated pure gold silhouette cutouts of 50 popular Disney characters. They're all draped in ribbons uh, made of gold leaf. And like I say... It's 350 million yen or 4.2 in American dollars. Um, I don't know who's going to buy it. You know, I mean, if you're working for two and a half men, hey, man, maybe you're able to afford something like that. But, I mean, what, what animal casualties, Tammy? What are, you, what are you talking about? I'm just a little curious. Oh, Noah's Ark? Well, that could be misinterpreted. Who's to say that when Noah made an ark, he, he took animals at all? Because you've got to understand, even if Noah's flood happened, there is not enough water to cover the entire earth. In other words, high points such as mountains would be exposed, not underwater. And animals are smart. You know, if an animal senses impending disaster, such as a flood, they move to higher ground. 
I don't think Noah brought every animal. You cannot bring every animal. You go to Tasmania, I mean, they found, like, last year 30 to 40 new animals or species out there. You cannot bring every animal on board an ark. Although there are rumors that the government is making their own ark, preserving DNA from every species and basically keeping it underground so that they can clone these animals. I do believe in that. I don't think Noah at the time was cloning these species, and I don't think he saved all these animals. I do think, though, that it is possible that in our last great flood, in our last great flood, that people did survive it, but not many. Because back in the day, people lived off the coast to survive. 5,000 B.C., you had to live on water to survive. You didn't have sewage and pipes in the middle of some continent. You had to have the sea to live, the fish to thrive. And all these coastal towns went underwater, and it was rather quick. And they think it's because when the Arctic ice shield melted, they think it was pretty, it was so quick that it all came at once as a flood. It wasn't like, like they say it's going to take a few centuries for our polar, polar poles to melt. And it's not going to be at once. We will have time to prep for it. But back in that day, they said something had caused the ice sheets to melt. And it was so quick that you only had a few days to get the fuck out. And therefore, every coastal town went underwater in thousands, because there wasn't really millions. You know, you had hundreds of thousands living in the world, but you did not have millions. Therefore, mankind almost died out. That's my explanation. Those are my theories. You like that elf hat? Oh, I, I agree totally with Ted. You know what? I have many blonde moments. I'm not blonde. I'm silver and gray. Silver balls, silver balls, you know, Christmas song, whatever. I like this elf hat. You know, I feel like I'm about to make fucking toys right now. You know, I feel like I'm about to make dildos and shit. That's what I feel like with the elf hat. Same thing with the Santa, with the, with the Santa hat, man. I put on the Santa hat, I put on the beard, and next you know, I'm, I'm like all powerful and shit. You know what I'm saying? I wear the Santa beard and I'm, I'm compelled. I'm compelled to drink. I can't help it, man. It's like, it must be something psychological. I don't fucking know. <laughs> here's one Christmas lights were removed inside a dog in England a British woman said surgeon saved her 7 year old dog's life he swallowed a foot long string of Christmas fairy lights and you know she didn't know they had been chewed on but became clear what happened obviously when you got a dog and you look around you're like what the hell what the hell's where's the lights you know but um you know, they took an x-ray, and they discovered a foot-long string in this dog's stomach, along with the shoelace. They had to remove it surgically, and they said it would have been fatal if it wasn't removed. Can you imagine that? You know, my dog eats some strange shit. But a string of fucking Christmas lights? Come on. You know, I'm going to tell, tell you what. <laughs> Dogs will eat the strangest things. I was sitting here. I have a cat named C, Sneezer. He's been, since I started Angel and Night at Radio almost, he's been with me from day one. Twinkie time, hold on. Okay, that's better. During every episode of Angel and Night at Radio, Sneezer comes out. You know what he comes out to do? Eat something on the ground that I throw down. I'm sitting here hosting the show to you guys, right? Sitting there hosting the show. And he's sitting there eating a Smarties wrapper. This time from, you know, somebody else, not me. He's got it in his mouth hanging out and he's crunching on it. And I'm thinking, if you swallow that, man, your rectum's going to get plugged, and then you're going to implode or fucking die, you know? So, animals do swallow funny things. Yeah. 
Well, I have to have my hands on my microphone at all times. I need to just get a microphone that plugs right into my, like, like my Santa hat and stuff, you know? Here you go. Here's one for you. NASA says scientists have been receiving calls that 25 million Americans are stockpiling guns and machetes for doomsday. So basically, you know, you got about almost 300 million people in this country. What are they doing? They're stocking guns. Or you got people who are doomsday survivors spending millions of dollars to stockpile. And the earth's not going to end. We're not going to know when it's going to end. It's going to be a surprise, you know. Even if you stockpile shit, it's not going to do any good if a comet hits this earth. What if you are, what if, you know what a comet is? Not only is it a piece of ice, but it has a tail. So when it collides with earth, all the little pieces from the tail hit all kinds of major cities, causing major cities to be the size of 100 to 200 nuclear bombs. So your little shelter and hiding in your house with all your food is not going to do you any good. You are going to die. NASA doesn't, NASA's trying to ease tensions. You know, they're like, the Earth's not going to end, blah, blah, blah. People believe it's going to end. Prophecies and probabilities. Well, what could possibly happen? You know... They have said in the past that microbes have killed off entire species. But, you know, it's not as bad as doomsday phobia as the world awaits December 21st. Um, you know, it marks the end of the long count calendar. Doomsday sayers believe the world will end. It's, it's a sickness in the head. Some fear the way we're planet Nibiru, supposedly discovered by the Sumerians, will collide with Earth. Others point to the doomsday as a biblical prop prophecy. It's okay if you believe in the Bible, minus all the little um, mishaps that are in there, uh, with fiery explosions, earthquakes, floods. NASA has debunked every apocalyptic theory. One in ten people question worldwide survey that they think the world will end. This is one in ten. In China, doomsday seeds were planted when the 3D version of 2009 Hollywood disaster film came out of 2012. Um, stories of doomsday phobia sprouted from the, across the entire country. A senior engineer and a wife of a university pre professor in China, Nanjing, reported and cashed in her savings to donate to poor children to make them happy for the last few days. A carpenter in Chongqing supposedly spent his earnings whining and dining, even though his wife had just given birth. And in Xi'an, a man allegedly spent his wife's savings to build an ark in hopes of survival. Going to the extreme is not unheard of. In May in 2011, Christian radio broadcaster Harold Camping predicted the rapture. Never happened. You know what happened? Thousands or millions of dollars of revenue came into his church. 1997, Heaven's Gate. Mass suicide, Southern California. They believe they were called to the to foul comet Hal Bop. Killed themselves. For those of burning questions, NASA, NASA created a Google Hangout on November 28th to answer inquiries and calm worries about the apocalypse. They said contrary to some of the common beliefs out there, December 21st won't be the end of the world as we know. It will be another winter solstice. So, you know, you could, you could sit there and you could say, hey, I, I, I think it's the end of the world. There's no point in worrying. Get drunk, get high, get laid. Do whatever you got to do and treat every day like it's your last. How about this one? A San Francisco man was stuck in a chimney eight days before Christmas. San Francisco firefighters were called to rescue a man who got stuck in his chimney just before midnight Monday in his Pacific Heights neighborhood. The fire crews were called to the man's apartment when they found the man inside the chimney. It took an hour to get this guy out. It's unclear why he was in the chimney of his apartment building, which is seven stories high. But a NBC area, Bay Area spoke to a dispatcher and said the police may have been trying to contact the man and he may have had to try, try to hide in the chimney. In other words, he wasn't playing Santa Claus. He was hiding in the chimney from the cops. Firefighters at the scene said the crews had to break out special equipment and burst out the chimney bricks to remove the man. The man was taken to hospital where hospital staff said he was in decent shape. Minus, you know, the dehydration and everything else. So even though if doomsday doesn't happen, 
you know, you have people who are going cra fucking crazy anyways. They should have left them there, Ted. They should have. They have SantaCon. Up in London, every year, they have the SantaCon, which is the gathering of thousands of people dressed in Santa suits. And the British website for Santa Claus, which loosely affiliated with similar events elsewhere in the world, said thousands of people turned up at the Trafalgar Square, which has the most decked out Santas with the traditional red suit and the white beard. Well, I guess I wouldn't fit in. But they run around town, they give gifts, they sing songs, they have strangers sit in their, their laps, they decide who's naughty and nice. It's a lot of fun, I bet. You know, I mean, I could sit there and, and play Santa. I, I wouldn't mind playing Santa. You know, sometimes you get the college girls. They sit in your lap. They're like, I want a PC. I want a laptop. Well, come sit on my lap. I'll give you a laptop. Laptop here, baby. <laughs> but anyways, SantaCon has been popular. I've been talking about it for years. I've always wanted to go. On your marks, get set. Lego family spend 70 hours making 10-foot Christmas model. They make this 10-foot creature with one eyeball. It took them two months, 10 feet high, of the Olympic mascot Wenlock. 54, the husband, the wife, she's about 49. They used 150,000 Legos to make the model. It's the latest long line of creations in the past 20 years. They spent 70 hours constructing the mascot with a Santa costume. It's in their living room. It almost touches the ceiling. They started building in mid-October in an hour a day working on it. They watched the Olympics this summer. They enjoyed it so much they used the mascot for the theme. You know what I say to this? If you buy $150,000 in Legos, these, these people got three kids. How do you afford Christmas presents? I just want to know. That's my biggest question. How do you afford 150,000 Legos? It's like you walk into Toys R Us. Hey, I want $100,000 in Legos this Christmas. Don't mind me, you know. Crazy. That would be like me building a Lord Rick to the ceiling. A Lord Rick all the way up. Me and my Santa hat out of Legos. Man, you know, I never could stand Legos. My kids used to build with them, and I would find them all over the house and step on them and, like, break my ankle and shit. I am like a hater of Legos. Here's one. I'm going to tell you guys about bad Santas, brawling, booze, burglary, the worst father Christmases of all time. Here you go. In Wales, the annual Santa run sees 4,000 men dressed as Father Christmas. Well, in 2004 event was marred by a 30 Santa brawl at closing time, which ended when police tackled him with batons and CS spray. Four cops were injured, five locals were arrested. Many of those involved were still wearing Santa outfits. St. Nick, the annual switching of great Yarmouth Christmas lights draws thousand Norfolk Resort Marketplace. In Christmas of 2000, will live long in the memory of local children who saw Father Christmas led away in handcuffs after brawling with a member of the public who objected him selling one euro presents from his sack. A police spokesman said the kids were afraid of Santa and were going to be jailed and were not able to bring them any presents. That's all you need is your son to see Santa being taken away. Hey, man, are you putting on a show for my show? Come on. Enough playing with the pussy. I like to play with pussy, too, okay? You guys don't see me on cam because I'm busy reading articles, but um, my dog likes pussy. It's obvious. Santa broke my nose. Scaffolder James Thompson was already banned from the quarterdeck pub in North Berwick, Scotland. So when his works ended up in Christmas 2004, or ended up there in 2004, he tried to sneak in during a Santa costume with the full beard, the gray wig, the whole thing. The landlord, Clark Caldwell, saw through the clever ruse and altercation ensued. Basically, they started fighting, you know. Broke his nose by a right hook caused by Father Christmas. Ejected. Thompson ended up in the town's Nether Abbey Hotel where he disrupted a Christmas party by shouting and swearing. He was ordered to carry out 200 hours in England of community service. You can't handle Santa on the roof. Santa needs to take a time out. Here's one. Santa got stuck in a chimney in 2004. 
Bueno Series police called the home of a tipsy woman who reported Father Christmas was stuck in her chimney. That's me. I'm stuck up in someone's chimney, all right? She had to break down. The police broke down the wall and had to free the trapped burglar. He was a burglar, and he stuck in. He was trying to go steal her presents, got stuck in the chimney. Santa the bank robber. During 2003, Gregler Harlan White disguised himself as Santa Claus to rob a local bank in Tasmania of five grand, using two pieces of pipe taped together that looked like a gun. Cunning Harlow White, White led or shed his costume escaped. He was riding his bicycle, but the police spotted him because he still left his trousers on. Can you imagine that shit? Can you really imagine that? You're robbing a bank and you take off everything but the Santa pants and the cops are looking for you. Santa on strike. Sydney's annual carols by candlelight service was disrupted in 1996 when potential Santa staged a boycott after one reported he had been punched, kicked, thrown in a river a year before. Nightmare before Christmas, the Santa suffers from low self-esteem. Here's one taxi for, for Santa. In Christmas of 1996, two men jumped into taxi market Harbaugh and asked for a driver to make a speedy getaway. The reason became clear when 22 men, all dressed as Father Christmas, attacked the cab, smashing the rear window, pulling passengers out. The driver sped away to safety, later insisted the incident would not put him off work. I think the chance of being mobbed by a gang of drunken Santas a second time would be rare, he said. Not true. I go on investigations. I'm mobbed by Santas all the fucking time. When I went to investigate in Virginia City this past weekend, I had an elf come running out of a shop waving at me. Uh, do you think the Santa beard had anything to do with that, guys? Santa the Gator Bader. Shortly before 1994 of Christmas, Chip and Lori Crabtree took their sons, age 2, 4, and 6, to meet Father Christmas at the shopping mall in Jacksonville, Florida. This being Florida, Mrs. Crabtree chose to dress for the occasion in a T-shirt bearing the insignia of University of Florida's American football team, the Florida Gators. Unfortunately, the mall Santa had and other gridiron allegiances told the young Crabtrees they would get no presents that year as Santa Claus doesn't like Gator fans and Santa Claus wishes that Florida State would beat the Gators. When Chip and Lori, they protested, the Salia named Santa, Santa Claus pushed her six-year-old off his lap, poked a white glove finger at Mr. Crabtree's chest and asked him, you want to do something about it, pal, right here on stage? Mall security intervened, and the grumpy Santa stomped off, never to be seen again. Mr. Crabtree Raider revealed his sons had not been trauma, had not been over-traumatized by the incident, as the six-year-old had already worked out that this wasn't the real Santa, telling his father there wasn't any magic in his eyes. I love this kid. Santa on drugs. In 2005, a batonist named Dr. Ian Darwin Edwards explained that the legend of Santa's flying sleigh had begun when an Arctic holy man drank hallucinogenic reindeer weed. Dr. Edwards, head of education at the Royal Botanic Garden in Edinburgh, said the Sami people of Lapland, formerly known as Laps, are wild reindeer herders, and for many centuries they ritually, rich, they had a ritual. They'd gather plants to achieve altered states of consciousness and highs. Hell, I do that when I go on a, a pasture and I pick myself some shrooms. And I see myself chasing butterflies with Bigfoot. They used to feed the red and white fly agaric mushrooms to the reindeer. Oh no. Oh no, I just said it. They collect and drink the urine. The idea was to receive hallucinogenic properties of mushrooms in a safer, more processed form. Seeing that pictures. New Zealand, city of Christchurch, is usually a sedate affair. In 2004, a season of goodwill was marred when the 50-strong gang of Santas went on a rampage in a cinema. Abusing customers, ripping down posters, swearing at the staff. Manager Derek Rive, how often do a bunch of Santas go in and wreak havoc? They wreaked everything they could. The Christmas tree, they bowled everything over absolute fools. How often does this happen? It is almost Christmas, guys. I've done it. They've done it. I'm a bad Santa. We've all done it. Well, maybe you guys haven't put on the Santa beard and did it, but I did it. When Santa met the Beavers... California couple Lawrence and Margie Beavers were woken on Christmas morning by a 1993 loud of groaning from their living room. They ran downstairs. They found a burglar hanging upside down in their fireplace with his chest and arms visible but legs stuck in the flue. He goes, what are you doing down there, she asked. 
he, he, she, both them. With the stroke of a genius, the burglar replies, I'm Santa Claus. I'm going to give you guys the worst Santa of all. This tops, this tops everything. Spending Christmas in prison is a tough enough for anyone. It is. It's tough. Emma Wee should know. She tried to get me to span, spend Christmas in prison. And then text my Tammy and told her I, I, that uh, I'm going to get what I deserve. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, yeah. But in 2001, residents of the North Sea Camp Jail, Lincolnshire, had their gifts delivered by celebrity convict Lord Jeffrey Archer. You guys thought I was going to say Lord Rick, didn't you? The pair, then serving a four-year sentence for perjury, donned the traditional red suit, white beard, to give out presents from prisoners to the families. Having first checked them for contraband, jail sources claimed no prisoner had ever asked to dress up as Father Christmas before. You know what happens there. I don't even have to say it. Use your imagination. I'm going to tell you guys something. And I'm going to talk about... Well, there's a lot of chimneys. You know, I, I mean... I have thought about going in the chimney. I climbed up on the roof. I couldn't even get my leg in, but I tried. My highlights of 2012, what do you guys think they are? What do you guys think they are? Maybe you guys know what they are. I've only told a few people. When investigating, I, I hit the herb lotto. Do you know what the herb lotto is? When you're out investigating and you're just humming along, doing nothing, looking for ghosts, and, and all of a sudden you find a bag of weed or something. You hit the herb lotto. You know, it's like, man, I won, I won, I won. I hit the herb lotto this year. Found a bag of fucking dope. Found a bag of weed. As soon as I got home, you better believe I smoked that shit. I put it up in the fucking pipe, and I was like, you know, couldn't help it. Second highlight, Rascal's first investigation. Actually, Rascal's been on about five and four or five investigations. He's just wandering around the living room. He's playing with the cat right now. Around the studio, actually. He's just playing. You know, I got, I got this kitten. She drives me crazy. She's black. She's just, she's a menace, you know. She she cl jumps on my dog and hangs on for his life, you know, or for her life. And he's just running all over and the cat's swinging around, you know. Great Bigfoot investigator. Third one, my first Bigfoot sighting. Seen him up in the Sierras, about 50 feet in front of me, walked right out in front of me. I couldn't even get my camera on in time. Was gone that quick. Working on a set of sci-fi. I must say, the only pleasure came of it is that it was entertaining. Even though they faked everything, they worked harder to fake the paranormal evidence than they actually did trying to get the real thing. How about this fucking show? We've had three crazy episodes this year. I've only done three to four episodes. But they all been fucking crazy. Climbing five major peaks. Usually in one year, I never climbed that many peaks. But this year, I climbed all the peaks. I got all the cuts and scars to prove it. Throwing Emily off the group. Not once, but twice. I fired this girl twice. And it gave me pleasure. Because I'm not going to keep somebody on our staff who does nothing. You want to be part of the team, then be part of the team. Quit your fucking whining the Tammy. Quit bitching. I don't care if you can't find a babysitter. I don't give a shit if... If somebody else goes on more investigations, I don't care if you don't like a certain person, you know, keep your pie hole fucking shut. You'll get thrown off the fucking team. How about this one? San Francisco, Alcatraz, and Point Reyes in the Winchester house. When I went to the Winchester house, it is haunted. I did get EVPs in my short time there, but I, I was touring the house. And when I toured the house, I had realized that this girl built... Thousands of square feet. The men never stop working. Their ghosts still continue to work on the house. It was seven stories. Got reduced to about five during the great earthquake of 1907 in San Francisco. She kept building because she thought that spirits were after her. Because, you know, her husband, obviously the Winchester husband, ran the company. And her daughter died. Her husband died. She thought all the people killed with his gun, all the spirits, were going to come get her. So she kept building a house that was like a maze. I investigated the Winchester house. 
I went there, I did an investigation. It was one of my highlights in 2012. You're never going to go to a bigger mansion than that and to be able to have access to it, and I didn't even see the whole thing. I probably went in about maybe half of the rooms. I think there's like, I don't, I don't even have the stats, like maybe maybe 200-something rooms or 127. And I only like reached half of them, you know? But there was some energy in the room the woman died and slept in because, you know, she died in the room. Um, I don't know what was the cause. I just know that staff had found her. She had a huge staff of maids and carpenters. They found her deceased. She was already at a ripe age, but, you know, amazingly, there are some things I cannot explain on EVP at that mansion. And there are some rooms that are just ice fucking cold. She also dabbled in the occult, which, you know, using Ouija boards and shit like that, you're going to invite some stuff into your house. Don't do it. If you don't want to invite them in, don't do it. She did it. So basically, it was ironic because she used to call the spirits to her house. She used to think they'd get lost, but they never were lost. They still haunt that house. How about Yosemite? You know, spider caves, climbing the waterfall, chasing the bear. I chased a giant mass of bear. And I had an injury for about six months. And what happened was, as I stepped in a hole, I stepped in a hole, and I near my ankle popped. And when it popped, I was limping on it for months. I still climb mountains. I guess I didn't care much about my own personal health. I got a little carried away with Bigfoot. But, but I, I mean, it took till October to fully heal. You know, all the way from May to October. That's how long it took to heal. That's how much pain I was in. All the way up until October, throbbing and pulling and, and just... You know, all because I wanted to go up close and video record a bear. And this bear was about 600 pounds. His back stood up past my waist. Turned around and looked at me. He could have chased me down, and he could have eaten me. He didn't. But I just thought about it for a second. I said, you know, I was jogging back to the truck, to the vehicle. And what happened was, is when I stepped in the hole, I thought my first my life flashed before my eyes. I thought, what if this beer is chasing me? What if this beer is going to eat me? I limped back to the vehicle. You know, I'm, I'm kind of crazy like that because the Paranormal and Ghost Society, we're not just a paranormal group. We're a nature group. We, we also are a historical group. We're an adventure group. We're so many different things on so many levels. Our work has to be perfected because we have to show people that we not only appreciate the paranormal, but we also appreciate wildlife, and we respect it. And I went in, and I filmed a little documentary of the bear because I wanted people to see that when I hike, this is what I come face-to-face -face with. And the bear let me film them. Of course, animals can sense if you're fearful or, you know, so I kept it really calm. Just like sharks, you can go in the water of great whites. They won't eat you. They won't attack you. You raise that heartbeat up, they will bite you. It'll it'll give them it'll give it'll also put fear into them, but it'll also give them a thrill. So you don't want to raise your heartbeat up. Bear was cool with me, man. I made best friends with a bear. You may think I'm crazy, but I'll tell you what I am. I mean, I've been proven on my show. I've been the animal whisperer. I showed you guys a stunt years ago that I can talk to animals. I talked to the bear. I didn't get eaten. So what? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you. Emily smells like ass. What the fuck? I think it's time to sing another Christmas carol. I'm trying to get through all my Christmas carols while going through these articles. And you guys know about jingle bells or jingle balls. So, um, you know, I don't know if I sang that. No, actually, you know what? I'm going to sing Rudolph the Red Dick fucking Reindeer. Fuck this shit. Rudolph the Red Dick Reindeer. He had a very shiny cock, and if you ever saw him, you'd even say it explodes. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Hung Rudolph join in any orgy games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Lord Rick came to say, Rudolph, with your cock so bright, 
won't you guide my horse tonight? Then all the other reindeer loved him, as they all shouted out with glee. Rudolph the Red Dick Reindeer, you'll go down in common history. What can I say? I've always been a fan of Naughty Christmas Carols. I actually put on the beard when I sing these things. Like, I'll be sitting there at home, and I will put on the beard. I will be like, you know what? Fuck this shit. But anyways, you know, we're getting through our articles slowly but surely, and I'm about halfway through them. So we've probably got about a half hour more show. If you want to stick around, you know, um, I'll, give it all my, I'll give it all I got. Because I'll tell you what, to host six hours of radio takes a lot of energy. Um, but if you guys stick around, we got some more good stuff coming up. Thanksgiving Day Parade Confetti has confidential information. I read somewhere that all Mitt Romney's private records were shredded and used in a parade. I don't know how true this is, but I, I read the news a lot. I study the news. I, you know, I'm a news guy. I watch news every day. I keep up with the world. I'm not, you know, some people think because I got tattoos and black nails I'm not educated. But I do educate myself. It's important. And um, that, that's exactly what happened. All this private information was used as confetti in, in a parade. Not just other parades that the government had shredded info, but, I mean, there was, like, Social Security numbers being flown in the Thanksgiving parade. I don't know how your Thanksgiving was. I didn't host a Thanksgiving show. I usually do recipes on Thanksgiving live, but I don't do as many shows because I don't – the thing is, people disrespect me. And so good things end when people start ruining them. You know, once if there's a good thing out there, you know, if people stand me up, my friends don't show, and people come in my room and bash me, I'm just like, you know what? I don't need to host a show. I don't get paid for this. But So I didn't host a Thanksgiving show. But I will say this, that there, there was a news article that during Thanksgiving, some of Romney's personal records, including government records, ended up hitting cities like the the the, the, the um the, I can't even say it. New York City and a couple other cities had gotten them. And you guys know that there is identity thieves out there. So if your social security winds up with somebody who's to say they're not gonna create bank accounts and put utilities in their name, you know? I mean we live in a terrible world. I mean people are frauding the families in Connecticut of the disaster. I mean what's that tell you, you know? Thanksgiving on Mars, what would, it, what would people feast on? Snap beans. NASA has plans for a Martian hydroponic greenhouse for fruits, veggies, and tubers. And I guess these things are real easy to grow. Snap beans, veggie loaf, stuff and mash, sweet and white potatoes, pinto bean pie. And I sat there and I thought, you know, it's all freeze-dried and sour and bitter, all this food. And I thought, how can you have Thanksgiving on Mars if you ain't, if you do not have a goddamn fucking turkey. There are no turkeys in space. Maybe there are. Let's put it this way. If you live in space for two to three years, you don't think that your partner's going to turn into a fucking turkey? It's bad enough that I can't even be in the same room with people at times. And you're going to be in some small capsule with some dude wang yanking his fucking wang every fucking day because there ain't no pussy in goddamn fucking outer space. And he's going to be yanking his goddamn shit. And you got to sit, there's your fucking turkey right fucking there, man. I can't be an astronaut. Unless you send me alone to Mars, I'm cool. You want to send Lord Rick to Mars for four years? I'll go to Mars. There, I volunteered. You don't want to send me to fucking Mars? Fuck you, NASA. Fuck you. I don't think that you should have to be in the Air Force to be an astronaut. If you send me up in a fucking rocket ship, I don't need to know anything. It does everything itself. It's fucking autopilot. You know what I'm saying? All I have to do is strap on the fucking suit and collect fucking samples on Mars. But I'll tell you what, if you're going to send me up to fucking Mars, I better have some of the best Asian porn there is out there. Because I need beat the fucking meat material. The problem is I might spoo my fucking goo and it might get caught in the vent of the fucking rocket and then and, and short out the fucking electricity. Then what the fuck am I going to do? But I'll tell you what, I go to Mars, I am going to, I'm going to tell NASA I need to bring the Santa beard. This thing's magical. I'm telling you, it's fucking magical. 
When I wear it, it's fucking magic. Don't ask me how. You know, I'm getting really uptight. I think I need to light myself on fire tonight. Fuck this shit. <laughs> you just never know. You know what's funny is I'll probably light myself on fire at the end of the show. And I'll do it on purpose so nobody else gets to fucking see it. You know, I kind of feel bad because I was going to set up the video camera and show my son myself lit and on fire. He says, Dad, I want a video of it. So, you know what? I'm probably going to do it at the end of the show, donations or not. But um, but I can tell you right now, I'm not for a guest earlier who usually tip me. No, you guys aren't going to see it. I'm not recording this episode. I'm going to record it on my video camera and, uh, you know, for my son, because I've done this before, I've lit myself on fire, and there's a lot of friends who didn't support me on it, and they like, I'm not watching. Well, too bad, man. I'm Lord Rick. I can do whatever I want, you know? And as far as Emily, who is mocking me out saying, you're no God and stuff, well, I'm God of Angel on a radio. When I see your fat ass get up here and grab the microphone, we'll talk business. You can be called goddess. But you know what? Until I continue to host this show, fuck you. Yeah, I'm becoming bad Santa. You know what? Fuck this elf hat. I don't need no fucking elf hat. You know what I need? I need two things right now. I need the beard and I need a drink. It's amazing how the personality changed once you put on the beard. Here I am being all badass. I ain't got no fucking beard on. I need the beard on. You know, you know what's really creepy? The other day... I had a doctor's appointment. All right? I was in the mood. I was jolly. I was in the mood to wear my beard. I went to the doctor's office with my Santa beard on. You know what's funny? Is that they knew who I was. And I went up to the secretary, and I, she says to me, You didn't bring me any gifts, Santa? I said, I did bring you a gift. I am the fucking gift. Bada bing, bada boom. And she says, um, I'm not sure I want that gift. Sense of humor in everything we do in life. Sense of humor, you know? Oh, we got Jill calling in. Hello, darling. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? You know, I'm actually doing pretty good tonight. I'm really disappointed in her numbers because I do feel this is one of her better shows. But then again, I lost... A couple hundred people when Stickum kicked us off. And I keep yeah, saying, that's you know, not good. The that, problem that... is that people got to realize if you get booted out of the show, all you have to do is come back. Because I cannot guarantee a solid connection tonight. We're getting 100 mile an hour winds. Gust. I'm afraid I'm going to lose the roof on my fucking studio tonight. You know what I'm saying? Scary. Scary. Well, you know... um, in the in the thing that you were saying about the person that that threatened you, you know, and that claimed that they're you know this or claim that they're that, you know, those that those that make threats like that, you know, I wouldn't, you know, worry about it in the sense that you know people can threaten all they want, but those people that make threats like that that you know to harm someone and if they claim that they're witchy or pagan or whatnot that's not the way of it you know you don't you don't go around because their their rule is harm none you know and you know and i always believe in that you know that i do i do too i do too but you know jill i brought on an investigator i fired her once I brought her back on a couple months ago, and I said, look, I'm going to give you another shot at this. Mm -hmm. said, but, but, this is what I expect of you. She turned around a couple days ago and went to the police department and tried to get me arrested. How can I not, how can I not forgive a per? You know what I'm saying? You just can't forgive somebody who does that. It's like, obviously, they are mentally... There's something mentally wrong with the individual, you know? You're trying to put me in Christmas for the holidays when my kids, my kids, my kids spend Christmas with me. I cook them Christmas dinner. 
I unwrap gifts, I play with them on Christmas Day, and you're going to put me in jail because I told you to go fuck yourself? Yeah, that's not illegal. right, you the know. Cops, the cops told me I didn't do anything illegal. They read my emails. They said, you didn't do nothing illegal. They said, I'm trying to protect you. This girl's got weapons. They're like, this girl's got guns. And I told the officer, then I guess if she shoots me, she's going to jail. Because I'm not, I'm not going to put up with somebody who joins this organization and says, put me on a staff. And then turns around and does no investigations, no investigating, no research, no posting, no introductions. Is mean to other investigators. And on top of it shows the two meetups in 14 months, and both meetups she gets fucking hammered. I'm just not going to tolerate it. I, if you want to get hammered, I'm okay with it. But you better do your fucking work. And that's yeah. that I can sit there and I can drink beer and smoke joints on investigations as long as I produce paranormal evidence. When I stop producing, I'm done. But you know what? When I go out, I'm productive every investigation. I do multiple jobs. I shouldn't have to be the guy that does EVPs, video work, pictures, and run the website. But you know what I have for many years, and that's why I brought on a team. I cannot do it on my own. I have too many medical problems. I'm sick. I'm sick, and I'm sick of fucking people trying to fucking screw over the organization. It's not fair to Tammy. It's not fair to Ted. It's not fair to Kit. It's not fair to Karen or Sabrina. These people want to be a part of it. They want to participate. Why should I keep some girl who sits there and says, I'm pagan, and if you do, if you say anything honest towards me, I will put a curse on you, and I will call the cops. Fucking call the cops. I wrote her brother. I said, if you don't stop liable in my organization, I will sue your ass. And they went to the cops because I threatened to sue them. And I felt, I told the officer, look, I have every right as the representative and the CEO of my organization to sit there and write a cease and desist letter. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's nothing she can do. Okay, she's a bad person. She's very evil. I've, none of my friends have liked her. None of the investigators like her. I have hundreds of friends across the country. They thought she was a fucking shitty person. It wasn't just me. And they told me to get rid of her a long time ago. And I didn't. Because I wrote her and I said, I'll give you another chance. And the only reason why I gave her another chance is because her husband really wanted to do this. And he came out and he went out in October with me. We went investigating. Him and I had a blast. He, his wife wasn't there. But if the wife gets involved... There's trouble. There's drama. And I don't need that type of drama. The whole point of paranormal investigating is so we can learn and grow as friends. It's yeah. About, you know, well, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I agree, you know. And, you know, I'm just here, you know, to, to say my opinion about it, too, that, you know, even though I don't know this person, you know, and I understand what's going on, you do a lot as, you know, a person and, you know, and look forward to meeting you one day and um you know and I, I consider you like family and uh you know and i i don't feel it's right people threatening to hurt somebody you know it's very very wrong and it's very much against the pagan lifestyle you don't threaten somebody cuz if you hurt somebody then karma's going to pretty much get you for it because it will and i know this for a fact because um i firmly believe in it and karma is a bitch and i'm not joking about that i i'm just saying you know if they want to try to threaten you like that then karma will get at them because it's not called for you know jill this year alone i must have received hundreds of threats but it's my job to decipher who's real and who's serious and who's not. This girl lives near me. And, um, you know, she's sitting there telling the cops that she's going to take action in their own hands. Why would someone need to take action against me? I'm not on your property. I'm being myself. I'm allowed to host my show. 
I'm allowed to flirt with other girls. I'm allowed to do whatever the fuck I want. I'm a grown man. I don't need some bitch who hasn't done anything for this organization to tell me how to live, tell me how to run my site. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not against pagans, but I do not like pagans who think because they do spells that they are almighty and powerful. She's not powerful. She's powerless. Okay, she does. She stays home all day on Facebook while her husband works, and and she's on Facebook all day long. And anybody who joins my team that is a personal friend of me, she refuses to treat with respect. I don't have to take that. I believe, this is my belief, that I think everybody should respect one another. I also believe that if you are in my organization, if you can't communicate with me, you shouldn't be a part of it. Communication is very important between me, my friends, my fans. That's why I do this show. It's to communicate. If, you wanna, if people want to call on the show and they want to say their piece, I will let them see their piece. But you know what? I believe in communication. This is a person who would not talk to me for months at a time. And then last week ago, I get a letter. She says, you're not awesome. You're not God. You're a douchebag and all these other mean things. And, I w and, and what really pissed me off more than anything is when she said that everybody on my friends list is a groupie. And it's not true because I meet people all the time from my friends list. I'm always meeting people. Always. I'm, all, I'm not hiding behind this beard. I'm not hiding on my radio show. I am willing to come out and meet people eye to eye. If I was hiding, then I might have groupies. But you know what? These are people that I meet. These are people I camp with. These are people that go out of town with me and we get a hotel. These are people that that care about me like I do them. If, if one of my friends or my fans dies, I'll be heartbroken. But you know what? I don't know how many years I'm going to host this show because, because it always comes back to bite me in the ass. People take some of my show clips and they cut it out and then they try to use it against me without sharing the whole clip. Oh, he said this and that, you know. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of people blackmailing me. I'm sick of the death threats. I am so tired of dealing with it. I'm tired of producers fucking lying on TV and fucking saying I got the main, I'm the main investigator and then I'm on the sidelines fucking coaching, teaching these people how to investigate when I should be the one out there. I'm just sick of it all. They can suck my fucking balls. They can suck my dick because I'm just, I'm not going to put up. I'm not the type of person to put up with shit. If I see shit, I will kick some ass, you know, and if, if, if she wants to sit there and threaten me with her guns, you know what? It's like I know plenty of cops, and you will not have any guns if you don't stop your fucking shit. So it's like go away, go, go under the rock you crawled under, because I am not a threat to anybody. I do my work. That is all I do. Take care of my kids and do my work. Those are the two things I do in life. When I have a chance to party, I went out a few days ago and partied with some friends, I will take advantage of that opportunity. But who is anybody else to judge? You know, oh, she, you know, hey, I'm pagan. Well, so what? I'm not going to kiss your ass. I'm, I'm an atheist, so what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Is people going to hate me because I'm an atheist? I'm an atheist? No, I, I, I don't... I don't believe so. I believe so. I stick them keeps messing up. Keeps messing up. You know, stick them rebooted, and I lost all my fucking viewers. And I'm so tired of them doing this. I am. I am. I'm tired of I'm tired of them booting me out and me losing my viewers. I don't even know anymore. I mean, maybe I should just try to post a chat room and, and, and a radio thing through my website because, I mean, it can be done. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just not, I mean, it's just a constant problem, you know? Everybody gets kicked out. Everybody's got to re-sign back into the show. Yeah, I agree. It's... It's a 
problem on Stickums then, not mine. Because my 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 high speed right now is solid. But all of a sudden Stickum will just be like we're going to kick everybody off listening to the show and you're going to start over. It takes me 2 hours to build a few hundred viewers and then we get kicked out and nobody comes back. They think the show is over. And it just it pisses me off. I can't even record any shows tonight. Because they because my my um my uh, archives are full. So I'm 400% over. It's a new rule they install. So I can't even record the show for people to come back, you know? I can only all I can do is record it from from our program, you know, and then just pass it out or whatever. Yeah, that's understandable. It's just crazy. It it just keeps messing up. I mean, I I know it's not your fault that it's doing that, but you know, that's just not good. I mean, but do you hear what I hear? Said the night wind to the little slot. Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little whore. Do you see what I see? A stripper, a stripper, dancing in the night with tits as big as a kite. With tits as big as a kite. Said the little slut to the shepherd boy. Do you smell what I smell? Bring it through the sky, shepherd boy. Do you see what I see? An orgy, an orgy, high above the trees with a voice as big as a dildo. With a voice as big as a dildo, said the shepherd boy to the king. Do you know what I know? In your palace, warm, mighty king, do you know what I know? A hooker, hookers, shiver in the cold, let's bring her silver and gold, let's bring them silver and gold, said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say, pray for sex and orgies everywhere. Listen to what I say, the pimp, the pimp, cashing in the night, he will bring us girls all night. He will bring us girls all night. What do you think, Jill? You think I got it? <laughs> I think you got it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Folks, you're listening to Angel of the Night Radio. This is Lord Rick. We are past midnight. Um... I always say that the show's going to end at midnight, but um, I'll probably have to go a half hour more because I still got a few things to discuss that I have to get out. But, you know, I don't care. I mean, I host a show. Whenever it's done, it's done, you know. I mean, that's the way I look at it. And, and people can, you know, sit there and they can relax and drink and do whatever they're going to do and enjoy the show for what it is because I don't host a lot of shows anymore. Like I said, I don't even know if I'm going to host any more shows. Because, I mean, I had, like, 50 of my friends were supposed to show. None of them showed tonight. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's like, why am I bothering, you know? It, it, it becomes a tedious thing when people just kind of, you know, fucking lie to you. It's just like, forget it. You know what I mean? But, um, but I mean, you know, I've been hosting this show for a lot of years. I mean, you're looking at seven years, you know, so... I don't know. Did you hear about the Revenge of the Turkeys this Thanksgiving? No, I don't think so. Well, a flock of wild turkeys in Brooklyn, Massachusetts, was attacking vehicles, homes, and people. Some people going to work have been chased, said Animal Control Officer Pierre Verrier. Verrier. He, armed with the tennis racket, he goes to the local high school every morning and protects the kids from the angry birds. People didn't realize it, but turkeys, they actually attack people. 2012, top 10 natural disasters. Hurricane Sandy. Obviously, people lost homes, lives. Staten Island's devastated. Um, Cyclone Neelam. Winds were only 45 miles an hour. However, a tanker ran to the ground, and five sailors lost their life. 150,000 people in shelters. But it's an area that's normally not hit. Philippines typhoon, 902 people in 2012 killed. Floods and landslides caused major damage in nearly 2,000 villages in December. 
Deadliest natural disaster to hit the Philippines this year destroyed 149,000 houses. 80,000 people remain in government shelters. An Indonesia earthquake, 7.1 magnitude, reported off Indonesia off the coast. Almost caused a tsunami um, with a depth of 96 miles. Indonesia is bad for earthquakes. Myanmar, Myanmar earthquake, um, 230 were injured, 12 missing, 26 killed. Hundreds of buildings were destroyed. Uh, Utter Karakashi flash flood killed 31, leaving thousands stranded in Chardam Nyatra. And um, 20,000 people were affected. Iran earthquake. Twin earthquake struck Iran. Left 227 dead. Thir almost 1,400 were injured. Hundreds of villages were decimated. The first earthquakes registered 6.4. The second was 6.3. Just 11 minutes later. While the biggest city in the region, Tabriz, was near and nearby towns escaped with only relative minor damage the outlying villages were were made of you know mud and concrete and were decimated assam the floods northeast india was struck by floods in july 33 people dead 600 animals killed beijing flash flood in july 60,000 evacuated. Flood waters killed 79. 10 billion yuan, which is $1.6 billion in damages. 8,200 homes destroyed. 1.6 million people were affected. Pakistan floods. Monsoon floods in Pakistan killed almost 500 people. Affected 5 million. The reason why I'm going over this is I'm trying to show people that that the weather is very is changing over the course of our history you know it's it's not like it used to be i mean earthquakes strike anywhere solar flares hit the earth um, hurricanes they're decimating the east coast there's no beach left kiteboarding santa's break record fort de soto I don't know if you guys know about Fort DeSoto, but we did an investigation there years ago in Florida. It's a very old fort. There's still cannons. There's still, you know, it's a pretty creepy place. You can walk around the tunnels. It is haunted. But 25 people dressed as Santa, they gathered near Fort DeSoto, just outside of St. Petersburg, Florida. And they wanted to set the record for most kite-boarding Santas. They traveled from all over the United States only 12 of the 25 got in the water, but it still set a world record. They were all kiteboarding. And, of course, you know, Florida this time of year is beautiful. It gets a little nippy at night, but, you know, I, I lived in Florida for four years, and I have to say that almost most, most winter days you could actually wear shorts. You could even go investigating in shorts, you know. It isn't like where I'm at. We got below zero degrees temperatures. Here's a guy. A man's Christmas display has 75,000 lights. Morristown, New Jersey, a New Jersey man who has been creating elaborate Christmas displays for 20 years says this year's display outside his home includes 75,000 lights. And this guy, he's 70 years old in Morris County, said he's got people from across the state just coming to see his lights. And he's got 75,000 bulbs. 35,000 watts of electricity power it. And, of course, he's got volunteers playing Santa. And, you know, it, it's kind of a cool thing that this guy's doing it. But my question really is, the major question is, how much does this guy's electricity cost? You know, I mean, really, how how much is this guy spending? 35,000 watts to power it? How does this guy not blow a fuse? You know what I'm saying? No. How much is the earth melting? Well, I can tell you right now, Greenland lost an average of 152 billion metric tons of ice per year. 
Antarctica's losing $71 billion a year, which means these estimates are 20 years of uncertainty. If these continue to melt, cities like New York are going to be underwater. They said um, the ocean's risen an average of 8 inches since 1900, but by the year 2100, they will rise 3 feet. Do you know if the oceans rise three feet that Florida will be underwater because Florida is at sea level? You're on my naughty list. Chan Santa chases off robbers trying to snatch the pub, land the pub's landlord's takings. The super Santa stopped robbers from snatching, snatching a pub's landlord's takings. The mass muggers fled when Father Christmas confronted them after a publican Dave Holden yelled for help as they pounced on him on the way to the bank. Um, basically, this guy is like a hero. He he heard Dave calling and shouted over them, but they were ripping at his shirt like a pair of hyenas. So then he ran over to them and went back, and they went back to their car. As they left, I shouted at them, I'm going to put you on my naughty list for Christmas. Dave runs the same yet pub in Simister, and man in Greater Manchester was about to deposit his weekend takings at the Royal Bank at Scotland when the two men attacked him near the entrance. He suffered a cut on his arm, a bruised knee, before Simon, 47, of Manchester heard him yell and was drumming up trade for the Garden Center. They ran empty-handed before they were driven away in a BMW. So, I mean, Father Christmas basically saved the day. So that's not such a bad Santa story. You know, you got your Santas that are drunk, but there are Santas who are actually trying, they put on the beard and they're superheroes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there was another scientific study that the first Christmas in America happened in Florida in 1539. They said it was not a festive celebration. They also said it was more of an observation with Christmas Mass. Spanish explorer and conquistador Hernando de Soto established his winter encampment in 1539 and 40 for what is the capital of downtown, what is now historic capital of downtown Tallahassee. Um, you know, I, I, I spent some time in Florida, and I did a lot of older sites that were haunted. Like, for example, I went to St. Augustine, Florida, and um, I will say that there is a lot of ghost activity. I mean, some of the cemeteries date back to the 1700s. But in 1539, you know, it was a time where Spanish conquistadors came to the state to explore these tropical lands, you know. And, and what was sad is when they came down to South America... They executed the Mayans. The Mayans were almost wiped off the map by the Spaniards. You know, but the Spanish were some of the first explorers to the United States. And, you know, they were very religious people. So, you know, Christmas time, if they had a fort or whatever, they spent Christmas in their fort. But, you know... Here's another one. In the ghetto, a woman stabs her brother over Thanksgiving dinner. She's eating Thanksgiving meal. The fight breaks out. They're arguing over Thanksgiving dinner. She grabs the fork and drove it into her brother's neck twice. When the police arrived, he was outside a residence clutching his left side and neck. His T-shirt was drenched in his own blood. They followed the bloodstains to a nearby apartment and arrested the, the, the sister, including first-degree assault, second-degree assault, and reckless endangerment. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand what goes through people's heads. You know, I mean, we live in a society where it's, you know, you can't, you can't go through life without some kind of violence and to answer the question the question in the chat room you know there's been so many places i've gone but i will tell you right now i like the buffalo asylum called the richardson complex 
That was one of my favorite places. Um, Bodie, California, which is one of my favorite ghost towns. And I have to say, I have to say Alcatraz probably. It's an amazing prison. It, it is amazing to explore. I plan on going back to see more. I mean, that's just a few, you know. I mean, I've done so many major places. I've been to asylums. I've been to catacombs. I've been to caves. I've been on top of peaks. I've been to Death Valley. I've been everywhere, you know. 2012 was just a series of milestones for our organization. If, if you go to San Francisco, you should definitely take the night tour of Alcatraz. But um, you don't want to stick with the group of people. If you can get away from the group, do it. You know what I'm saying? It's just not good to be in a group. Um, you can all, The Buffalo Asylum is near Buff State College, and they've cleaned it up a lot. But back in the day when I was there, there were still wheelchairs. There was still torture equipment. There was rat traps. It isn't like that anymore. I mean... Well, by the third time I went there in the same year, they had gotten rid of all the historic stuff. They put in new walls and were painting in there because they were going to use it as a school or put it to use. And, and the project just never came into play. But when I investigated it, I had some experiences there that definitely made me a believer in ghosts. The thing is what people don't realize is that I've been dealing with ghosts since a young child. And um, I was visited very young by ghosts. So I, I've always been interested or I've always been around the paranormal my whole life. I just basically use my organization to kind of publicize it a little more, you know, about the places that we go to kind of expose it a little bit more. Well, I, I you know, I find gems in some of the some of the places that I go, some of the mines and, and, and you know, I remember one time I went in a silver mine and when I got to the very end of the mine I came across a huge room. I squeezed through a hole and the room had it was sparkling like the stars. It was all kinds of silver that was embedded in the rock. And it was making the room sparkle. You know, it was an amazing sight. I mean, I, you know, I've been around. I mean, I've been to Area 51. I, I've been to a lot of places. Um, top 10 animal discoveries of 2012. A tulip with a digestive system. A sea predator that makes T-Rex look weak. And um, it was a top predator 150 million years ago. And that was the Pleosaurus. But now it's only 40 feet. Cannibal lemurs roam the night. A millipede with far too many legs. Um, here's one. A teeny tiny creature trapped in the ancient cocoon. And it, some 200 million years ago, a leech secreted a slimy cocoon underwater on a wet leaf. A tiny animal just the width of a few human hairs attached itself to the cocoon. This tiny bizarre creature clung. On with its spring-like tail becoming rapidly trapped and engulfed by the cocoon. The usual circumstance result in something most unheard of for complete preservation of a soft-bodied animal with no hard bones to fossilize. It was a microscopic creature, and it said it looked like it might have come from geni Genius Vorticella. It's a tiny secret talion and coiling and uncoiling a springy stalk at a speed of 3.1 inches per second. It's the equivalent of a human getting across three football fields in that amount of time. An eight-tentacle snake has been born. And here's one. A fish has, a, a species of fish has a penis that grows on its head. They also found a meat-eating sponge. A zombie worm who uses acid to eat bones. And a turtle that pees from their mouth. This was all, all these were discovered in 2012. That is why when people laugh at me for being a Bigfoot investigator, they're like, you're, you're just, are you serious? I always say to them that thousands 
of new animal species are born into the world or, or found every year, just like 2012, right? So maybe Bigfoot's just waiting to be discovered. I mean, they found the DNA this year. That's the closest step they've ever been, is that they got DNA of a half-hybrid human and, and primate that was discovered. So if this is the case, it's just we haven't found it yet. It's out there. We just haven't found it. We can easily get DNA off hair samples and stuff, you know, but uh, uh, the whole thing is, is finding it. you got to be able to find the creature because people want to see it. But anyways, people were saying, can doomsday really happen? Well, obviously, since it's after midnight, it has not happened. But every religion, including Christianity, Muslims, everyone believes it. The most out-of-the-world theory is a rogue planet, Planet X, or Nibiru will be bringing to the Earth. The problem is nobody can see Nibiru. Some people think Nibiru is is like the 13th planet or like it's so far out of our solar system that we cannot see it, you know? So how's it going to collide with Earth? I don't know. Another theory is that the planet will go through geomagnetic reversal where the Earth's magnetic field will weaken and flip, leaving it vulnerable to the force of a solar flare, which means basically it'll fry everything breathing electronically. Even if you go underground, it'll fry you. Radiation. The, the, sun, the Earth's magnetic field not only makes compasses work, but it functions as a shield against solar radiation, which is our biggest danger right now. According to the United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which is NASA, planetary alignments are possible. They're a regular occurrence. They cause no harm. But a lot of people said that the solar system will align, the Earth will end, blah, blah, blah. Another theory is December 21st will pass through the equator of the galaxy, close to its center and pass through a dense meteor cloud known as the Oort Cloud, thus increasing chances that Earth will be colliding with meteors and asteroids. And if it were to hit, all life would know it would end just like the dinosaurs. I did hear that planet Earth is going to be in the center or, or in an odd place in the Milky Way, but those are some of the theories. And, you know, of course, Hollywood hasn't helped the theories either. I mean, you know, Hollywood gives people the wrong idea. I believe in Bigfoot because I have seen Bigfoot. But it's not just because I've seen it. It's because I've been tracking the creature. When I, I've been tracking it for many years, but I started really doing heavy tracking two years ago when I moved out along the Sierra Nevadas, which is a very, it's a 150-mile range of dormant volcanoes it's it's like 150 miles long by 120 miles wide you're talking millions of square miles you know of wilderness and um not only did i see him but i've been going to different places hiking and putting together a chart at different locations where we find his tracks and then we measure them we put the we put the measurements on our page, or we put them on YouTube, you know, so people can actually see this, that we're not bullshitting, you know. And we try to look for tracks that are very big, but also have toe impressions in places that mankind can't get to. And that's why I get cut up so bad, because I go to places that people are not really getting into, you know. But, I mean, I've, I've dealt with Bigfoot. 2012 was a very... Bigfoot year for me. <laughs> I mean, let's just put it that way. Here's one. Rudolph's nose was really red. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is one of those songs we hear piped in the stores constantly during the season. While we may get tired of it, we assume it's a children's story, but it turns out there's some science behind it. When Dutch and Norwegian traveled to the Arctic, they used a video microscope and thermal imaging technology to measure the glow from a reindeer's nose. They found out that the tiny blood, blast, blood vessels were more abundant in the noses of reindeer than in humans. Basically, what they're saying is that the myth, one example this myth debunked, that people could get drunk by soaking their feet in alcohol. 
However, participants soaked their feet for three hours in a basin containing three bottles of vodka, and their blood alcohol levels were measured afterwards. They were found still sober. But they're saying that because of the blood vessels in a reindeer's nose, that, yes, it really is red. Um, you know, it's amazing that on planet Earth, that mankind continues to discover new things. I mean, not just animal species, but, but for example, who would ever think is, is, is Rudolph's nose is red? You know what a big story that hit the papers recently? And I read that in a small Mexican village south of Sonora, archaeologists uncovered a pre-Hispanic cemetery in the area. It dates back to a thousand years ago. The burial ground consists of 25 individuals. 13 have cranial deformations and 5 had dental muta mutilations. The cultural practices which are similar to pre-Hispanic groups in southern Sinaloa and northern Nayarat, until now they have not been seen in Sonora. In other words, when they uncovered the burial ground, alien skulls were discovered. They're not human skulls. I mean, only one of them was female, but the heads are very elongated, like the skulls. Like, let's say you, you see a normal head of a, a or a skull. Let's say you, you see that, okay? You know, you know, our skull is round. It's, it's not large like a gorilla or, or, you know, certain beasts that are out there. Well, the skull, I'm going to try to do this here. The skull is elongated. It goes like 8 inches to 10 inches and back, and it's long. And the teeth do not look like human teeth. The problem is, every time we discover ancient alien burial grounds, the government takes over, the evidence is buried, and nobody ever gets access to it. And their excuse is always the same. It's, it's against another culture. That's what they use. I know where there's some Bigfoot skulls. I have access to touch them. I have access to look at them. I do not have access to take pictures of them. I do not have access to show them publicly. Because they do not want to lose their funding. And they also do not want to be sued. Because they said that it's an undiscovered species. And, it, and, they, and they classify it as Native American. Even if it's a Bigfoot skull, it's Native American. So you can't, I can't take pictures. I can't do nothing. The same thing with the alien skulls. That is why it's so hard to reveal aliens because, you know, it's just, it, it's a conspiracy. Everybody wants a technology for themselves, you know? Here's one. Talk about going crazy. Tinfoil house. Russian man builds a capsule for doomsday. As 2012 approaches, we'll see many more inventions and strategies of what many believe in the 2000. 12 apocalypse but this this was posted in 2010 just so you guys see past and present and all that but um this guy he had built four layers of insulation using tinfoil can roll down hills land upside down without being damaged it's earthquake proof lava proof emp and geomagnetic storm proof contains an onboard air purification system and it can sustain four people up to 40 days I think people, in my opinion, I think people have gone a little bit too far when it comes to, you know, I mean, you got people built, you know, you ever, these people sit there and they spend a million dollars on a weatherproof house and, and stocking up and, and nothing ever happens. It's good to be prepared. Don't get me wrong. But the way I see it is I will deal with the situation when it occurs. You know, and, and that's the and that's the problem, is that I can't I can't sit here and worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Just like Emily, I can't sit there and think about her fucking shooting me tomorrow. You know, because she don't like me as a person. You know, if I die, I die. You know, and and the thing is, is that because of the way I've been treated in the paranormal community, 
the anomalous is very discriminatory towards me. Coast to coast is hearing people that post dust pictures. They won't give me an interview. I, I hate to really say it, but I'm probably, when I die, my secrets are dying with me. I'm not going to tell people where Bigfoot is. I'm not going to tell them how to photograph apparitions. I'm not going to teach them how to communicate with ghosts. I'm not going to give people shit. I'm done. That, that day and age is done, man. I've been, I, I have busted my ass. I have permanent injuries the rest of my life from doing what I do. And, and there's only about, there's only an amount of people I can count on my hands that I can count on. You know what I'm saying? I, I just entrust because I don't know who to trust anymore. I've been doing this field and I've seen the greed of man. I've seen men get very greedy. Men, women, it's just for all the wrong reasons, man. You know, and it's like, it's about science is what it's really about. Sure, you can have a good time, but we do this for the science aspect of it. Because without people like us, discoveries on Earth would not be made, including alien burial graveyards. You know, and it's just, it's sad the way the world has gone. I, I mean, all the shootings and everything. You know, and, and you know, there is going to be a pole shift. We're due for it. We're long overdue. Every 250,000 years, the poles shift. We're about 30 years, 30,000 years overdue. The sun's going to act out. Well, 2013 is going to be a very bad year for cosmic radiation. Um, like I said, Nibiru, NASA has not detected it, it unless they're not saying nothing. Planetary alignment, blackout of the entire planet. I would say they, they've been predicting not December 21st, but they said December 23rd or Christmas Day, the Earth's going to be in total darkness. One scientist said, uh, yeah, I mean, you have the solstice, which is the shortest day of light this time of year. You know what I'm saying? I could break down the calendar for you guys. The Mayans, let me tell you about the Mayans. Their civilization got started several thousand years ago, and it was at its height in about 900 A.D. It spread as far as the Yucatan Peninsula, which is present-day Mexico. Yeah, they were sophisticated. They had agriculture, architecture. Um, they were excellent astronomers. They understood the patterns in the sky. You know, they made a calendar. Keeping time was very important to the Mayans. I mean, we do it. You know, we have calendars hanging. I got a, I got a puppy dog calendar, you know, always checking the calendar. But they called, they, they were very, their calendar was similar to ours. Their basic units of a day were called Hien. A 360-day peri period was called a Tun. The Mayan understood that a physical year was five days longer than a Tun. And they had other calendars to deal with it. They had longer units, too, like the k just shy of 20 years. Most importantly, for Apocalypse, if the Anandos, the ba I can't even speak Mayan, but it's, it's Ba'aktun, roughly 394 of our years. The starting point for their calendar, year zero, if you like, is 3114 B.C., the date they figured the Earth was created. They didn't even know when the Earth was created, you know? Knowing all this, we can match your calendar to ours and convert any date they use to a more familiar system. If you do the map, you'll find that we are nearing the end of the 13th Bakhtun. In fact, it ends on December 21st, 2012. Not Doomsday, just the end of the calendar. That's this Friday. Cue the spooky music. Of course, we're past Friday because I went over midnight. I always do. And, um, you know, they had bigger units of time. For example, the Alatun, which was... 600 or 63 million years so it sounded like they were predicting the end of the world ever let alone this weekend basically it's not the end they just believe the Mayans believed in transformation you know and, and what transformation is of mankind is it's it's like enlightenment you know we should be advancing our culture is not advancing 
we're digressing. As, as we continue to breed on this planet, there are more mentally ill. There are, there are humans killing humans. There are gangs. There's poverty. There's disease. Um, I hate to say it, but maybe a virus will wipe out mankind. I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's, it's just, we can't predict that. You know, you, you can't, it takes a, you know, when you watch the weather, man, he can't even predict the weather for the next day. So how the hell would the Mayans be able to predict how the Earth's going to end? I'll tell you how the planet will end. Not mankind. Mankind can end earlier. But I could tell you this planet, like I said in the beginning of my show, when the sun turns into a red giant, this planet will be done for. It doesn't matter how you look at it, we will all burn alive. I won't live to see it. You won't live to see it. We're looking at 5 billion more years. But the planet, our planet's already 5 billion years old. So another 5 billion years, there's going to be transformations. These cultures were, they were geniuses when it came to making calendars. They used the stars to create a calendar. They knew December 21st was a solstice. Two times a year they had the solstice. You had, you know, you had your season change. June 21st, summer. December 21st, winter. And they were able to record that. Their calendar ends. It's not the end of the world. Sadly, for people like me, I, I, I would honestly welcome the end of the world. If we can get rid of billions of people and start over, Mankind might change your tune about murdering people, raping, looting, all that shit. It'll all be gone with a simple disaster. Just something simple, a virus to wipe out mankind, start over. That doesn't make me a bad person. I just see things for what they are. You know... And, and unfortunately, we live in a society that has a lot of corruption. I mean, I'm not a supporter in violence, you know. The, what's going on in Syria is disgusting. Women and children constantly being killed. Why? Why does that need to happen? Why does rockets need to be fired at innocent women and children? Why? The only thing that is going to stop the evils of mankind is, is something's got to give. I'm willing to die if that means that there will be peace on earth. I'm willing to die. You know, and unfortunately, I don't know if there will ever be peace on earth. We're, we're digressing. We're not, you know, we're not getting better. So anyways, you know, I didn't get enough donations tonight to light myself on fire. But what I may do is light my hand on fire tonight. And I cannot hold the microphone and do it. So it's, you know, there's only nine viewers. So you know what? Only nine people are going to get to see this. Fuck the rest of everybody if they want to be that way. You know, I'm not, I'm so sick of people lacking in loyalty, you know. I mean... Show the show, show the show, the internet disconnects. Come back and listen to the rest of the show. Don't just fucking go off and go to sleep, man. You know, I only host a show like three times a year. I used to host a show every two weeks, but I stopped doing it because I kept getting threats from people. It's like, that's why good things end. That's why good paranormal groups drop off the face of the earth. Because they're as sick of putting up with the shit as much as me. You know, and, and you can't blame, and you can't blame anybody. You can't blame somebody for being sick of putting up with bullshit, you know? I mean, even in the paranormal community, I've seen so much drama this year. Not my group, but I've seen groups fighting, and, and, and everybody wants to get on TV, and they don't even realize, man, once you go, once you sign a contract for TV, they will make you lie, or you will get fired. I was fired because I didn't want to lie to the public. And it doesn't matter. You know, 2012, I could have ran with it, you know. 
and then people are mad at me for my political beliefs, you know. But I do believe in gay rights. I do believe that love is love, whether you're gay, lesbian, whatever. And, you know, I, I people got mad at me because I refused to support Mitt Romney. It's okay if you support Mitt Romney. I don't care. I'm still your friend. But I'm a psychic to a degree, and I can see through people. And so my friends should be able to trust me when I say something. And if I'm really strong on something, chances are I'm probably right. I'm very, I'm one of these psychics that's very rarely wrong. You know, just because I act all silly and I do stand-up comedy does not mean I don't have any abilities or talents in the field that I do. Because I do. I've been doing it since a kid. You know. And it's just, it's just one of those things that people, it comes a line of respect, you know. And the people that are listening, they're, you know what? The people that are listening right now, I'm going to light my hand on fire. I'm not going to light my entire self on fire. But I will, I will do a demonstration for you guys. I don't have Tammy to put it out either. So you guys can understand I can get seriously hurt because I don't have an assistant right now. And I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm, I'm here to entertain you guys. I do this show for you guys. And I don't, and I don't have to do the show, but I do the show so I can connect with people. Because that's, you know, that's what it's really about. It's about connecting with people that, you know, investigate, that are your friends and everything else. And, and I read in the chat room, you believe in gay rights. And, and that was one of the reasons why I had voted for Obama. It's because I felt, I felt that gay rights were a very important topic. Because there's too many people in this, a quarter of this country is gay and lesbian. And I do have gay friends that want to get married. And... For me, you know, it's like it's only fear that I support them, you know. And so, you know, I had a I had a friend of mine. He left, got pissed because I said Romney's name, and I'm just like, you know, whatever, man, whatever. I'm I'm not bashing you. You take it fucking personal. All these people take who lost personal. I get death threats and everything else. But you know what? What really matters is the social issues. I mean, Roe versus Wade or whatever it is, all these little things matter. Women shouldn't be told what to do with their bodies. Women should be treated with equal rights. And so I had a lot of people that hated on me because I believed in equal rights. That's what it really comes down to. You know, and, and I'm so fucking tired of dealing with people that don't believe in equal rights. Okay, here we go. So, if you don't believe in equal rights, that's fine. You know, but I do. I care about gays. I care about women. And I care about my friends. And that is why I voted for Obama. Only, it wasn't because he was handling the government top notch, but he was doing his job. And to be a good president, even to be a good leader, it takes years for somebody to grow with that person. I've been, a, I've been a leader of my paranormal organization. And you know what? My investigators might be skeptical the first couple years. But when they spend enough time with me, per se, they will understand the leadership that I possess in this organization. And, you know, it takes time to become that kind of leader. And I don't think people understand that if you don't have the time, you cannot prove yourself. So if people want to hate on me, that's fine for my political views. But I'm a man that always does what's right. You know, and, and I'm just done with the bullshit. I, I am fucking done. You know, if people want to leave my show just because I have a personal opinion, fuck them. Yeah. But anyways, I got the cable out. And I think I'm going to go crazy here.
Anyways, I read another article that the Earth's most devastating mass extinction was caused by a single microbe. You know, back in the days of the dinosaurs, there was this microbe that caused the disease with the dinosaurs, and the dinosaurs would die. I mean, within days, by a microbe. So you got to think. History repeats itself. You know, you, Heinz said that um, science is wonderful. Yes, it's wonderful. But people, what people don't understand is science is also a very powerful tool. And, you know, like our government's creating human Z's. You guys know what human Z's are. Basically, it's combining chimpanzee and human. human uh, you, you, you take a female chimpanzee and you impregnate her egg with a human sperm. And when the human is born, they are ten times stronger than humans. They can walk on two legs, they can talk, but they also contain primate DNA. In other words, if you took a human Z and you put him in the ring with one of the strongest guys in the country, the human Z would rip that person apart. And the government wants to create super soldiers. How do you do that? It's like Planet of the Apes. You, you create a hybrid. Hybrids are very possible. Yeah, science is fantastic. As long as it's used for the right thing. Zombie viruses, actually called the rage virus. I've had people tell me it exists. There are people that tell me top secret shit all the time. They come to me, you know, because I can, I can hit a lot of numbers during my show. Tonight I didn't hit them. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's the holidays and people are just, I don't know if they're a hung bug or, or fucking, I don't know what the deal is, man. I just know that the work that we do is science, but it's you, our science is used for the right thing. You know, we're not going out there trying to create hybrid microbes that could destroy mankind. AIDS probably was man-made. And now look, it's spread to all these countries. It's a way of population control, but you know what? In Africa, it's like one out of every two has AIDS. And met the rebels are raping women and giving them AIDS. It's just, it's just constant devastation. It should have never came out. But that's, you know, I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, science can be used for the wrong things. I jumped off the chat, or the chair. I don't remember jumping off the chair. You know... On my last Halloween show, or my last show, I was very sick that day, and I took some medication, and I didn't realize it, but I drank some cheap tequila, and it caused me a reaction, and I blacked out for four hours. I don't even know what I did. I don't even know what happened in my last show. I remember the first two hours. I just don't remember the rest of it. And I tried to make it up tonight during this show, and I tried to... You know, give everybody a full-out show, which I've done, but now people are, some people are being fucking assholes to me. And it, it, it's like, I'm just done, man. I'm done. Uh, I, I, I've had it up to here. If I'm willing to light myself on fire, people can at least watch the show, you know. But the way I see it is, you know, people, there are good people, there are bad people. There are good scientific discoveries, there's bad ones. There's good and bad in everything, you know. That's how I look at it. Yeah, I was wearing... Well, I, I wore my cape the last two Halloweens. But I wore... I also went to my meetup in Halloween in October. And I wore my top hat and I wore my cape. Painted my nails fucking... Sh like a very gothic purple. And, of course, you know, Emily's brother there didn't want to shake my hand. Shit was being a fucking little cocksucker. You know, little fucking runt. But, you know, I, I dress the way I want. I do what the fuck I want. I don't care what other people think, you know. I mean, like, like I said, life is too goddamn fucking short not to be able to do the things that, you know, you want to. If you want to be who you want, you can be who you want, you know. Oh, yeah. I think I can definitely put the video camera. There we go. 
I'm going to set up the video camera before I light myself on fire. You know what's funny is that our, our quota is full, so we can't record tonight's show. People can't watch the rewind. So when I announce that I lit my hand on fire, nobody's going to be able to fucking see it unless I post the video that I'm taking, which I may not do because I just, you know what I'm saying? I just, like I said, it's one of those things that I, I've been playing with fire for many years, so, you know, it's a pretty professional thing that we do. And uh, anyways, we still got Jill on the line. You still with us, Jill? Yeah, I was just uh, letting you talk and do and do your thing, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, you can always, you know, you can always ju- jump on in at any time. I mean, you know, I read an article where they said that uh, Jesus used cannabis, and they said that's why you know the whole healing thing is maybe he was using cannabis. Uh, you know, there was a there was an article that a black Santa decoration returns to Ohio's woman's yard. It was stolen in 2010, and it was returned. Like, in other words, she awakened early Christmas morning with noise outside her home and saw a silhouetted figure lying in her front yard. She called the police to confirm that it was her Santa swiped last year ago. And then there was a Christmas card, the envelope read, from the robbers to the victim inside the car was a message, keep Santa safe, we tried, it's a miracle, he's back. You know, just stories like that, man, it's just like, wow, you know. I don't like thieves. I'm not a person that associates myself with thieves. And I had a guy in 2012 that stole from me. When he who came on our investigation and stole, and I just you know I I don't understand what goes through people's heads. You know, you steal our safety equipment and now you're fucking shorting our investigators. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and light my hand on fire because I. I don't give a fuck what anybody else says, you know. But you're going to have to give me a little bit because I don't have an assistant. And so if you want to talk a little bit, Jill, give me that chance so I can set up here. Okay. I'm just, you know, listening and whatnot, so... Well, you know, like I say, like I say, it's, you know, we've ran a great show for many, many years. I mean, I've been doing the internet radio thing long, long before other shows. So, I'm trying to set this up because because this is pretty, this is pretty dangerous. I don't have an assistant right now. Tammy logged off, and Tammy's done helping with the show, so I'm going to have to try to do this myself, and that's what's going to be very hard about it, is that I don't have an assistant right now. So anyways, you know, at least I could say that everybody here survived Doomsday, survived 2012, and, um, you know, I, I like I always try to tell people, you cannot go through life worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. You got to worry about what's happening now, you know. And all these things could happen. I mean, you know, Yellowstone's going to blow. What's going to happen when Yellowstone blows? They just found out in Mono County, California, which is near me, they found out that there is a possible super volcano that can blow. These super volcanoes can put the world, set the world into an ice age, killing a good portion of mankind, throwing up ash, which would reach England and Europe. And, and, and you know, I, I may, I may, in 2013, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it yet, but I'm thinking about maybe taking a trip to Europe. And um, investigating a couple castles and things. 
that may be on my list. I, I, I don't know, you know. I have friends in Europe. I could stay with somebody or I could just backpack across Europe by myself, you know, because I have over the years investigated by myself. But anyways, before I light myself on fire, I'm going to go ahead and play a couple songs. And for your question, because I, I, need, to, I need to play a couple songs because i got to get my groove to do this. It, like I said, I could go to the hospital if I don't do it right. But um, Yellowstone is a beautiful place. I haven't been there. I do plan on taking a trip there in a couple years. I'm going to go to Mount Shasta in the future, too. All great volcanic sites. All full of paranormal, such as Bigfoot, UFO sightings. But Yosemite really tops it all. Because Yosemite has thousand-foot cliffs with waterfalls pouring over them. Yosemite has unique rock formations. Yosemite ha is vast with wildlife. So is Yellowstone. But Yosemite is almost like being in a lost world. I, I can't even explain it to you. Yellowstone, it's a forested area. It's very, you know, it's beautiful in the sense, yeah, you're going to see a lot of wild animals and stuff, but you're not going to see the sights like you are in Yosemite. Me and my sons, we found a cave. We ended up spelunking and everything out there. I ended up standing underneath a waterfall. One slip, I'd be dead. But it was so much fun to climb up along the cliff right to the waterfall and just, you know, get pictures. I'm so small compared to the falls, you know. Beautiful. It's a place that you should visit. If you have time, there's a ghost town outside Yosemite that, that's definitely got some activity. Only a few structures remain, but it's a good mile hike up into the woods they got a ghost town the mine's been barred off which sucks because the mine is awesome and you just you can't explore it because they got bars now in front of it but there is a lot of i mean i get every year hundreds of emails in relation to yosemite people write me they're like there's bigfoot they got a creature called penelope that rips people open there's um it's almost, it's south of the Sierra Triangle, so I, I can imagine there's still UFOs that you could see out there. So, you know, you, I would go with Yosemite. I definitely would. I went there for my birthday, and uh, I mean, I live only about an hour and a half from the entrance, hour and 45 minutes. So for me, you know, it's something I can go to once a year, once every couple of years and do a little bit see a little more every time I go. I was thinking about doing a group camp out where the team could investigate and camp out and, and, you know, search for the unknown, search for the paranormal. It's called Bennettville. That's the name of the ghost town. As far as Yellowstone goes, Yellowstones do the blow any time. They keep track of it, and they think within 10 years, it is going to blow. And what's going to be sad is when Yellowstone blows, all them animals are going to be killed. Human life's going to be killed within so many miles of that place. And ashes are going to cover the entire United States, including Europe. We're going to be put into a nuclear winter. And when nuclear winter happens... Let's just put it this way. People die. Can't grow crops. It's raining ashes. Sun gets blocked out for months. It's a very bad scenario. And I've been studying up on Yellowstone, and I do think it's going to go. And, you know, even though it's a couple states away from me, it'll affect me too. It won't just, it will affect a lot of people. And there will be people who die. You know, when the ice sheet came down in our last ice age, it was about a mile thick in the New England states. I mean, all these houses in Massachusetts and New York and all these places, people don't realize it. The glacier that was over, it was like one giant ice sheet that came down from the North Pole. 
And that ice sheet was a mile thick over what some of you now call home. Where I live was a giant massive lake called Lahatan. It wasn't even a lake, it was a sea. They found ancient whale bones up in the center of Nevada. Because whales, the, the pleos, pleosaurs or, or not the ichthyosaurs or whatever, ichthyosaurs, they um, were about 50 feet long and they swam where today it's mountains and desert. Nothing is out of the realm of possibility. I would throw all this up in the air right now and say it could happen. Of course, if you want to see Yellowstone before it blows, I would suggest you do it within the next 10 years because it is becoming active. Scientists have been taking measurements, and they say they're almost sure of it. Within 10 years, something's going to happen. I mean, you know, they can get seismic readings. And when something becomes seismic all the time, every day, it's a, it's a sign that there is pressure building up. I think... In my lifetime, I will live to see many apocalypses. I don't think I'll see the one that kills everyone, but I think that there will be some that will kill millions. I think I'll live through another plague or virus. I think I'll live through Yellowstone blowing. I think that there will be a meteor in my lifetime that hits Earth. Um, in Tung Tunguska, Siberia, in the early 1900s, there was just a small undetectable object that hit Siberia. I mean, it wiped out everything for like 50 miles, man. You know, 100 miles. And that was just something small. But if I, but we detect new comets every day. They come around the sun, and then we see them. The question is, is in those three months from the sun that it takes to get from the sun to the Earth, is it going to collide with Earth or pass Earth? And that's the problem we have. Comets are big. You can't stop them. It's what created the seas on Earth in ancient times. And comets will kill out mankind if a comet were to hit. So we could be talking here, and in three months we could be dead all because of a comet. That's our worst, that's our worst fear right now. That should be your worst fear. Not Yellowstone or anything like that. Is the fact that every so many years new comets are passing the Earth. Sooner or later, one's going to hit. It'll be a very painless death. I could tell you, a very quick and painless death, but it could happen. And mankind could be wiped out. With the exception of some people who have underground facilities, like our military. Oh yeah, I, I'm going to play some music, because I need to get myself ready so I can finish off the show and burn myself. <laughs> and, uh, like I say, it's it's going to be a very intriguing thing that I got going on. This is Extreme Radio, and for those listening, this is Lord Rick. And um, let's see what I can get going for you guys here. I actually have thousands of songs I can DJ for you guys, but, um, you know, I, wa I want to give you guys some of the good stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and play Placebo Running Up That Hill. And I will play another song, and then I will come back, and we will do the Hand on Fire. Kate and I have been married for 15 years. That's three moves, five jobs, two newborns. It's no...
beneath the bullet line Unaware that I'm tearing you asunder There's a thunder in our hearts, baby So I'd hate for the ones we love Tell me we both matter
You're listening to Angel of the Night in Night Vault Radio. This is Lord Rick. <clears throat> so as you can see, I've made preparations here to do this. I was going to put on a better show earlier, but we just didn't we didn't get enough donations and people got pissed and they left, you know. They'd rather see me burn than, you know, like, hey, hurry up and light yourself on fire. It doesn't work like that, man. But you know what? It's almost 2 in the morning here, and I can light myself on fire for the people that just stuck through the whole entire show or, or, or stayed and stuck it through. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this. And I want to make sure I have, I'm going to be setting up a camera in my studio, too, when I do this. I am... I am definitely, I could tell you right now, I'm definitely going to do the whole thing. I'm not going to burn myself alive. But I am going to show you guys a little something pretty cool. There's a lot of things you probably wouldn't see <laughs> unless you met me. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I tend to be one of these people that likes a lot of the extreme things. You know, I like to, I like to try to push the limits a little bit. But I'm going to have to put my microphone to do this. And, you know, like I said, people people that stay up late are going to get a part of the show on Doomsday that they're not, that most of those people are not going to, other people are not going to get. You know, people come into my chat room and are just like, light yourself on fire or I'm going, fuck that shit. You fucking stay if you want to see me light my hands on fucking fire or hand or whatever. I'll light my hand on fire. I don't have an issue with it. You know, I'll pour fuel on my hand and I'll fucking do it. I'll do it. But anyways, I want to make sure. Oops, I'm dropping Santa Claus trains. We've got to get the decorations going. You know, we're, you're watching our sky cam here in Angel of the Night. Angel of the Night Studios. There we go. Let's see if I can set this. Perfect. I just set a video camera up since we're not recording our show. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to begin the show. So what I'm going to have to do here, I'll light myself on fire. I have... I put fuel in a spray bottle, okay? The reason why I put it in a spray bottle is so that I can evenly disperse it onto the palm of my hand, okay? Do not try this at home. This is for entertainment purposes only. Do not even try this out of the home because I'm telling you right now, playing with fire is extremely dangerous. And I'm, you know, I'm one of these people that over the years I've cliff climbed, I've done all that daring stuff, and I can tell people straight up on my show it's dangerous. It is. I, I don't even know how many times I can count that I've come close to dying or being injured. But, um, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be very wild what you're about to see. And I want you to keep it in mind that this, this pro I hate to say it, but I think this is going to be one of my last shows. I'm just sick and tired. I'm just so sick and tired of being fucking kicked in the ass by people. I am. I am. And so what better than to end my career in radio by doing this tonight? And maybe people, when I sit there and I talk about it, people will realize what they need. But I'm going to have to put the microphone down. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna light the fire. I'm gonna light the fire using this. This is this is um, an extension. It's gonna be very hard because what I gotta do is I gotta be able to light it and throw this away or throw it down because I gotta concentrate. I don't have an assistant, which makes it ten times more dangerous tonight. And um, my son. He says to me, Dad, if you burn the studio down, I'm going to laugh at you. So we definitely do not want to burn the studio down. 
we want me to burn on fire. That's that's what we're trying to go here for. I'm trying to start myself on fire. And how you start yourself on fire is very simple. This is the fuel. This is the fire. <laughs> Lord bless you. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's highly intense, so... As soon as the flame hits this, this shit's going to burn. And what I will do is I will put it out a meat, you know, pretty quick. I won't let it burn because I don't want to lose any layers of skin. But at the same time, I, want, I may do it once or twice for you guys to see. So if I don't talk while I'm doing it, it's because i got to concentrate on the fire. Okay? So... I'm as ready as you guys are. Are you guys ready? You ready? You ready, Jill? You ready to see this shit? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be offensive towards anybody. I just think that I need to take away the show because, you know, like our last show, we had a couple thousand viewers. This show, it's almost the holidays. And I get booted off, the, the stick and boots us off by accident or reconnects the room and nobody comes back because I won't rush this and start myself on fire. So I have to take away things. People, people can get Angel of the Night Radio in person. Just by spending time with me, you can get my radio show eye to eye because I can put on a radio show in a public place. I can. And... There's a lot of other things I can do that people don't even know about, you know. They just want to assume what they want to assume. So, let's get on with the stunt, shall we? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the microphone down. So, you know, bear with me. Okay, I lit my hand on fire twice, and it was a purple flame, but it kind of conked out. The fuel kind of burned off it, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it on the back side of my hand and see if I can get a bigger flame. It's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up close to the camera so that you guys can actually see my hand on fire. You can't really see it there. You can see it a little bit, but you can't really see it. You know, if I go like this, I can kind of, I can kind of show you guys my hand on fire. And by the way, any fire doesn't feel good on the skin. doesn't look like much but the flame as you guys know blue flames purple flames are very hot and I only could show it to you for a brief second because I can't I don't have my assistant here you know <laughs> but uh, the flame is purple and you know what I'll even do it one last time for you guys to see up close I'll do one I'll do my other hand and uh, you can see my See, oh yeah, oh well, you know, 
My son's like, you better record this, Dad. I want to see how you do this. I'm like, well, don't you ever think about trying it. Definitely. It's, it's, it's not, you know, like I say, it's not something that I'd recommend people trying. Because when the fuel burns off, I can definitely feel the heat, you know. Um, that time what I did is I put the fuel on my arm, my hand, when I was back here. I put the fuel on my palm, my back of my hand, and my wrist. And so every side of it was lit up. So it's kind of... You know, I'll do it one more time, and then that's it. Um, but, like I say, it's a, it's a very pretty blue that burns off of me. And I can usually withstand it a few seconds before it starts to burn layers of skin. So, um, I, had, I had a plan of how I was going to do this tonight, but we never reached our donation level. I was going to take it to even a bigger extreme, but I can sit here without an assistant by myself. And I can light my wrist and my hand on fire, you know. I'm going to leave a mark. <laughs> When I pour more fuel on it, I can get it to burn for a longer time, but I also can get it to where I can get multiple colors of flame, you know. I can get blues and greens and different things like that. That time, I let it burn longer, and it, it, it did give me one little burn, but, you know, no pain, no gain, no pain, no glory. Oh, I'm not snoring. That's someone here at the house. <laughs> that's someone here at the house that's snoring. <laughs> and there you have it. That's, you know, that's how you light yourself on fire. Um, I'm going to be back in about two, about a minute, because I have to... Um, I gotta show my son a little something on cam that I have. Because he's gonna wanna see something. Oh yeah, I, I didn't think it was you snoring, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I just did, I just lit my arm on fire for my son on camera. You guys couldn't see it. That was, a, that was a really nice flame. But I think I'm pretty much done. I've lit my, I've lit my arm and my hand on fire like eight times now, so. 
It can be done. Like I said, do not try this at home. Because I'm telling you right now, once the fuel burns off, it starts burning skin. You will lose hair. You will lose layers of skin. And uh, I once did a fire performance at a party a few years back. And um, I did something nobody had ever attempted to try to do. And basically what I did is I lit my arms and hands on fire. And I raised them to the sky and I held them there. And then I brought my hands together. And then I snuffed out the flames. So I had it going for about four seconds on my body. And, um, and I guess those were my wild Vegas days or something, you know. But, um, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, you know, you got to imagine that doomsday, it, there's many scenarios. We could all burn, you know. And so I know every time I do f play with fire and I light myself on fire or whatever, I know that it's a situation I, I can't afford to mess it up. You know, if I, if I let the fire burn for too long, it'll burn right through to my bone. It's hot. It's a blue flame. And I'm putting fuel on my body. And when I put fuel on my body, it's an instant. There's no room. You know, it's not like a yellow flame. The flame's purple. It's very hot. It, it'll, go, it'll cut through your skin like butter. And, of course, as you can see, I'm untouched. You know? And I, I mean, I lit my tattoo and everything on fire because my son, he wanted to see it. So I was like, I'll, I'll make you a video because <laughs> he's never seen it done. I've only performed at a live party. And, of course, you know, like I say, um, I don't know. This might be my last show. I really don't know, Jill. I mean, we've had over the years, we've just had I, it, it, there's not enough support, you know. I mean, yeah, we can sometimes get a thousand viewers, but. But the support's not there, you know. I mean, it, it, the way people treat me is utterly ridiculous. I don't get paid to do this show, you know. I can sit here and do all kinds of stunts for you guys. But it doesn't do no good. I mean, when some of your best friends say they're going to come to the show and they don't come to your show, it's just kind of like, why am I doing this, you know. So... You know, maybe playing with fire is the, is the last thing I should fucking do. You know what I'm saying? But I like doing the show, and I like meeting people, and I like... I mean, tonight was a great show. I mean, we covered so many paranormal topics. We recapped all 2012. We covered Doomsday to kind of ease those fears. Um, I will say NASA, even though NASA said the world won't end, there are scientists that said there is something else coming. Um, some, it's a bunch of s things to do with space. Radiation rays, solar flares. Um, I, I can't find the article, but they named about four or five different threats that could hit in another doomsday scenario in 2013. I just came out tonight to kind of disprove it. You know, it's, it is December 22nd. We're all still alive. You know, I lit my hands on fire. I'm still here, you know. Um, I, I, guess, I guess that in order to be a paranormal investigator, you kind of got to have a fearless attitude. It's the only way you get down to the truth. You want to see an alien bad enough? You want to see Bigfoot bad enough? You, you will see it. You will see it if you go look hard enough for it. What's to be expected in 2013? Well, I can tell you this right now. I got a full team of investigators. Full team. I have a lot of, a lot of things planned. I might come to England... Um, it just depends on my financial situation. I have plans to possibly go into an entrance into the hollow earth, a secret entrance. I may be going this year to Mount Shasta. 
I may be going up to the Redwoods to investigate Bigfoot. I have a lot of plans in 2013. If you thought 2012 was death-defying, you should probably see 2013, some of the work we're going to be doing. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be badass. I mean, it, all our investigations are solid, you know. And, and uh, people, people need to understand that the work we do is beneficial to the public, you know. It's not, I don't. You know, what I get out of it is the friendship and the companions of others. But I also get out of the joy out of sharing my work with other people. Our nice photos, our nature pics, our ghost pics, our finds, our scientific evidence, and the journeys that we form with other people. And I'm glad that, you know, I'm still here, you know, to be able to go in 2013 and to be able to continue my research and I you know I live in places where there's secret entrances into the earth there's I live near the, the Sierra Triangle planes disappear UFOs are seen I live near a lot of haunted ghost towns I go in the mines I, I mean there is no limit to what we'll do in 2013 with the team everybody can pitch in for gas and we can travel to some of the greater places like Sacramento and in San Francisco and, and, you know, Yosemite again and another maybe another trip to Bodie this summer or this spring. I'll take another trip to Bodie. You know, when I was in Bodie, I got a story to tell you guys. But when I was in Bodie, I had been running a little late. It's a lot to see, you know, only 5% of the town remains. There used to be a couple thousand buildings in Bodie. Well, at the end of the day, when I was in Bodie, I had a little bit of an incident, okay? Santa Claus is coming to town. There we go. Let's be a... Happy holiday, man. But when I was in Bodie, I had caught a ghost on film. It was a very successful investigation. It's an amazing ghost town. My kids enjoyed it. And, um, you know, we, we spent the day there. We had a picnic lunch. I, I like to take my kids on the historical investigations. My son is the best cryptozoologist you're ever going to meet. Even though he's a very young child, he found an arrowhead hundreds of years old up in the woods. He always finds artifacts and things. He, he would make a great archaeologist. But when I was up in Bodie, I had ran a little bit late. I went into the mining district. It's off limits. Climbed the peak. And I was trying to get back before the place started to shut down for the day. And this fucking, I, I mean, I'm not mocking out retarded people, but this retard, like, chased me down, man. And was like, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of here. You know, she's like cleaning shitters for a fucking living. And I'm just like, look, I got permission to be here, man. I paid you guys like 20 fucking something dollars a day on top of it to walk around this park, to walk around this ghost town. And she, I said, I just need like five minutes at the cemetery if you could give me that. Oh, she pretty much told me to go fuck myself. And that's when I went to the cemetery and started snapping photos. And she chased me in her fucking golf cart, man. Sergeant fucking Bullwhip. Started chasing me all over the damn place. But. But anyways, oh, I was reading the chat room, sorry, but she had uh she had chased me down and then she made threats and I'm and she's like, I'm calling the ranger, I'm gonna have you arrested, you're gonna pay a thousand dollar fine. I said, Go ahead and call the fucking ranger, you know? And then she tried to tell me I couldn't go down this one public dirt road to go to another ghost town. She goes, It's out. And I was like, That's bullshit because I've seen other cars go down that road. Like, how do you know it's out, you know? You're fucking driving around in a goddamn golf cart. You don't even own a vehicle. 
Someone probably dropped you off at work at the ghost town, you know? So I called her Sergeant Bullwhip because, like, I mean, basically, she just went, like, crazy on me and started chasing me and shit, you know? And I'm the one that's promoting their park so that they get business and money. And, and Paul, I seen that you didn't know it wasn't on. Well, I mean, I did send you an invite. I also advertised it, and, like, a hundred times the last, like, two weeks. But it's all right, bud. I, I can't record the show because Stickham's made new rules that your archive can only be a few hours big. So I did not record tonight's show. I recorded it from my studio. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I I sat here in my studio, and I I record all the shows, the audio at least, but there is no video of the show. I mean, I can always burn a copy for you down the road, but um, it was a good show. I, I had some problems with some fans because I didn't light myself on fire. They were like, I'm gone. You know, and I, and I wasn't going to do it unless my tip jar either got full or I was going to wait to do it till later on at night because because some people just wanted to see me lit on fire. They didn't even care about listening to the show about the doomsday scenarios or, or some of the comedy and, and things that we've, in, you know, encountered. Um, but, you know, this show is not just a holiday show tonight. It's also I'm not hosting a New Year's Eve show. So this is kind of like my New Year's holiday recap doomsday type of combination show. It's had everything in it all the way from comedy to entertainment. But I, the only caller I had tonight was Jill. I usually get like 50 calls a night. The only person to call was Jill. I only had a few friends show up. I got booted three times off Stick'em. And every time I got booted... I lost like 100 viewers, and nobody, like maybe three people would come back. And so I'm just so tired of doing radio because, because I'm to a point where I just am like, I'm done, man. Not because of stick them. It's because these people don't understand. I don't get paid to do this. And I come out for five, six hours, and I give you a fucking rock and fucking show. People a rock and show, and, and, and nobody, you know, you get nine viewers. You know, it's like, come on, man. Really? You know, it's it's hard. It's hard to keep hosting the show. I, I have so many medical problems. To be out here tonight for seven hours hosting a show, it's killing me. And I'm not whining or nothing. I'm happy that you guys are out. I'm just not happy that I had a couple friends come in my room and start bitching because over fucking hostess Twinkies. It's like, come on, man. They're saying I'm rude. And my last show, they were fucking on playing fucking all kinds of stupid music and interrupting my show. And this show, they're in my chat room bitching at me, you know? And, of course, you you guys know, you know Mike, Paul. Well, he's really emotional because Romney didn't win the election. I made a little Romney joke tonight, and he left the room immediately. You know, and it's just like, fuck you. You know, you don't want to be a part of it. You're just going to fucking short yourself. I did light myself on fire tonight. I proved it can be done, not extensively because I didn't have my assistant here, so I have to be able to control the flames. And if I don't have an assistant, I cannot, uh, I cannot create a huge fire by lighting myself on. I have to be able to do smaller flames and fire. But I did light my arm on fire. And, you know, and very few people will actually get to see it, but the ones who watched it, watched it uh you know live it you know the thing is with people is they take everything personal you know I, this week i had someone call the cops on me all because i told her off i removed her position as staff and then i told her you know i'm done with your laziness i'm done with your bullshit your drama i'm done with you making fun of my investigators i'm done with you trying to intervene in my relationship i'm just done you know, and I, and I pretty much stuck it to her, honestly. She goes to the police department to try to have me arrested. And the cop called me up privately, and because I know cops. And the cop said to me that the girl's nuts. You know, I mean, basically, the police station thinks she's fucking crazy. But, on the other hand, I have to deal with these fucking crazy people. The threats, the, the death threats, the people hating on me. I don't know why they hate on me. I'm fucking poor. 
I have very little to give except except educate people on the paranormal and let them enjoy my work. You know, this show has been running since 2005. I've had up to 50,000 viewers at the same time. I can carry a show, but it's the holidays, and people have been not, a lot of people have been nothing but fucking shitty towards me. And it's like if I take away the show, I take away something somebody wants. They just, you know what I'm saying? It, it'll be it. They can go watch some other show. They're not going to get, they're not going to get what they could get here. You know, I mean, there's a million shows out there. They're all mainstream. Yeah, I mean, you know, no, I mean, all of them serious paranormal talk. There's no stand up comedy. There's no, you know what I mean? They got a fucking beat fucking filter. You can't even say fuck. You say fuck, you get bitched at, you know? It's not, it's not the way it works here. You know, you want to smoke your cannabis, you want to drink, you want to fucking call up and talk about the paranormal, you want to make a fucking dirty joke, I don't care. It's just like my team members, they tell them, you want to fucking smoke a joint, you want to fucking drink a beer, I don't care. As long as we're productive and get the work done. Because nobody's getting paid, this is a volunteer service, this is a volunteer radio show. And I'm going to be, you know, I just, I'm at a point where it's like, you know, I ran a good show tonight. I, I would probably say this is probably the best show on Stick'em you're going to get. It's been good since 7 o'clock. It's been solid. I, I did not black out. I did not get drunk. I really was on my A game. But on the other hand, when people come in my room and they're just like, hurry up and light yourself on the fire so I can get going. It's like, fuck you. You know? I'll light myself on at 2 a.m. when you're fucking sleeping in your beds. That's when I'll light myself on fire. So that's just my view. If you're listening to this show and you just started listening to it, we want to welcome you to Angel of the Night Radio. It's doomsday, past doomsday. It's the 22nd. I'm still alive. I'm still well. I don't know. I got to check my arm and make sure I, uh... oh, there we go. Wow. I lost, you know what? It's amazing. But I actually kept most of my hair on my arm. I did lose a patch of hair on my arm, but that's okay. That's fine. It does happen when you light yourself on fire. <laughs> Sometimes I wish that I could just burn, like, my facial hair so I don't have to, like, shave my fucking face all the damn time, you know? It would just be easy just to burn the shit off and not have it grow back. Wish I could do that. Maybe I should spray my fucking face with fuel and light it. I don't know, man. I could look like that, uh... That ghost biker with Nicolas Cage, you know? Sit there in his whole face and head is fucking flaming and shit. That's badass. That's real badass. But um, I think I'm going to wrap up the show tonight. I'll play probably a song or two as I'm wrapping it up. Um, Jill, I want to thank you for calling in twice tonight. You were the only person to call in. I was actually going to give away to anybody who called in the show season four of Angel of the Night Radio. We're in our eighth season. But season four is very special, and I'm just not going to do it, man. I mean, I may give you a copy, Jill, because you did call in twice tonight, and a lot of people just, you know, they they don't appreciate what's given to them, you know. The whole point of the show, it works both ways. It allows the fans to interact, but they got to Skype in, and they can Skype in. They can ask me paranormal questions. I'll be serious with them. But if they're going to call in and not be serious, I'll fucking joke around with them back, you know? So, and of course, you know, this has been a great show in the aspect. Yeah, Jill deserves a copy of the show. I mean, she did call in twice tonight. She did, she did stick around for, I'd say, probably since the beginning of the show. And she did, she did not ask me to light myself on fire. I did it myself. <laughs> But, uh, you know, this is a unique show because, because Stickham's new policies, I didn't re there's no, re there is no, um, how should I say it? We don't have, like, um, a rebroadcast. Like our other shows, we have a rebroadcast where you can watch the show. Like, you can go back and you can check it all out, you know? There's no rebroadcast tonight, except what I recorded here at my studio. So... If people didn't, you know, if people said, I'm going to bed, I'll catch it tomorrow, there's not going to be a tomorrow. This is a one-time special show here on Doomsday. And there was a lot of good stand-up. 
It's a lot of good entertainment tonight. A lot of fun. The only problem is, I, 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 you know, some people want to call the number. It's not always working right. Then they don't want to use their Skype name to call on the show. And it's like nobody sees it but me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody gives a shit. You know, you don't have to say who you are. You can call on the show and just be yourself. Um, but like I say, it probably will be my last show. I mean, I have, I have a lot of friends all over the world. But some of them I've known for some of them I've known for a long time. And, you know, when you got, when you got friends that you've been 10 years with, and those friends turn around, and they watch 10 minutes of your show and just fucking go, you know, it's like to the point of, it, it, it's just very disheartening. It's like I spent, I spent like 80 hours producing this show. 80 hours. Spent weeks. I started producing it in October. And only I know what I'm going to say and what's going to go on. Only I know. You know, I know what articles I'm going to discuss, which I discussed about two hours worth of articles tonight. But, I mean, I know what's going to happen and go on. Now, if, the, if there was a little mishap where the end of the world was coming, you know, obviously I would be the last face you see. But I'm still here hosting, and I, I kind of want to ease those tensions with people who are scared of the end of the world. You, you, you know, that's the whole point of the show tonight is to show you that. It's just the end of the Mayan calendar. Of course, today it was so shitty out with 100-mile-an-hour gusts. I thought, I was like, man, it is like doomsday. It's just nobody's dying here, you know. Unless you're in a car, uh, there was a truck flipped over on the 395 up near Reno. Somebody died in that accident. But yeah, there's their doomsday, but, you know. You got to look at the scenarios. We've talked about the scenarios of what could happen. I'm not going to sit here and worry about those scenarios, but but at least you know the way I look at it, the way I I view it, it's a probability thing. If enough asteroids pass the planet, one's going to hit. If enough comets keep passing our planet, one's going to hit. You know, if enough super volcanoes went off in the past, they could cause a chain of super volcanoes to hit could happen in our lifetime floods we could live to see floods we will live to see floods the arctic is melting seas will rise florida will be underwater if i live the next 50 years some of florida will be under there'll be places like miami cities like that will be ghost towns and i'll be investigating them or by boat probably Wow, it's amazing. But I'm sitting here in my studio right now, and we are getting hit. We are getting slammed, man, with, with heavy ice rain and everything. It, it's been, I don't know if you noticed, but there has been in the last 20 years temperature changes. There's two extremes. I got the extreme where we get extremely, like, the summer, high temperatures. And then, like, last winter, no snow. Hardly any snow in the Sierras. Usually you get 25 feet of snow in the Sierras. This year it's been a different extreme. We got snow in October. It's what living in the mountains does. I live, I am surrounded by hundreds of miles of mountains, man. Just in a small little town outside the city of Reno. And I have mountains on every side of me. I, I live about two hours in the tallest mountain in the United States. That is another thing in 2013 I have plans to do is climb that mountain. And I may have a group of people who want to do it with me. It's kind of a feat, you know. It's, it's not the biggest mountain in the world, but it's still 14,000 feet. And that's pretty big for the United States because mountains, there are mountains in, like in the Himalayas, you know, they're 23,000. South America, some of those Andes get up to, to 22,000 feet. Elevation sickness starts at 8,000 feet. I have been, the highest mountain I climbed this year in 2012 was about a, around 11,000 feet. And I even spent the night sleeping up there. I did not have elevation sickness. It was a good climb, and we found a lot of good evidence. We found a Bigfoot handprint in the middle on the side of a steep cliff. We, you know, we found things that we cannot explain. That is what the paranormal is. 
our organization, our research will continue on. The show is just a perk of what we do. It's just a, it just stems off the Paranormal and Ghost Society. Will I host another show? I really don't know. I've hosted like 100 shows, you know, in the last seven years. And, and we've had some memor- memorable moments, man. We've had stunts. We've had, we had a guy who was a contortionist live on our show. We've had so many things over the years. Nobody could ever duplicate what we've accomplished and done. Not just in the paranormal field, but our show itself. And, you know, like I say, when I take things away from people, then they show more appreciation. Not to punish anybody who's listening now, but tonight there were some people that treated me like shit. And those are people I want nothing to do with. I really don't, you know. Um, I want to thank Jennifer for the Twinkies and the Christmas card because you can't get Twinkies anymore, and I'm going to be bringing them and eating them on my investigation because I've got to... I got to get up early in the morning, a few hours from now. I got to pack the gear into the truck, and I got to head off and do eight investigations tomorrow, all day long. So, you know, you, you got to look at the work that we do. It's, it's a, com- it's a commitment. We do it because we love what we do, and I expect in 2013 we're gonna be a pretty good force to reckon with. Because 2013 is going to be as big as 2012. And it doesn't matter if the anomalous or coast-to-coast radio wants to discriminate against us. They're only doing it because they're fucking envious and jealous of what we do. They don't, you know, they just want to pass their stereotyping and their judgments on to other people. You know, I, I technically did the best Bigfoot work out of any paranormal group in the country. I did. You don't see any of my stuff up there on the Anomalist. They don't give a fuck. Because they, they want to assume. They want to assume shit. There are cryptozoologists like myself, including myself and others. We don't get the credit we deserve. It doesn't even matter if I see Bigfoot. Because you know what? Other people get their articles in their limelight when they see Bigfoot and I get shit. It doesn't matter that I seen it. It doesn't matter if I found fucking DNA samples. That shit doesn't fucking matter. So now when I go out there and I work in the field, I don't work for them. I work for my fans and my friends. As far as my show, I don't know the future of the show. I wanted to, I wanted to do a St. Paddy's Day show. I don't think I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I, I, I kind of feel like an idiot when you send out invites to 5,000 people and only 50 say they're going. And then those 50 only, you know, they come in and then they leave the chat room immediately. It's just like, come on, man. You know? So I want to thank everybody who's showing the night. I'm going to finish off the night with a couple songs. You know, I like to try to give people a little something to think about when I host these shows. And I want to wish everybody a good night, including Heinz. Um, I don't, I don't know who she is, but she did listen to the last show, and uh, you know, I just I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in on in. Uh, I got to get up early. I want you guys to wish us luck. We're going to be investigating a haunted canyon tomorrow. A very old cemetery. Maybe another cemetery we're going to do a story on that's been vandalized. And then we're going to finish off the night doing military barracks. And um, we got in there. But um, it's a big place. A lot to explore. And um, it, it could be dangerous for me when I go in because there are gangs. It's in the, it's in the city. There have been gangs that have gotten into the place and lived there, done their drugs. So I have to, when I go out to investigate the barracks, I have to watch my back. Because like I said, I could be I could be shanked, I could be stabbed, shot, who knows, man. You know, I the work we do is dangerous. But somebody's got to bring the photos, somebody's got to bring the investigation and make it known publicly. And it's not... What we do is not an easy job. In 2012, I came so close to dying a few times. I was hanging on a cliff this year. Almost fell to my death. 
I also had stones thrown at me. I also came face to face with a bear. I could just keep going on. I almost fell off the waterfall, you know, almost got trapped in some caves. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. 2012 was a very adventurous, daring year. We came up with a lot of EVPs, a lot of evidence, a lot of great photos. Um, you know, in, in, in 2013, it's not going to be any less. We'll go back to some of the places we've been, but we're also going to bring a whole shitload of new places, including tunnels, hollow earth entrances, um, possible alien dens, um, more Bigfoot, more areas in the Sierras. Just like that hotel, I returned twice to the hotel this year. It's in the middle of the woods. It's dark. It's spooky. I'm in there on the upper floor, and there's some people. Their truck's parked out front in the middle of the woods. They off-roaded. They were downstairs. I scared the shit out of them. They ran out of there. I had the whole, I had the whole hotel to myself. It's like seven buildings in the middle of the woods. We went to that place two years. We got we seen some scary shit up there. We closed the case. It's haunted. There's nothing more we can do, you know. And so it's it's been a great year, but we're gonna bring next month. I, I'm I have plans to go to a ghost town. I also have plans to go back up to Virginia City. We might even do St. Mary's Church. Very haunted. It's very spooky, and um, that's just January, you know. We're going to be doing a few cool places, and, and, and so I expect, um, right now I'm training my investigators, and when they start going a few months, they're also coming up with a shitload of new places. So, you know, 2013, you guys got a lot to look forward to. All our work goes on our site in the investigation archives, which is www.paranormalghostsociety.org. Also... Uh, Kit's friend, who is a professional art music artist, he was writing a song about me and the group tonight. And he, like I said, he's a professional artist, and that might be the anthem for our show, or for me. So if I do have another show, it will probably be, I will probably have the anthem ready for our next show. And he he's a good writer, you know. He's like Eminem. He, he can, he's a little bit of a rap artist, but... I mean, he can he can do all kinds of different stuff with his music. And so it's nice to have not just paranormal investigators, but we got people who support us like music artists and, and you know, other big-name people. But I will never work for sci-fi again. Even I don't care how many producers contact me. I am not going to work for sci-fi. That is the biggest crock of shit. I don't care if I was on a show or whatever this year. It's a bunch of bullshit. And the way they treated me, putting Rick Fisher and all that shit down, it's just bullshit. I deserve more than that. They took my case file, and they made a show about it, and they fucking lied as they went along. After I risked my life in those mines out there, they go in some little cave up in Las Vegas and tell everybody it's in El Dorado Canyon. Yeah, sure. You know? There's only certain people that are born into this, you know, in paranormal investigating, and there's certain people who deserve to be doing this. And bad TV broadcasting and, and bad paranormal groups only create more bad groups. And pretty soon you got people disrespecting one another in the paranormal community, faking shit, you know, because that's the way it goes in this field. When I started off, there was hardly any paranormal groups. And I was the first one to get a TV, to be, get an offer to be on TV or have a TV show. And like I said earlier in the show, it didn't pan out. They didn't have any TV slots for me, you know. But I've been hosting the show. You know, it's 3 a.m. And I have hosted this show tonight eight hours. So I am going to wrap up the show with a, like a song or two. Um, Jill, thank you for calling in. I will try to get you a copy of Season 4, whether I hand it to you in person or, or whatever, but you want it tonight um, just by calling in the show. And, um, you know, it's courtesy of Angel and Nightfall Radio. 
And um, for those that tuned in and stuck the full eight hours, bless your hearts, man, because, you know, what what else could you do on a Friday night anyways but celebrate with the Lord Doomsday? You know what I'm saying? So I've, I've really loved your show a lot tonight. It was great. And, uh, you know, and uh, definitely if you do more, I'll, you know, be around. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I have to put a lot of thought into it, you know. I, I don't understand, like, for Halloween we had, like, 400 live listeners, and then tonight people got grouchy with me, and, and you know, I had a couple haters come in, and then I had, I had no calls, and then our viewers were way up, like, a couple hundred. We get booted out, we lose them all. Nobody comes back but, like, three people, you know. I don't know what went on tonight. I really don't. I don't know what people were thinking. I I know that the show has been flawless because I really didn't drink or anything tonight. I had a few drinks throughout the night, but, you know, I wanted to make sure I made it up from the Halloween show because on the Halloween show, man, I was so, I got so drunk from mixing my pills with the tequila and stuff, my medication that, I mean, people, my friends had told me I was jumping off chairs and shit. I'm like, I don't remember any of that. So I kind of wanted to come out tonight and take a different approach with the show. You know, I wanted to take a more, I wanted to have three hours or four hours of fun and four hours of straight up seriousness. But I could say one thing for those that did come out later on tonight, you guys got to see me on fire. So I was going to light myself more on fire, but. Without an assistant, I can burn the studio down. So, just can't do it, you know. And some of my friends would not watch the show because they didn't want to see me lit on fire for whatever reason. But, but um, you know, this is like I say, um, this is what we're about. So, if you want to check us out, do so at www.paranormalghostsociety.org. Your gateway to the Sierras and more. Um, we're an extreme paranormal adventure group. We've been doing it for many years. We've been around for many years. We've hosted this show for many years. And, you know, all good things sometimes come to an end and begin with new good things. And sometimes good things go away because, you know, other people ruin them for everybody else. So, you know, but I can tell you one thing that's not going to change. It's my paranormal work. It just gets better and better and better. 2012 was a highlight of my career. How many people get to see Bigfoot? You know, how many people get to see the things that I see? I spend hours and hours and hours, days on investigations. I see things. I also get a lot of evidence. And then, you know, when it's too good to be true, people start putting your work down. And uh, there's nothing, I mean, everything's been stellar on our website. And I finished off, I will finish off the year tomorrow doing the last of my investigations. And if you want to check a couple weeks ago our investigations, you can see some ghost pictures at the Chinese slums we did in Virginia City. Um, Those are real ghost pictures. And um, I'm very proud to host them. You know, you guys know during the holidays when I'm on investigating, I fit the profile. You know, Around the holidays in December, I dress as Santa Claus. Uh, you know, Easter, we our team wears bunny ears. You know, we try to make it fun because we get a lot of schools and education institutes that browse our site, and they try to learn off of us. So we do make it fun for, you know, the younger people. But um, 2013 is going to be nothing short than stellar. Anyways, you're listening to Lord Rick. Founder, author, talk show host, and paranormal investigator of the Paranormal Ghost Society, Angel of the Night, and Nightfall Radio here live in Lake Tahoe. I don't know about you, but it's a very windy night and it's snowing, but at least I can say the world never ended. Never ended. But the only extinction that happened tonight is mass extinction here on our show. And um, maybe it was doomsday on our show. I don't, I don't know. 
you know. But I know that it was a kick-ass show because I know my work. And I know that those that stuck it through had a good time. And that's why I'm still here for you guys. But I'm taking on off. i got to get up in a few hours, and i got to head out on the road. And I will close off the night with a couple songs. Thank you for tuning in to Angel of Thy Night Radio. You're viewing Skycam. And, um, you know, it, it, and I hope to see all you guys next year. I want to wish everybody a very happy new year and a very safe and prosperous holiday. I know one thing's for sure. My kids are going to enjoy their holiday this year because I'll tell you what. I hustled and I bustled and I went Christmas shopping in my Santa beard. It's got to bring me luck. And um, it was just crazy. There was like a girl that her pants fell down, man. I seen her bare ass in the parking lot. That doesn't even that doesn't even grace the, the, the holiday dinner I had where some dude's pants were fucking down. He's bouncing up and fucking down in his seat. Couldn't sit still and his, his ass looked like it was making faces at me. <laughs> but, uh... I will say it's been one crazy wild year. My father-in-law, first time meeting him, wanted to go to the whorehouse. I mean, it's, you know, it's been crazy, man. The Dangberg Ranch, historically haunted oldest ranch, one of the first pioneers that came to this valley, the Carson Valley, which we have hundreds of pictures of on our site from all these peaks I climb. And I just hope that I can bring you guys the same that I brought you in 2012. If I decide to host a couple shows next year, it, it may be just a few people invite, and that's it. And and they will have to buy my episodes, you know, because I'm not going to do stand-up. You know, you ever watch stand-up comedy? Real brief. You ever go, you go watch stand-up comedy, a guy comes out for 15 minutes. I host a stand-up comedy for three hours fucking straight. I should be on the comedy fucking channel. And here I am hosting for free and, you know, just, you know, and I don't mind. I don't mind. It's when people start being assholes and asshats and, and coming in the room and being stupid and acting like fucking babies and, and just, you know, it's just why? Why do people act that way? I know why. Look at the shootings in Connecticut. Look at the shootings in Aurora, Colorado. Look at in China, the man who went in. Stab like 11 people with a knife. Because humans are not, they're not evolutionizing. They're digressing. Humans are starting to go backwards. There's people that are savages, rapists. There was a little girl chopped up a couple months ago. Plus they found the two little cousins up in Iowa dead in the woods. Both of them. They were... Riding their bikes on the path this summer, those little girls were taken. And those little girls were found in the woods about a month ago. Humans are digressing. You can see it even with my show. They come in here and they disrespect me. You know, it's like if you, you watch a comedy channel, a co stand-up comedy only comes out. He goes up for ten minutes, man. I go on for three, four, five, six, seven hours. And, and you know... We had a tip jar, didn't make one tip tonight, not one tip. They were complaining I was, I wanted too much. There's a thousand people listening, what's a dollar apiece, you know? It's, it's, it allow, you know, you, when you go out to a bar or whatever and they have a stand-up comedian and you go out, like they have um, comedians up where I have my meetups, there's a tip jar, you leave tips. There's a guy on the piano, you put a tip in his jar. People don't want to do that shit. You know? They want to come in here and complain because I had one fact wrong tonight. Well, I'm sorry. I, don't, I mean, I'm not fucking Superman. And then some get mad because they don't like a dirty joke and they all got to run. And, and, you know, and then we got some other bitch, you know, who, who I gave a high position to in our group who calls the cops on me this week. Because I honestly told her, if you can't do the position, you're, you're off. You're done. So you call the cops on me. People are digressing. There's a lot of mental illness in our society. The only place for people like that is to be locked up and done with. They shouldn't be running around our society. They don't even deceive people. Some of these people shouldn't even be on the Internet for that matter. What are they doing on the Internet? I know. Raping, molesting, 
robbing people's houses, disrespecting me. When I stick to myself, still getting disrespected, you know? So that's food for thought. What will 2013 bring? More natural disasters? Another apocalypse is supposed to happen? An asteroid, a comet? More shootings, even if they ban guns? More kidnappings, more rape? More paranormal, more other paranormal radio shows putting down me? News sites not wanting to post my articles that I write? I have a fucking, I have an author on my, uh, on my team. She writes for CNN. You think because she's part of my group, they'll never, they'll never let her post her work. They'll never, even if I post her articles on my site, which I do, they're not going to post it on any of the news sites. Because it's, oh, fuck that Lord Rick. Fuck his site. You know, he's so good that we're just going to say fuck you to him. Because he makes our work look like shit. And that's what it comes down to. It's fucking discrimination. I've been discriminated in this field for fucking uh, over a decade. You know, and, uh, and, and it's to a point that I don't do this for any, for, for just anybody. We, we work hard. And when every time I climb a mountain and I go to the top, every fucking time I go to the top. That is so I can sit up there and reflect on mankind. You know, and I sit up there and I think about all the horrible things that are out there. And it's not doomsday we have to be afraid of. Mankind killing each other. There's no more live and let live and love and, and, and you know, peace. And, and it's gone. 2012 showed people what the horrors of what mankind can do. It's gone. I don't even see respect in any of the paranormal groups. I had some girl cracked out who runs a paranormal group. All she does is flat, flash her paranormal group and wear fucking bikinis. And, and it's a big joke, you know? It's like a fucking... It's like a modeling contest. You know what I'm saying? But anyways... You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, lead, I'm gonna leave you guys with that food for thought. I don't know what 2013 will bring. Men create mutations. War, nuclear war could wipe us all out. Many countries want nukes. Many countries got nukes. We're not on good terms with all countries. You know, there's so many dangers. It's not just interstellar dangers. or, or, or it's, There's dangers... From man itself. And even if man is not dangerous to himself, it seems like to me that more and more people are more and more disrespectful. That there's no morals anymore in society. And when, and when something bad's going to happen, let's say the electric grid goes off, mankind is going to turn on himself. Your neighbors will be breaking in your house to steal your food, your water, to rape your daughters. Just like in the Katrina, Louisiana, Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana. Police were stealing cars, killing themselves, pillaging, robbing the police. And when the police abandoned the city, it was left to tribes and gangs. Five, six guys would go in a house see what they could steal, and rape some girls right in front of their mom. Underage girls. Didn't even care they were 12. This year has not just been a year of natural disasters with a lot of death. Afghanistan, the IEDs, Syria, genocide. Hurricane Sandy, people losing their houses, their lives. Weather experiments, human Z experiments. Out of control. Doesn't matter what laws you enforce. I know a law. You fuck up in society, we cut your head off. Let's see if you fucking decide to rape and pillage then. We'll cut your hands off. That's what needs to be done. It's not going to be done. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. 2013. I don't know. I can't plan for the future. 
I don't know. I know one thing. My paranormal work and research will continue on. I will not stop until I get down to the truth. You're listening to Lord Rick. Good night, all.